Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. Chapter, 99. The Red Wolves was the squad I accompanied at the time I met Mayer. They were the very first to see my ability for themselves, and we shared some memories on the way to Noctentoria Castle too, so most of them looked on me well. No matter how much I think it over, Vegan is the only one among the regular members whose position doesn't overlap with our members, I explained. Besides, he is someone willing to obey my orders. Him being a melee attacker is a plus two. Ak Axian clicked his tongue, failing to come up with more arguments. He counted off his fingers, going over the composition of the special unit. Position so you have one healer, one supporter, two melee attackers, one defender. One ranged attacker isn't there a spot for another ranged attacker? I should join you after. We're going with just six. Will you stop clinging already? I said and cast him a look of disgust, but unfazed, Axion kept clinging and asking to take him along. I hadn't a clue why he was being like this. But seeing that I wasn't budging in the least, even he had no choice but to give up. It wasn't long before Vegan came to see me after being briefed by his team leader. Long time no see vice captain. Your inaugural speech was impressive. You embarrass me. It was nothing. I assume you've been well. Ah well, I'm always doing well. Heard the vice captain needed my help, so I hopped over in a jiffy. I'm grateful that you accepted the proposal so readily. Although I did ask Axion, I would have been left without options if Vegan had refused. I would have had no choice but to look for someone else. Fortunately, though, Vegan seemed eager to cooperate with me. After exchanging a light handshake, I expressed my goodwill. I'm sorry for the bother, but I need you, Vegan. Please look out for us. The Red Wolves and I were resting because of the squad leader's research anyway. Since I had to do some personal training regardless, I'm happy to gain some experience in the meantime. Despite what Vegan said, the experience we would gain would be extremely small for him since he was level 40. It'd be less of a gain and more of a concern, having to lead some kids who were entering a dungeon for their first time. We both knew he was just keeping up manners. I shook my head with a laugh. It'll still be bothersome. I won't forget your toiling, Vegan. There's no need for that. It's to put away some of my guilt, so. Guilt? A shadow fell across his always cheerful face. Whippera, from the blue flames, was a peer of mine. We joined the Dark Knights together and had a bit of friendly rivalry between us I never thought he would change that way. Who knew Vegan and Whippera had that kind of friendship? It was unexpected. I comforted Vegan, who smiled bitterly. There's no need for you to feel guilt over his matter. I know. But as someone who joined with him, I can't stop being bothered about not realizing he was going out of control. I had no reply to that, and it may have shown on my face because he quickly laughed it off. Ha! Huh. Seems like I brought up something a little too heavy. I just want you to know that I'm grateful to you, Vice Captain. Vegan chuckled, gesturing as if to fan off the bad air. Then he hastily changed the subject. I'm sure there's a role you want me to take since you chose me out of so many spearmen. What do you want me to do? Being in his forties, Vegan was fairly old even within the core and he had the perception to show for it. The question he asked was the one I wanted. With a faint smile, I began, as you may know, both the defender and melee attacker of our unit are rookies. I think these two are talented enough to become elites of the Dark Knights. You seem to be thinking of training them real proper. I didn't even have to explain. We hadn't even entered a dungeon, yet I was already convinced I was right in choosing vegan. It's not easy for a talented recruit to achieve large growth, not with the dangers involved in a dungeon. I understand what you're worrying about, Vice Captain. Vegan, you have plenty of dungeon experience. You're an exemplary pathfinder as well as a melee attacker. I'm expecting our unit members to learn much from you. You're giving me too much credit. You only saw me in action for the first time back when we met, yet you've seen through so much. It appears you have great observational skills and insight, Vice Captain. Too much credit. I should be the one saying that. 
we exchanged a wily laugh then. This time, Vegan offered a handshake, and I accepted. It was a firmer handshake than before, perhaps because we had understood the other's intentions. Allow me to ease one of your worries, Vice Captain. Then I'll be in your care for the time being. Chapter, 100 When you attack dungeons later, you always take me with you. Level 50 or higher. Got it? Pardon? Is it hard? Still, or I won't act like a lover. I need to gain something. No is that really enough? I ask back awkwardly. Of course, he was the one who always said that we should go to the dungeon together every day. Axion jumped. What do you mean, enough? I've been looking forward to going to the dungeon with you, June. You went to the dragon raid last time. We weren't in the same unit. I looked at him blankly as Axion suddenly broke out in frustration. To be honest, I wanted to know why he was doing that. Why are you so obsessed with going to the dungeon with me? I use magic to increase experience, but leveling up is not urgent. Experience doesn't matter. Axion shook his head determinedly. Then he continued to speak with dreamy eyes as if praising me. When I see you using magic, I'm inspired. You use magic in a completely different way from ordinary people, right, June? Watching you, I feel like I can glimpse a new world. It was really incomprehensible to me, the source of his inspiration. Just watching it from the side makes him realize something. This is why geniuses. I shook my head. If Axion was satisfied with that, there was no reason to refuse. I nodded quickly. Okay. Let's make sure to break dungeons together later. Good. Let's do it for a day from today. Axion smiled and shouted vigorously. He was so happy to have confirmed the dungeon attack, he didn't know the corners of my mouth would go down. No. We should pretend that we've known each other for a long time, so people won't be bothered. I shook my head solemnly. Axion also nodded his head in a plausible rhythm. Hmm so how many days have we been together today? HM six months should be good. Six months hmm. Good. Sevi is a wizard at the moment, so I got close to him after getting relevant advice. I think it's a reasonable probability. I put my head together with Axion and firmly piled up lies about our relationship. Why at that moment? What Rober said as if she was spilling came to mind. Would he do the same to Axion? He's a key striker of the Black Knights, the Flame Mage. Losing Axion is a huge loss to the expedition. Meyer couldn't be like that. I tried to make up my mind by rationalizing like that. However, I couldn't help it as much as the cold sweat flowing down my spine. I swallowed the cold sweat over my neck like that. Meyer Knox paced the parlor here and there, which was so gorgeous that it rivaled the Emperor's parlor that had been brought out from the Imperial Palace. August, who had been brought in at Meyer's sudden call, sat in moderation on a sofa in the parlor and silently watched his boss's journey. Meyer was in that state from the moment August entered the parlor. He was in a state where he couldn't control his overflowing anger and was venting it all over the place. To be honest, just being in the same space was oppressive. August swallowed his saliva. After going back and forth for a long time, he stood tall in the middle of the room. Then, he fidgeted with a voice full of energy. How dare they try to court the vice commander of the Black Knights. Oh, it was about Sister June. Only then could August understand the identity of excessive anger that was not like Meyer. Meyer Knox was a cold and strict superior, but when it came to June, he would react unusually emotionally. He was always calm, but with matters related to June, he always fluttered like hot lava. August didn't attend the banquet, so he didn't know the situation, but it was enough to guess how it would have gone. Suddenly, she was the number two of the Black Knights that had fallen from the sky. If June didn't want to get tangled up with Meyer as she usually did, all the unmarried young men would have tried to stick to her. However, Meyer was a man who, by his own admission, could not see any such power and appeal in the position of emperor. So it was inconceivable that they would stick with June for a seat in the Grand Duchy at a later date. Perhaps that was why, to Meyer, it only seemed as if all of them stalking June were trying to extract personnel or information from her. 
And that was something that Meyer should be angry at both of them for. You may have a crush on June. She's attractive. But if you're trying to use her to extract information about the Black Knights, or even to extract her herself, then you're a wicked person. There is no way. Sister June is not the kind of person who would unravel information so easily. She won't make an irrational decision just because she's curious. August calmly refuted. From the standpoint of seeing how June rolled such a cute special unit, there was nothing more ridiculous than Meyer's words. In Meyer's eyes, she looked like a hamster or a rabbit, but in reality, she was a lioness who would throw her own child off a cliff. Unaware of August's thoughts, Meyer made his own interpretation. She's not good at rejecting others. She's very receptive and nice. That's why it's a problem. If she gets involved with a weirdo. She's not good at rejecting others. She's nice. August was further convinced that the June that Meyer saw was different from the June that he knew. It was one of two things. Sister June's actions in front of Meyer are different or Meyer's eyes were strange. If it were in the past, he would have thought it was the former, but after experiencing several incidents in a year, he was convinced that it would be the latter. Maybe there was something different in the eyes of the Black Knight. August tried to stop Meyer, covering this up as if he didn't know. Your Excellency, calm down. Calm down. It sounds like I was agitated. I think you're agitated. He really didn't know what state he was in, did he? August looked at Meyer dubiously. Meanwhile, Meyer, who had made up his mind, murmured decisively. I can't do anything about it. Then. I should issue a public notice to the rest of the expeditions. If we see them approaching June, we'll deal with them under the Black Knight's internal discipline. Could they be dealt with reasonably if they use the internal discipline of the Black Knights as an excuse? August had his doubts too, but he didn't dare to ask. He was sure he'd use force anyway. He was sure she would be able to figure out what's going on. August hinted, reading Meyer's countenance. Sister won't like it. If she finds out later on. Of course, she'll get angry at first. But if I explain it, June will understand everything. She is always reasonable, and in the end, she will share her intentions with me. Is that the sister you know, Your Excellency? I don't think she's the sister I know. August couldn't bear it and brought up the words that had been lingering in his mouth so far. Oh no. August closed his mouth, but it was too late. Sure enough, Meyer was furious. Are you saying that you know June better than me? The tip of the sword that had earlier been directed at the rest of the expeditions was now directed at August. Still, August was the high priest of the Black Knights. He continued to speak relatively nonchalantly despite Meyer's anger. No way. I just didn't think it was a very good idea. The more you do that, the more you are mistaken for a strange relationship with sister. Doesn't Sister June hate that sort of thing? What's wrong with a boss taking care of their subordinates? Meyer was bumpy as if he didn't want to admit it. However, inside, he also seemed to accept it. It's a problem because you only take care of Sister. Is your subordinate only Sister? Meyer, who had nothing to say, kept his mouth shut. After such lip-smacking distress, Meyer asked August. Then, do you have any other options? TSK. Of course, August didn't have any strange ideas about this. August did not know why he was knee-to-knee -knee with Meyer. What was the sight of the leader of the Black Knights and the main priest butting heads and worrying about how to deal with the men who were involved with the vice commander? In addition, both of them have a history of being misunderstood as June's lover, so it became quite strange. Come to think of it, it was the first time he had such a misunderstanding. Because she was a girl. However, he had never been misunderstood like this even though he's been with other female members, like Rober, or Umbra, the leader of the Green Brigade. Was it because she is a supporting wizard? Since her ability was not recognized by others, it was a misunderstanding that many people usually thought that her success included something other than ability. Thinking like that, it was also a pity. This was because August saw her as a really outstanding expedition member. Damn it, I can't lock June up and I can't stay with her. As expected, taking care of the other guys is the best way to go through. 
Meyer groaned. He said so, but without June's objection, he seemed unwilling to execute it. August, who couldn't hear Meyer's words to himself, uttered. If you're so concerned, just attach a person to her. He realized he made a mistake belatedly after he said it, but it was already spilled water. Meyer's face turned bright on the sudden path. Yeah. I'll have to. August. I'll ask you to do me a favor. Chapter, 101. August's face was crumpled. Even though his emotions were revealed unexpectedly, Meyer pretended not to know. Even in Nocantoria, you have been attached to June, so June will not find it very strange. So now you want me to be a watchdog when I'm not even her guardian. What do you mean a watchdog? Let's leave it as escort. I don't think you have anything to do either. As far as I know, you always stay in your accommodation or the cathedral during this period. I'm busy praying to St. Marianne. The time devoted to the talent given by St. Marianne must also be meaningful. He didn't like it, but August didn't think there was an alternative other than following her. August sighed and showed signs of giving up. Ask the vice commander. Good. Meyer nodded as if he was relieved. The moment he thought it was over, Meyer suddenly raised his eyebrows and asked. And also you shouldn't flirt with June. Got it? I'm going to go crazy. How do you view me? August clenched his fist and trembled as if it were insulting. But Meyer didn't really care. Rather, his gaze of doubt only deepened. Why are you so sensitive? A strong denial is a strong affirmation, don't tell me you. He's like this pseudo-sick patient. August was sincerely sorry that he could not do anything about Meyer's condition with his own healing powers. In the end, August swore at June in the name of Esti. Marianne, saying he would not have rational feelings for her. Meyer smiled satisfactorily only then. Meyer tried to call June as soon as he got August's permission, but it became night while the war of words came and went. It was too late, so they parted ways, promising to meet the next day. And the next day. When Meyer woke up at dawn, he was pondering when to call June. To make that much more appropriate time possible, Meyer spent the morning trying to send the expedition members to call June about before she ate lunch. Are you talking about the vice commander? Yes. Meyer calling June was something that the Black Knights would be as familiar with as their work. Meyer naturally expected the member to leave immediately. However, contrary to his expectation, the unit member was just hesitating, looking at Meyer. The member who had been watching him for a while cautiously opened his mouth. Well, Your Excellency. Come to think of it, there's a rumor that I accidentally heard in the hallway. Is it something I should know? They were not doing what they were told, they were just ranting and raving. Meyer, who was not interested in unnecessary rumors, furrowed his brow as if he was too lazy to listen. Normally, they would have turned tail at this point. The member looked at Meyer with a determined face, like the last member of the squad left alone before a minotaur, and said. I think so. Your Excellency will be curious of course, it's my judgment. What rumor is it? Until then, Meyer didn't seem to care much. Exactly, until the first word of the member fell. The vice commander it's rumored that she's dating the Red Wolf squad leader. What? Meyer's face, which had been soft until just now, suddenly crumpled. At the same time, at the explosive momentum, the member immediately hit his head on the floor with a white face. Meyer ran wild. I can't believe they tarnished the vice commander's reputation with such rumors. Meyer's loud voice resonated in the imperial palace. Fluttering, birds that had been entrusted to the railing of the imperial palace for a while flew up in unison, making a fuss for a moment. Why your excellency? Please take away your anger. It was said to be a rumor, but I heard that the vice commander said so herself. I just. That's not what you heard after all. Level 80 rage could not be won, not even by those with titles. The member looked pale and hated his light mouth. It was then that people heard a roar in the hallway. Everyone seemed so excited that they forgot that Meyer Knox's drawing room was nearby. Meyer's uncanny hearing made him quick to dig up the subject. Oh my god! June Carantia and Axian Flama are lovers. 
There was no sign of that. Isn't that a lie? No. She admitted it earlier. I heard her speak openly in the corridor. The whispering sound gradually grew farther away. Unlike the warmth of the chat room filled with exciting stories, the reception room was cool and frightening as if it were casting a shadow. The unit member did not know exactly what conversation was going on outside, but he could tell by the look on Meyer's face, which was much more swollen than before, that the conversation was not good for his mood. June 1st, call the vice commander. Meyer waved at the unit member in a low voice. The member stepped aside as soon as Meyer's words fell. Meyer's lips quirked in a sneer as he was left alone. Rumors about June had been flying around, but this was the first time he had seen anything like this. It was clear that June had actively intervened. He wondered what that idea was, but it was such a dream. Meyer realized that June had falsely made a rumor about dating Axion. But that didn't mean he was cool with the rumor. Meyer's large fist on the mahogany desk in the parlor trembled. The desk had been made so sturdy that it hadn't suffered a single scratch in over a hundred years, but when Meyer struck it, it would break wide open and put an end to its usefulness as furniture. Let's calm down. It's just a useless rage. Meyer barely endured his seething aggression. However, was it because all of the numerous concerns he had for June until yesterday disappeared meaninglessly like water bubbles? He couldn't erase all the frustration, anger, and incomprehensible irritation that was boiling in his heart. Of all the Black Knights, why Axion of all people? Was there a reason why it was Axion? If she wanted to start a false rumor she could have just pretended to be dating him. Of course, Meyer had no intention of falling in love or even pretending to fall in love with anyone, but he was willing to go along with whatever it took for June's sake. But that was just Meyer's idea. Pretend that you don't have anything to do with me so persistently, and run on the road that people will misunderstand. Perhaps to June, he was the kind of man with whom she didn't even want to be involved. On the other hand, Axion, was the kind of person she liked. Tastes were diverse, so it would not be strange to say that June preferred the intelligent and fragile atmosphere characteristic of a wizard. Such an atmosphere he didn't have. If that wasn't the case Axion had red hair like Fabian's, so she might have been unintentionally attracted to him. June repeatedly said she hated Fabian, but unconsciousness was something you didn't simply understand. The thought made him even angrier. Meyer's mind raced to and fro as if out of control, not knowing the extent. Meyer's head swelled in an unfamiliar feeling, and it was difficult to manage his facial expression due to the rising nausea. If she had pretended to be dating August, he would have felt less bad. No. Thinking about it, the feeling was the same. His eyes flashed white with anger and terrible dizziness hit him. At the time he was trapped in the tower, supply omission had starved him for several days, and it had been a really long time since he had felt dizzy afterward. He was not this angry at that moment when Fabian took the lead in the first round. Rather, he blamed himself for his own shortcomings. At that moment, Meyer had a strong feeling of discomfort. Was this something to be this angry about? This was this was really not like him. Like a drop of water falling on the surface of a rock, Meyer's mind continued to be exposed. Drip, drip. As he pondered this over and over, the moment finally arrived when a solid rock pierced the water droplet. Realizing the truth, Meyer shuddered with a lightning-like shiver. That was right. He never had any desire to share June with anyone from the beginning. From the moment he first grabbed a sword and entered a dungeon as a child, Meyer believed that defeating the Demon King was the only way to prove his value of existence. For this reason, he saw everything in the world only as a means and a stepping stone to defeating the Demon Lord. He brought June along to be used as such. But Meyer had been worried when she would eagerly close dungeons. He didn't like the idea of her getting close to other people as she adapted to the Black Knights. He just wanted to keep her by his side and keep her safe. If June were to hear about it, she would probably snicker and say that it was impossible and that he had no intention of defeating the Demon King. She might even be disappointed in him. However, just as he watched her silently, his mouth started to light up. Monopoly desire that preceded the cause and belief to save the world to the extent that even his fierce revenge against the Demon King was forgotten. 
It was Meyer Knox's first love. Chapter, 102. Indeed, taking Axion as a fake lover was the right move. As soon as Axion made his excuse, rumors spread quickly throughout the imperial palace. It was hard to be with Axion on purpose. To be frank, Axion was not a pleasant partner to be with for long. Is it due to the laws of nature that the magic power values consumed when activating the same magic are all fixed at a certain value, or is it because people pursue efficiency in the same way? He talked about magic all day and all night. It was a true mage's fever of learning, appetite for knowledge, and research. But the effect was good enough to withstand all of that. There were those who still stuck to me, saying they wouldn't mind being a second, but even so, the density of my surrounding population was much thinner than it had been before. I hung to myself, enjoying my freedom for the first time in a long time. My steps were light as I walked down the corridor. In the middle of enjoying my first photosynthesis in a long time, I saw a familiar figure in the distance, dressed in the captain's uniform of the Black Knights. That it's Tragula. Without taking the time to look around, he hurried to his feet and quickly disappeared at the end of that hallway. Staring at Tragula's back, I soon stopped walking and headed to the lounge where the trio was located. Is Sevi here? As soon as I appeared, the trio rushed towards me. There were only three of them as if they had monopolized the break room. Sevi, who was the first to come running, replied with a slightly angry and mean look on his face. Yes. I've been waiting for you to come, Vice Commander. Me? Why? I wondered and asked back, blinking. Sevi pouted his lips and grumbled. Vice Commander, I heard you're dating Axion. Ah. Why, of all people, would you want to be with that guy? He's a good wizard, but he's not a very good person. I don't like the way he's always pretending to be gentle and ignores people. Since they were both wizards, Axion often gave advice to Sevi, but his attitude was not very kind. Perhaps that was why. Sevi had considerable hostility, jealousy, and competition against Axion. Julieta also asked, rolling her eyes. But are you really dating Axion? Axion is the opposite. Sevi jumped up and down shouting. I said while trying to calm down such a Sevi. We're just pretending to be in a relationship. In order to pass this performance report safely. Aha. Ichem. Only then did Sevi's raging momentum ease a little. Nova's face, which was shadowed, was also bright. Vice Commander, why didn't you tell me if you needed someone to fake date? Nova said, sticking out his chest pretending to be mature. He looked like a bird inflating his chest, so I swallowed a small laugh. That's right. You promised to give me a chance. Sevi also whined. Nonsense. From the beginning, I didn't even consider Sevi or Nova. I shook my head. There was a condition that said when you grow up, Sevi. But you're still fourteen years old and your height is the same. Sevi stumbled with a shocked face. Nova beat such a Sevi and stepped up. I'm tall enough. I don't think it's weird to go out with the vice commander. Nova, you're still too immature to keep people away from the social scene. You can't even lie well enough. Nova also seemed shocked by what I said firmly. It was funny to take it for granted that I would propose in the first place. No one would believe me if I said I was dating them. It was an inappropriate appointment as the main purpose was to make others believe. But, if these children, who fell behind in rumors, knew that I was dating Axion, Meyer must have already known. If not, I was going to tell him today. I was feeling a little self-conscious about having to give notice after the fact, but if I explain it to him well, he'll understand. I believed so. Anyway, Sevi. I have a favor to ask of you now. Anything under the vice commander's order? Sevi pouted his lips and answered carefully. Tragula rushed somewhere. Should I follow his tracks? Yes, it's been a while. Can you do it? Of course. Trust me. I will. Don't get caught. I asked Sevi to do it. Sevi nodded and flew out of the window of the lounge. As he stepped through the air, he agilely detected the flow of magic. If I left it to Sevi, 
he would be able to figure out in detail what kind of dreams Tragula had. Is he already seeing Fabian? It was annoying just thinking about it. I looked at Sevi's back, hoping that my worries would be tilted. Julieta asked carefully. Is Tragula suspicious? It's not bad to be careful. I pretended to be calm and turned around closing the window. I naturally turned around because I was worried that I would only make the children worry after dragging on this topic for a long time. By the way, Julieta, did your parents bother you after that? They're annoying. Very. It's a repetition of coming every day and being kicked out. The answer came from Nova. Julieta only smiled bitterly. I frowned at the persistent behavior. Are they trying to swing while ignoring you so much the whole time? No. The son poured all his sincerity into Julieta, leaving no trace of where he had treated her coldly. He took precious medicines that were good for her and even holy water from somewhere Priest August is with us, and Julieta can at least heal herself, so it's completely useless. A pitiful voice drifted in the air, unlike that of Nova, the model student. He was the one who had confronted Julieta's parents, so he was disgusted with them. Julieta murmured quietly. It's useless to wave to a ship that's already left. She seemed to be more determined by the shameless behavior of her family. Relieved, I asked with a slightly relaxed voice. How do you feel? Well, I don't know but I think it's better than before. Now that I know how to do something well and I know there's a place that helps me and there's a sense of victory that I went into the place that my parents wanted so much. I laughed at Julieta's bold confession. It was much better to be cruel than to be swayed around, used, and hurt. Julieta also smiled face to face with me and soon asked anxiously. But lies are not easy. Lies? You said I was over the wall in six months. I'm not quite there yet. What did I say? I shook my hand without hesitation. You're going to pass it soon. Don't pay attention to that. There's no evidence. They wouldn't even ask you to come and prove your level. Still in addition, my finger, that was a little too much. What's wrong with your finger? Everything Julieta said came to mind. Perhaps because I was confused by the Fabian's dog voices, I seemed quite chaotic at the time. Julieta quietly explained as if she understood me. You told them that I could beat my brother in the banquet hall with one finger. It seems that my brother's self-esteem was hurt by that. Why? You can do it. It's not like I've said anything wrong. Honestly, just by not confronting you in the hall, your brother saved both his honor and his life. If he hadn't, he'd be dead. I answered back as if it were natural. Julieta smiled more broadly than before. She looked very refreshed as if she had let go of her lingering feelings. At that time, a member of the Black Knights came to the rest area. He looked hectic and was sweating all over. As soon as he saw me, his face was relieved. It seemed like he kept looking for me. Vice Commander. He came up to me in a hurry and bowed his head. When I looked closely, his face was white. As if facing an indescribable fear. What is there to be so afraid of? Surprised, I hardened my face and urged the member. What's going on? After swallowing his saliva, he spoke desperately trying not to stutter. The commander is calling you. Oh, shit. Looking at the expression of the member who came to call me, I didn't think things would work out as easily as I thought. I sighed low. When I arrived, Meyer actually made me stand and said nothing. It was agonizing to try to stand quietly in front of Meyer, who did not hide his displeasure at all and scattered it all over the place. I tried hard to hold back my desire to twist my body and stood up. Meyer's gaze stared at my face and soon turned his head as if he didn't want to see it. How many times did he repeat that? After a long silence, Meyer finally opened his mouth. June Carantia. The silence was finally broken, but the pressure was greater than before. After swallowing my saliva, I waited for what would follow, feeling like a prisoner on death row, guessing when the blade of the guillotine would fall. Why Axion? Pardon? Are you really dating Axion, or how long have you been dating Axion, romance between elite troops is a no-no because it may interfere with dungeon strategy, etc. Not the numerous questions I guessed, 
but a completely unthinkable question was asked. Because Maya cares about Axion is he unhappy that I'm dating Axion? I don't think so or does he not really like Axion? But it's not enough for me to hear why Axion. Either way, he didn't seem terribly happy about me and Axion going out. It was never a good idea to drag my words out like this. I rushed to make an excuse. I am not dating Axion. I'm just pretending. I put him out as a shield because a lot of people were sticking to me. I know. You know. So. Meyer stared at me with his golden eyes. Why was it Axion? Chapter 103 Pardon. I blinked my eyes. I couldn't guess at what point he was displeased. I told the truth with frustration. Was Axion the right person? There's a better fit. Who? I asked back, but Meyer only looked frustrated and didn't answer. I picked my fingers, recalling the other candidates step by step. August can't be used because he's not sly. And he's also a priest. They say priests can marry, too, but if we get together and break up easily, there's bound to be a story. Not August. Meyer shouted out of frustration. But it was not easy for me not to be frustrated either. Not August either. Then. I asked, frowning. What the commander is talking about is not Tragula, right? Meyer's face crumpled. I didn't have to listen to him to know that I was firmly wrong. However, there were only three men within the Black Knights group with whom I could properly propose a fake relationship. Others were not appropriate as shields because they were too old or too low in level. No matter how hard I thought about it, I couldn't even guess who Meyer was talking about. Meyer's frustration deepened as I hesitated and couldn't continue talking. He was noticeably anxious and soon cried with a deep sigh as if he couldn't help it. Why didn't you suggest it to me? It was strange. I couldn't understand Meyer's words from before. I was definitely listening properly, but I felt strangely unable to communicate. I stuttered through what I heard and filled the missing object. So now, why I didn't propose a fake relationship to the commander is that what you're saying? Yes. Meyer answered, turning his head. He was so angry that he didn't even want to make eye contact with me, and his neck was turning red under the collar of his black armor. Why was he so angry? I was so frustrated that I couldn't continue with my story with my mouth hanging open. After many times of silence, I finally couldn't hold back my branching and stood up from my position with a shout. People stuck to me because I explained that I'm not in a relationship with the commander. How could I say I was dating the commander to prevent that? Does that make sense? So you don't have to pretend to be irrelevant to me from the beginning. Why do you hate being tied up with me? Meyer was also furious. Until earlier, he avoided looking at me, but this time he turned his head and faced me. His gold eyes, staring at me, fluttered like the sunset shining on the sea. He doesn't seem to understand my situation at all, no, his political position. Well, I didn't think he was going to understand exactly. He was a man who would give me the position of emperor if he could defeat only the demon king. When I heard that, I turned it over as a joke, but the more I learned about Meyer, the more I realized that he meant it. Taking a breath and calming myself, I explained step by step. The commander will defeat the demon king and become emperor. He will also marry and receive an empress. I didn't have anything to do with such a commander, but what if the one who will be the empress doesn't like me? That will never happen. No, it will. If I were the empress, I would be terribly disturbed by the fact that a woman who had dated my husband in the past was in his entourage. I don't want to get caught up in such a firestorm, and I don't think the future empress will either. It's the most important thing for the commander to defeat the demon king, so you'll only think about that, but my comfortable life after that is also important. As I doubled my suffering in the first round, I meant to say that I wanted to have a comfortable retirement. I quietly added. Some say that you should not touch your head under an apple tree. It's best to avoid situations where you might be suspected. That's why I don't want to complicate things like that with the commander. Is it just because of that? Because of that. What other reason would there be? Meyer covered his head with his hand with a deep sigh at my brazen rebuttal. 
Is it something to be so angry about? I watched Meyer's countenance. Still, at least you could have consulted with me or but at least you could have talked to me. Why did you run to Axion of all people? I believe that the commander would understand even if he heard it later. Whenever I said something, Meyer pursed his lips well. He seemed to hold back what he wanted to say or not say. As the title of the Black Knight, his mind was also dark, so I couldn't tell with my own eyes what changes were made. It was too difficult to grasp Meyer's thoughts. I glanced at Meyer, who kept sweeping down his face with his hands, and straightened my back. He's a more delicate and complicated man than I thought. Meyer murmured as if whispering with his face on his palm. I was going to take care of everything on my own anyway, you. He was just talking to himself, but it was unusual to let it go. Just in case, I stammered and asked. Commander, no way sending a notice to all the expedition teams in the Imperial Palace you didn't mean to do that, did you? As if I had hit the nail on the head, Meyer stopped talking again. It was a stupid thing to do. I slammed my palm down on the desk where Meyer was sitting. The commander didn't even say a word, just went about his business. Did you get this angry when I didn't come to see you right away? Ahem, ahem. When did I get angry? You're obvious. Meyer cleared his throat and averted his gaze. The serious look on his face had disappeared and he was now only moving his eyes from one to the other. Meyer asked softly, his voice more gentle than before. Hmm anyway, you don't trust Axion more than I, do you? No. Or is Axion your cup of tea? No, he's not. When you put it that way. Meyer is more to my liking. The way he looks is the way he is. I have a preference for big, handsome men with good bodies. As I thought about this, I realized I had misspoken and swallowed my words in a panic. I hoped Meyer didn't hear me. But there was no way that Meyer, at the 80th level, could not hear the words I mumbled right under his nose. Meyer raised one eyebrow and asked. When I put it that way? Nothing. Tell me. Meyer seemed not to back down easily. At his appearance of persistently inquiring until he heard an answer, I shook my head with a sigh. Anyway, Axion is not my cup of tea. I don't like red hair. What? You don't like red hair? What nonsense is this? I crumpled my face. It reminds me of Fabian. I still feel bad at first glance. Of course, Axion has long hair and Fabian has short hair. I just thought of Fabian's face and it made me feel sick. Seeing my grimacing embarrassment, Meyer looked stunned. I doubtedly looked through Meyer and took a glance. Are you still thinking that I might have forgiven Fabian? Huh? No. No. You said absolutely not. Meyer quickly leaped to his feet and shook his head. How could the Black Knight Meyer Knox be so foolish? It was a very suspicious attitude indeed. Continuing to be the X-Man, no, my current boss who cares about my former boss. Come to think of it, did Axion say that he'll follow your beat without a reward? A cranky person who cares about nothing but magic? I don't know who's being cranky to whom. Perhaps when asked about Meyer to Axion, he would answer, he is a cranky human who cares about nothing but dungeons. I decided to do something for him later. What is it? It's nothing special. When I didn't answer, Meyer stared at my lips in frustration. I swallowed my breath small. I was afraid of how Meyer, who hated to enter the appropriate level dungeon, would react when he heard that I decided to join the dungeon that fits Axion's level later. If it was the first time I entered the drawing room, I would never have told him honestly, but his atmosphere had definitely eased compared to before. He might not be so angry. I said it carefully. We're going to a break dungeon together later. Later? When? When my level goes up. Anyway, that guy it can't be helped. Meyer sighed and shook his head. It was a much milder response than expected. I asked with a big smile. Do you want to join me? Okay. I'll come with you then, so I'll report it in advance. Sure enough, he didn't send me off smoothly either. I've thought about it a lot. Even if you enter the Demon Lord's dungeon, 
you will have to deal with many demons before you meet him in order to be as safe as possible there, it's better to raise your level to the maximum. But. Now that you've crossed the wall, it's time to attack high-level dungeons. Axion is more reliable than the trio. And I'm more reliable than him. Meyer was firm. Well for me, I just have to go to the dungeon with Axion. It didn't matter because I never said I wouldn't tell Meyer. I nodded gladly. Okay, then I'll tell the commander before I go. All right. Meyer smiled with satisfaction. I looked at him with a sideways glare. I'm really fickle. My heart almost fell. Still, I could feel relieved to have solved one of the things that had been bothering me the most. I let out a small sigh of relief. The rumors of the Imperial Palace also went into Fabian Ignis ears. Ha, Axion. Chapter, 104. Fabian smiled confidently. Then he asked as if he couldn't believe it. Axion Flama, not Meyer Knox. Yes. Rumors are going around. Fabian's top friend and right arm, Archer Decca, nodded. April, the priestess of the expedition who was knitting next to him, smiled faintly and heard Decca's words. They're a couple of wizards. Otherwise, I hear those two are always talking about magic. You have to be very academic to be an elite member of the Black Knights. I really respect that. What's respectable? Fabian was furious. All the members of Fabian's expedition who were in the common room looked at him in surprise at his unusual appearance. The young ice wizard Jean, who had been watching April knit, was also surprised. Decca stealthily glanced at the other members. The members excused themselves. Only Fabian, Decca, and April remained in the break room. Decca turned to Fabian and asked softly. What's wrong? What? You've been nervous lately when it comes to the Black Knights. Especially the Vice Commander. Fabian's face twisted as June was addressed once more. Fabian did not show his emotions in order to save face as the leader of the others, but he was still quite open about his true feelings to his two childhood friends. However, Fabian had never revealed to them that this was the second round. It wasn't that he didn't trust his friends, but he was careful. Fabian believed that. But since he had kept the second round a secret, he could not divulge the reason for his displeasure. Fabian answered pensively. It's no big deal. It's not a big deal. You're acting unlike yourself. Did you have a crush on the vice commander of the Black Knights? Is that why you're so sensitive? What bullshit is that? Fabian asked back annoyingly. You think I like June? You're talking out of your ass. Even June. No matter how much we say it's just us, calling the vice commander of the Black Knights by her name. Decca frowned. If other people had said that, he would have thought it was a false attempt to close his gap with the celebrities. Even taking into account that they were childhood friends, it was beyond degree. Fabian was like a stranger to him now. However, whether he knew of Decca's concern or not, Fabian continued to speak in an even more brusque manner than usual. June is lying about dating Axion Flama. It's just for show. So don't get me started on those rumors. April, who had been listening intently to them, couldn't resist interrupting. How could you possibly know that? I know everything there is to know. Fabian replied, not hiding his annoyance. April, however, was not to be underestimated. She had built up such a good image that she was called the Angel of the Expedition, but she said it so sharply that the rest of the expedition would be surprised to see her. Are you paranoid? From what you say, it sounds like you know the vice commander of the Black Knights. Are you jealous? Because I seem to have an interest in June. What do you mean, jealousy? Don't joke about that. I'm just worried that you, the expedition leader, will do something stupid and destroy our expedition. Fabian snickered at April's reply. He didn't seem to be listening to anything April had to say. Fabian mumbled to himself. The girl was mine to begin with. What? Fabian fell silent. They didn't know of the second round, and no amount of words would be able to convey his frustration and disappointment. Fabian thought of the crimson eyes of June, who was gazing at him as if adoring him. 
the heartfelt enthusiasm in her gaze. On the one hand, Fabian knew June's true feelings, but on the other hand, the way June was looking at Axion, he didn't see that same fever in her eyes. Rather, he was suspicious of her relationship with Meyer. But when she said she had nothing to do with Meyer Fabian's honest feelings were that he wanted to believe her words, even though he thought they were a lie. What are you up to? I don't know if you're pretending to be dating Axion, but why Axion of all people? If Fabian was jealous of Meyer Knox as expedition leader and prosecutor, he felt deeply inferior to Axion, another fire wizard. If you were trying to hurt my feelings, you were accurate, June. Fabian gritted his teeth and stared at the sky. In the midst of all this, a thought suddenly occurred to him. No way is she putting on a show because she wants me to look at her. Otherwise, there was no compelling reason to choose Axion. It was obvious that she had deliberately chosen the same red hair to irritate him. She was swayed by him. He knew she still had feelings for him, even if she pretended otherwise. Thinking about it made June's behavior seem cute. Fabian chuckled. Fabian's face was glowing with madness as he smiled to himself. At the ominous sight, Decca and April only exchanged uneasy glances and stopped the conversation. As I was walking down the corridor, a familiar green doll approached me in the sky. It was Sevi. His face was pale. From the looks of it, he had unexpectedly discovered a secret. Sevi told me exactly what he had seen. Really? Countess Nearest? Yes. Countess Nearest is Tragula's mother, isn't she? But the conversation was a little strange. They don't seem to have an intimate relationship. I put Sevi on him, thinking that perhaps it would be an inside job on Fabian. It wasn't a situation that worried me, but it was certainly fishy. Except in cases like Julieta's, the expedition members from the nobility were quite recognizable from their attitude. In addition, the nearest household was a very powerful family. Tragula, who I had been watching so far, was insidious, but there was no arrogance unique to the nobility. Come to think of it, I don't know anything about Tragula's past. I was not close to Tragula, and Tragula was not one to talk about me, so I had very little information available to me. Sevi glanced at me and asked as if he noticed my suspicion. Should I dig more? No. I shook my head. As long as he didn't meet Fabian. I could ask Meyer to deliver the information on Tragula. Anyway, thank you for investigating him. What do you mean? This is nothing. If you have anything else to order, please feel free to call me. Sevi smiled at me. He looked happy to have been useful to me, even if it was in this way. I smiled at him and tucked his green hair around his head. At that moment, I felt someone approaching me from afar. As the corridor was open to all, I casually turned my head away to see who it was. However, the person they embraced was unexpected. It was none other than April and Jean, members of the Fabian Expedition. The Fabian Expedition. If it was a coincidence, it was indeed a strange one. I waited for them to pass by, but April's gaze was subtle as she walked toward me. It was obvious that she recognized me that kind of feeling. It may sound a bit conceited, but there was an instinctive feeling that could not be explained simply by the fact that she recognized me as a celebrity in the Imperial Palace. There was no way that Sevi, the Wind Wizard, who was acutely aware of the presence that I also sensed, did not know. Sevi was wary of the approaching expeditionary strangers and was about to harshly criticize them for it. I quietly put my hand on his shoulder. April was a priestess with no offensive powers, and Jean was a child who was a wizard of ice but not yet used to attacking. They were not dangerous opponents, so there was no need to be nervous. Sevi, having sensed my intentions, slowed his momentum. April was getting closer and closer. A hint of concern over how to address me flashed across her face. I made light of her troubles and I spoke to her first. Oh my, it's my first time meeting a young expedition member other than Sevi. H hello. I'm June Carantia of the Black Knights. Which expedition is your healer? The Fabian the Fabian Expeditionary Force. My name is April, and I'm a healer. April stammered as if she didn't think I'd speak to her first. I smiled and chattered away. Um, if you're not in a hurry to get going, 
Do you mind if Sevi and that little wizard over there, have a little chat? He's probably never had a friend his own age before. It was so natural that it could have been a conversation between owners that met while walking their dogs. When I finished, I quickly pushed Sevi back. Sevi narrowed his eyes as if to make sense of what I meant, and then, as if immediately realizing my intentions, he took a step forward and held out his hand to Jean. Hello. I'm Sevi Ventus. As you can see, I'm a wind wizard. Sevi charmed Jean with his gorgeous smile that lured the people of the Nocantoria castle. But it seemed to be a little too much for the introverted Jean. Jean remained nervous and only held out her hand, awkwardly grasping Sevi's hand. However, Sevi, who was familiar with Julieta, did not give in. You're a nice wizard, aren't you? It's my first time seeing an ice wizard. Shall we talk about magic over there? Sevi pointed to a chair in the garden by the cloister. I couldn't hear what was being said, but it was a good place to get a view. Jean hesitated and looked at April's face. April nodded quickly, and Jean gave a small nod to Sevi. Sevi took Jean's hand and headed for the garden. April and I smiled as we watched them go. Anyway, Sevi also went in conversation, he talks about magic. Sevi used to hate Axion, but when I saw that, I thought he looked just like him. Soon after the children moved away, April asked. How did the vice commander know that I had something to say? Chapter, 105 I can see it all on your face. I smiled and responded skillfully. April was embarrassed and hurriedly smoothed her cheek. I asked back naturally, pretending to know nothing. You're not offended by my guess, are you? No, of course not. April shook her head. Somewhat removed from worldly affairs, she would have had no idea that the person in front of her had been healed by her. April looked at Jean in the distance. April had a younger sister who had once died of an illness. As she was the same age as Jean, April cherished Jean like her younger sister. Jean and Sevi were chatting happily as if their shyness earlier had been a lie. They looked so fresh. As far as I remembered, Jean was a year younger than Sevi. Although she was much younger than the expedition members, Jean was an ice attribute wizard who was good at defensive magic. Because of her outstanding ability not only from the Fabian expedition but also from other expeditions, Jean was often called to the dungeon despite her young age. When I saw her as a character in the game, I thought they just added her because they needed a female wizard character. It was all too bitter to be real. Though I couldn't really say anything since I was rolling the 14-year-old Sevi as an expedition member hard. While I was pondering for a while, April softly opened her mouth. Jean is usually very shy, I guess she likes Sevi. That's a relief. It's good to be close to wizards of your age. That's right. Having said all that, April fell silent. She was silent for a while as she fiddled with her skirt, and I waited willingly for her silence. April let out a breath as if choosing her words over and over again. When she finally stood in front of me, I wondered if her conflict had increased. There was still a hint of hesitation on her face, but she seemed to have made a decision after all, and April's eyes lit up once and for all. The vice commander is very popular. Ha <laughs> ha. They're all just interested because I'm the new face of the Black Knights. I think the vice commander is just that attractive anyway, there's nothing wrong with being careful. Just in case, make sure to go around with someone. Got it? April added with concern. She sounded like the commander of our expedition. However, it felt unusual to ignore it as a joke. From the look in her eyes and the sound of her voice, it was obvious that someone was after me. So I didn't think too much about the identity of the person. Could it be Fabian, my irreconcilable enemy? It must not have been easy for her to make the decision to tell me about the dreams of Fabian, her childhood friend and expedition leader. It seemed that standing up for what she considered to be unrighteousness without holding back is what would later earn her the title of Holy Angel. April's title of Holy Angel was partly because of her broad kindness, but also because her earnest righteousness that did not tolerate injustice was like an angel of absolution. I laughed quietly. April, you're very kind. Please don't let what I said go. That's all I'm going to say. Then, goodbye. As if she thought I didn't believe her, 
April added with a serious look and turned her body toward Jean's location. The appearance of her in the first round seemed to overlap with her back. April was such a kind person to me in the first round. Even when all the others turned away and I was driven out similarly, she took care of me and treated me regularly. Even when I couldn't ask her to treat me because of the stairs around me, she came to visit me and treated me. Someone might think that this is a natural behavior for a healer, but I have experienced so many things that this natural behavior was not natural. Honestly, it was a great comfort for me at the time to remember myself. As much as that, my appetite was bitter. Fabian would be so angry that he would force himself to conquer dungeons. In the process, April, the only healer in Fabian's expedition, might be rubbed the wrong way and end up being sacrificed. Just like in the first battle against the Demon King. It was a future where everything that flowed looked white to me, but what could I say to April about that? No matter how much I tried to explain Fabian's intentions to April, in the end, his arms would be bent inward. No matter what I say, she'll just look at me suspiciously. I had a good idea at that moment, a way to make April cautious and let Fabian eat candy. I quickly sorted out the ruse that had popped into my head and pulled April's arm. Wait. April. The air in the quiet corridor seemed to shimmer for a moment. April looked back at me embarrassingly as if she didn't know I'd hold her. I also have something to say to you, April. Can you give me a little more time? It was good to work, but there was a problem. What I had done was so serious that I had to give Meyer an after-the-fact notice. I started talking late about having a false relationship with Axion. How much will he nag at me this time? Having been determined to hear a word from Meyer, I sighed and visited him. But. Really? I'm sure you needed to. What's that attitude that's overflowing with trust? I looked at Meyer with confused eyes. I wondered if someone had taken him by surprise yesterday and hit him in the head. No. Meyer, that monstrous person shouldn't be shocked by a blow to the head. It was more plausible that someone else had transformed into Meyer. So when I was full of distrust in Meyer, Meyer asked back as if he was wondering. Why do you look at me like that? When you did that, you'd have come up with all the measures. Don't you think so? Oh of course, that's right. His reaction was so different from last time. When comparing the false relationship with Axion and work related to April this time, this was more important and serious. What I've done is not something I could easily move on with in one word. Of course, I'm the one who knew that and committed it. It was nice not to have to listen to him nagging, but it was more of a distraction. I guess I was used to Meyer's nagging. I shuddered at the unfamiliarity of the air, thinking such ridiculous thoughts. That's right. I've had my luck, but we haven't had our real discussion yet. I looked at Meyer's eyes and spoke carefully as if stepping on thin ice. So first, Fabian and I have to meet. What? With that guy. Meyer, who had been calm earlier, jumped up. Ah, I knew it would be hard to convince him easily. Having guessed that the conversation would flow slowly, I patiently explained the plan, swallowing a sigh in my stomach. Meyer, who had been listening intently to the plan, opened his mouth after a while. It's good. It's all good, but I still don't like the fact that you're getting involved with Fabian. I don't know what sophistry he's going to use to piss you off again. Meyer slurred his words carefully. It was an uncharacteristically moderate attitude for someone who had imagined all sorts of things that would be impossible to talk about as long as Fabian was involved. Normally, he would have been dead set against this as impossible. Even though it was getting better than expected, I couldn't get rid of the awkwardness and drowsiness. I persuaded Meyer to let me go willingly, holding down the soaring incompatibility. I'll have more fun listening to that sophistry this time since it will choke him. Don't worry too much. Itch him. And I'm going to take this opportunity to give him a solid shot. I don't think I've properly assessed the situation yet. April even came to me the first time she saw me. It was obvious even without looking. He must have been in a poor, brooding mood. If it's someone you have to get into anyway, it's better to get your foot in the door early instead of waiting. You don't have to wait for them to grow. Meyer, who had been listening intently to what I was saying, stroked his chin and replied as if he had no choice. 
hmm, if you want that, do as you wish. Instead, be careful. I didn't think I would, but I got his permission more smoothly than I thought. It would have been nice if he was this calm all the time. Excited, I smiled broadly and grabbed Meyer's hand, and shook it up and down. Really? Commander, you have an open mind. You're also very understanding. But the excitement seemed to have gone too far. Meyer's brow wrinkled, and I wondered if he'd get another one. Realizing that late, I hurriedly let go of Meyer's hand. Haha then, I will proceed as I reported. Yes. Do it like that. But. Meyer hesitated and blurted the end of his speech. I didn't know what he was trying to say, but he couldn't say anything. How long had it been? The moment I couldn't stand the boredom and was shaking my hips, Meyer finally opened his heavy mouth. Last time. Yes. You said Axion wasn't your cup of tea. Well yes. Then, what kind of man is your preference? Why is he suddenly talking about my ideal type? Chapter, 106 When I first heard his words, it was chaotic, so I almost made a mistake saying that Meyer was my preference. But then and now are different. Although I was puzzled by Meyer's sudden question about my ideal type, there was no reason for me not to answer. I answered honestly. There are many kinds of ideal types, but what comes to mind right now is a man with a one light butt. But what? I hate it when a man just sits around. I like men who move diligently and well. A man with a heavy butt will always make others do the work. I've never been a fan of men who need to be taken care of. I don't want to fall in love with a man who doesn't want to move a single finger because I'm too busy breaking dungeons I don't want to be in a relationship unless it's a man who brings water to me and picks strawberry stalks every day. I recalled my head, praising myself for making my own decision. Anyway I don't know why he's curious about a man of my taste, but I thought his curiosity would have been solved once I answered him. But it was my illusion. Meyer mumbled, touching his chin. That's a little vague. What's vague? Is there anything else? What else? About my ideal type? Meyer nodded. Why was he digging so deep? It bothered me that he was bothering me about it, but I could feel the pressure in Meyer's intense gaze to get some answers. That was fine. It was not a difficult question. Ideal type. I pondered, my brows furrowed. HM I guess, height. You have to be tall, right? About a head taller than me. A head taller also. It's good to be handsome I like people with thick eyebrows, maybe because my eyebrows are open. And? It's not good to be too stupid. Because we have to communicate. At least I hope the intelligence index is similar to mine. Oh, it's good to get the gag points right. Intelligence index gag points. Meyer continued to ask questions, writing down each thing I said as if he were a doctor preparing a chart. What about physique? Skinny or muscular? It's better to have muscles, right? Strong men are my taste. Meyer's lips were twitching. I couldn't guess what point I meant made him feel good. And personality is I like obedient people, maybe because I'm stubborn. I hate it when they talk back and argue. Suddenly, Meyer's pen tip stopped. His face, which looked good earlier, was crumpled. Leader. Is there a problem? No. Right. Personality. Is there anything else? If there's anything left, it's money. Of course, I am paid a considerable annual salary as the vice commander of the Black Knights, but the men's side also needs to have stable real estate and personal assets, so it is good that they are well prepared for their future retirement. Oh, of course, there must be another job to do. Because when people play and eat, they get lazy. But no matter how much money they have, it's useless if you don't spend money on me, so I hope they're a man who spends a lot of money on me. Good. I have a lot of money. What? Nothing. What other conditions do you have? I set it up to here. Should I say more? Appearance, physique, personality, wealth didn't I say everything? Oh, come to think of it, there's one more important thing left. But no matter how much I say everything to Meyer, 
I didn't know if it was okay to say this. Meyer, who quickly noticed that I was hesitating, urged me. Hurry. Sexual function. Meyer asked back with an expression of sincerely hoping that he had heard something wrong. It's important if you're lovers. I murmured at the end of my speech. It didn't matter how embarrassing it was, it was important. Meyer's face turned bright red and then immediately pale. No, he wouldn't act like he'd heard something he didn't want to hear. To make the world's Meyer knocks on the verge of fainting with just one word. Thinking about it that way, I thought it was great too. However, apart from that, I was ashamed of the situation in which I was having such a conversation with Meyer. My face was also heated up by Meyer's unusual response. Ah, so why are you asking me all these questions? I won't answer any more. W8, June. With a yell, I quickly rose from my seat. I fled before Meyer had time to stop me. My purpose for breaking into Meyer's office in the first place was forgotten in the back of my mind. Suddenly it was an interrogation of my ideal type. What did Meyer Knox really think about? Fabian's stomach churned with frustration. There was nothing in the world that went his way. June was June, but the immediate problem was April. April may have been offended by what he said the other day, but she didn't take him at all seriously after that. The discord between the expedition leader and the expedition's main healer spread to the other expedition members. Everyone took a hint even after throwing a joke. The rigid and intimidating atmosphere made them suffocate. They, who are in the middle and lower ranks among the expeditions, were hit here and there, but even the atmosphere within the expedition team was depressed, and it was really unbearable. During the first round, the expedition was a bit more determined. He remembered how they had laughed brazenly and talked boldly about their aspirations, undaunted by their middle-ranked performance. The members of the group had changed somewhat, so some faces were here now and some that were not. Did I make the wrong choice? No, I never made the wrong choice. I made the right choice. Fabian openly admitted his mistake in the first round and corrected it. But he was able to do so boldly because they were all mistakes that had passed. Now that he has not yet faced the consequences of his new decision, he was not strong enough to admit that he had made the wrong choice. Unable to bear this fact, he kicked his way out of the break room where the expedition members were. But there was nowhere to go. Fabian crossed the Imperial Palace as far as his feet could take him, without any place to go. It was all because of June. If that girl hadn't provoked me in the first place, I wouldn't have had to fight with April, and the atmosphere of the expedition wouldn't have become so muddy. No, if June had come back to me honestly in the first place. The familiar grey hair that had become so familiar caught Fabian's gaze as he mumbled, his eyes reddening in this way. They say even demons can appear if you speak of them. Fabian sneered. June was going somewhere alone. He had a good idea where she was going. He was in the right place just in time. He could take this opportunity to put an end to the conversation they couldn't finish last time because of the interruption. Fabian quickly followed June. After reporting to Meyer, I was able to do the timing. And once the time was right, I blatantly lured Fabian out. I knew Fabian's movements with Sevi's magic, so I just had to stick around where his eyes were. And the foolish Fabian came right up to my mind. Having deliberately brought him to a familiar place, I belatedly discovered him and pretended to be surprised. How? I know everything about your behavior patterns. You used to avoid attention here in the first round. Fabian condescended as if he knew me well. If he thought about why I avoided attention here in the first round, he wouldn't be able to say that. It was a convenient head that remembered only good things. I glanced around the corner. It was pitch black due to the thick branches of the trees, just the right place for someone to hide. I quickly took my eyes off there. It would have been difficult if Fabian noticed my gaze for no reason. I turned my words around pretending not to know. So. Why do you keep bothering me? I will never go back to you. The first time I put the name Fabian Expeditionary Force on you was enough. You're saying so, but your words are not credible because they were said after you even put on a show to get my attention. It was surprising he noticed that rumors of the relationship with Axion were a show, but the nuance of the words was strange. 
As I looked at him curiously, Fabian said condescendingly. You deliberately chose a fire wizard to provoke me, didn't you? Ha, that's a shame. I won't be fooled by your charade that I can see so clearly. Oh, fuck. What is he saying? I almost cursed severely without realizing it. If I had known I would receive such a ridiculous misunderstanding, I would never have chosen Axiom. I regretted and regretted my past choices, but it was already spilled water, and Fabian had taken a sip of the water. Of course, since you've made it that far, your pride may be hurt if you come in bent out of shape. I understand all that. So don't worry too much. When you become a member of my expedition again, I'll keep the fact that you betrayed me under wraps for a while. What kind of bullshit are you talking about? I was facing Fabian because I had a plan, but that didn't mean that I wasn't annoyed that I was listening to that bullshit. Don't be too sensitive. Because you never know how long you'll be in the Black Knights. At his meaningful words, I bit my lips and raised my eyes. Despite my glare, Fabian said with confidence. The Black Knight was going around you so much does he know you have a memory of the first round? Chapter, 107 For a moment, I was flabbergasted. It was obvious why Fabian would ask such a question. Was he trying to blackmail Meyer into revealing the truth? I wanted to laugh at him because it was useless, but it was a pity that I couldn't. I did my best to act scared, hoping that he would just tone it down. What's wrong with knowing? I've been thinking. Why did the Black Knight even let you, a support-type wizard? Sit in the position of the Vice Commander isn't it strange that he not only accepted a support-type wizard he met by chance into the Black Knights but also made her sit in the position of Vice Commander? Fabian never doubted that it was a coincidence that Meyer had come for me. Well, even I couldn't believe that Meyer had come all that way to pick me up. But I can't believe I thought this guy would be the only one who would recognize me. At the time, I really felt like I had broken eyes. Or maybe Fabian hit his true feelings in the first round. Maybe Fabian broke down somewhere after the second round. In the past, he had kept his true feelings well hidden with decorations, but now he didn't have the strength to hide them anymore. Just as Meyer, who pretended to hang out with people in the first round, was acting exclusively at a distance in the second round. But he wasn't Meyer, and Fabian's situation was not something I could consider. Fabian, who didn't know anything about me, proudly affirmed. You must have sold the first round information you had in connection with your ability. Right? There were some minor differences, but not really major mistakes. But it was not enough to threaten me that much. I scratched him, eager to know what it was that Fabian was holding. So. Do you want to tell Meyer that the world is now in its second round and that I seem to know the information well because I remember the first round? Do you think that's a threat? No. You'll only get more preferential treatment for that fact alone. I'm not a fool either, June. Fabian nodded at my words. Then he continued with a voice of joy. However if he finds out that you tried to assassinate him in the first round, will he trust you as he has done so far? Until now, I pretended to be surprised, but now I was really surprised. Did you know I tried to kill Meyer? I couldn't help but be perplexed, as I had no doubt Fabian didn't know about it. I was so anxious not to be caught by the expedition members that I was close to Nova in the first round. As my position in the expedition was not good at the time, I wanted to avoid any misunderstandings. But both Fabian and Meyer knew I approached Nova on purpose. All my trepidation felt like a waste of time. Whether I was devastated or not, Fabian shrugged with condescension. Of course. If you knew, why didn't you pretend you did? Shouldn't you be a public figure? My mouth was quivering in mockery. He's been working so hard to make himself a hero, and he was just standing back and watching the whole thing. But Fabian had always been beyond my imagination. He spoke with shamelessness. My faithful subordinate says they won't refuse to do dirty things for me, but if I pretend to know it, it becomes what I ordered. You wouldn't have hoped for that either. Wow, I really have nothing to say. Whenever I guessed that Fabian's bottom would be this much, he showed a lower personality than that. Well, what did I want from him? He had a despicable personality that had already ended at the point where he freely used what I had done for him as a threat. 
As soon as I was speechless by Fabian's pathetic behavior, Fabian smiled confidently, perhaps because he thought I was scared. If I tell the Black Knight all of this, will he be able to trust you as he has done so far? I don't think Meyer would care much. Had it been the first time I met Meyer in the second round, would have been greatly shaken by Fabian's words. However, it has been almost a year since I met Meyer. To say that I had a complete grasp of Meyer is a bit of an exaggeration, to be honest. Having learned to some extent, he was never a person to doubt or abandon me for that reason. He can be a little annoying, asking if I was loyal enough to do things for Fabian. Therefore, Fabian's threats were only funny. There's no evidence. Do you think he'll believe you? I struggled to keep my voice shaking. But it wasn't easy. I was worried that I would come off as too much of an actor, but luckily Fabian seemed to think I was bluffing. Or that he never dreamed that he was at my mercy. He spoke with great enthusiasm. He won't believe it all at once, but he will suspect you. He'll try to find out what's going on with me. Don't you think so? He might even suspect that you might steal some information. Of course, he'll have his use for you, so he won't get rid of you all at once, but he'll see an opportunity to see when he can get rid of you after the distrust. After you've endured such humiliation, will you come to me? Aha, he'll cause internal strife within the Black Knights. Oh, what should I do? I'm sure he's confident in himself. As I knew the reality of all this, it was just ridiculous. I fumbled to cover my face with my hands. Unbeknownst to myself, my mouth was hanging open in an attempt to mock him. I'd had enough of Fabian's babbling idiocy for this long. It was time to get out of this incoherent feast of dog noises. I countered with an effort at facial control. How are you going to reveal that to Meyer? Will you let Meyer know that you're on your second round? That's. What if Meyer kills you for trying to monopolize information? Like you abandoned me. Of course, it can't be. Maya would not kill an expedition member easily if they would help him close the dungeon to dust. Even if it was Fabian, it was the same. If I were Meyer, I would have killed Fabian as soon as I remembered the first round. To be honest, Meyer's broken beliefs were sometimes admirable. However, Fabian did not know Meyer's nobility. Fabian's face, which had been relaxed, cracked by my bluffing intimidation. He didn't even think the aftermath would affect him. Fabian couldn't get the words out easily, just a quivering lip on his face as he took a hit. He was going to threaten me with his confidence, but instead, I threatened him, and the back of his head would twitch. Well I've told him this much, so what's the point of hanging around Meyer for the time being and revealing the truth? And he won't go against his feelings. In the end, I'm the one who has to relieve Meyer's feelings when he feels uncomfortable. I grumbled little by little. Come to think of it, I have to get out of this place slowly before Fabian comes to his senses. The moment I looked at the sky, thinking it was time, I saw Sevi stepping into the air from afar toward me. Perfect timing. Vice Commander. Sevi jumped out of the sky in front of me. Fabian stepped back in surprise at the sudden appearance of the Wind Wizard. Sevi approached me and bowed his head without even looking up at such Fabian. What's going on? A dungeon has been opened. All the expedition teams are gathering, so we have to go quickly. The commander is waiting for you, too. Only then did Fabian remember what happened in the first round, and his face was distorted. June, don't tell me you. I can't leave the commander waiting, I better get going. I cut off Fabian's words and slowly held Sevi's hand. Then, I passed Fabian and said goodbye to him with only the tip of my chin. Then I'll be on my way now. It was a useful conversation. See you later, Fabian Ignis. June Carantia. Fabian shouted from behind me. He seemed to have noticed that I had returned what he had said last time. Perhaps it was quite upsetting, Fabian's mana wave soared. He couldn't even speak when Meyer was around, but it seemed that Sevi looked like he was worth rubbing against. As soon as Fabian threatened me, Sevi blocked the space between Fabian and me at an angle, as if to protect me. Sevi didn't back down one bit and stood tall in front of Fabian, who was a higher level. But it wasn't a safe situation. Even if I cast a magic spell for support, Sevi was at a disadvantage in attributes, 
and his battle experience was not a melody to rub against Fabian, who had memories of the first round. But this was the Imperial Palace. The difference in skills was not large enough for him to handle us without making a fuss. Whether Fabian knew that, he grumbled and calmed down his mana. You'll see. I'll make you regret it later. I think you'll be the one to regret. But I had no time to reproach him, and Fabian hurried away. Sevi, who was suddenly attacked while picking me up, looked at Fabian's back and asked as if it was ridiculous. What's wrong with him? He's trash. I answered calmly. Then I took another peek between the branches of the overgrown trees and quickly got to my feet. Chapter 108 Fabian rushed to the drawing room. Fabian remembered the dungeon that the little wind wizard had mentioned. It was an unusual dungeon because it was a dungeon with a predominantly fire attribute. In most cases, the attributes of a dungeon are not known until you enter it, but if a particular attribute is too strong, magic power will leak from around the gate. The attribute of this dungeon, which he learned that way, was exactly wood. In the first round, they chose a unit of the Black Knights and one of the expeditions with the Fire Wizards. Of course, the Black Knights alone could have closed the dungeon, but on the grounds that it was not fair, the other expeditions were given a chance. Flame Wizards that were level 50. That was the minimum requirement. In the first round, he tried to break the dungeon himself. However, being a flame wizard, his level was too low to join the attack. How frustrating it was to hear that a rare artifact had been found in a dungeon he missed. But this time was different. Fabian had raised his level enough to be ready for this time. But it was all for nothing if he couldn't make it to the position where the expeditions were gathered. He would petition the emperor to join the dungeon because it was a right only an expedition leader could have. Fabian quickened his pace. How dare you lure me out at a time like this don't tell me that you went out of your way to lure me to a distant place so that I wouldn't be able to participate in this expedition. But then that wind wizard interrupted them and ruined their conversation. It was a little suspicious, considering June's nonchalant attitude, but he couldn't think of any other reason. Fabian managed to reach the reception room. Decca, who had been standing on the ground while waiting for Fabian, hurriedly caught Fabian's arm. So are you, and so is April. The Imperial Palace is buzzing, where did you all go and finally come back? As soon as Decca's words fell, April arrived, a step behind Fabian. April's face was darker than ever. Sorry. I was a little sick. The healer is sick. Phew are you okay? You haven't looked happy since yesterday. Decca asked in a sullen voice. April gave a small shake of her head. I just didn't feel well. I'm okay now. Be careful. Anyway, let's come back early and take our seats. If you're in the middle or lower zone, you'll miss out on a good seat if you don't go ahead and get one. We have to sit as far forward as possible and get in the eyes of the Emperor. Decca hurried him on. An unnatural smile appeared on Fabian's mouth as Decca's hand pushed him back. The Emperor was old enough to be dead anyway and there was no value in listening to him. Of course, there was nothing wrong with looking good to the emperor. Because the emperor had his own stronghold. Until now, the Black Knights had been responsible for capturing the dungeons that arose from the emperor's base, but every once in a while, other expeditions were given the opportunity, like this dungeon. Perhaps Decca was hoping that the emperor would take a good look at them and they would be able to take a step into that dungeon. But even that kind of desperation felt dirty to Fabian. As if he had to scrape every last penny out of his pocket to pay for something. Fabian let out a small cough as he felt his throat tighten. As if to mock him, June was slowly passing by, just following Meyer. As soon as the Black Knights appeared, people split and made a way for them. They were struggling left and right to get their own seats. They all looked at the Black Knights with envy. Fabian glared at Meyer's back as he walked by June's side with a blazing look in his eyes. That position used to be my position, the one I held, the one I won, the one that was mine. After struggling so hard to get up there, I had to crawl back up from the bottom. At the time of the second round, he had thought he would be able to get up to his position quickly, but with June's arrival, everything got complicated. While Fabian was gnashing his teeth, people were seated at large tables. 
Fabian was able to find a suitable seat in time. Shortly thereafter, the emperor appeared. Supported by his attendants, he sat on the most gorgeous throne at the round table and asked. Okay. What's going on? The messenger who had been asked of the news opened his mouth nervously when all the eyes of the expeditions were focused on him. A dungeon has suddenly appeared in the minor forest near the imperial palace. It is presumed that it is at least a dungeon beyond the walls. Beyond the walls. Everyone was buzzing. Everyone gasped at the arrival of a high-level dungeon. No matter how many expedition members had been in dungeons, they were still afraid of dungeons. In fact, they were more afraid of them because they knew them so well. Of course, with the Black Knights, it wouldn't be a big deal. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to be over level 60. Only then were breathing sounds heard here and there. What is this doing every year during the performance briefing session? Come to think of it, it was like this last year. They must have picked the wrong day for the performance debriefing. The middle and low-level expedition members were still nervous, but those who had conquered high-level dungeons joked about it. One of the people who had been exchanging words like that came out with dignity. This dungeon will be solved by my wind direction expedition, your majesty. The messenger's report is not over yet, so I'll decide after I finish it. The emperor raised his hand to interrupt the leader of the wind direction expedition. At that moment, the round table finally fell silent for a while. The messenger who had breathed in for a while opened his mouth again. This dungeon is an attribute dungeon. According to the expedition members who checked the gate, there is a high probability that it is wood. You can enter up to two units. It flowed the same way as the first round. Fabian's lips drew a small arc line. It's a wood attribute dungeon with up to two units allowed to enter. The emperor murmured, stroking his white beard. There was a fire mage in the Black Knights. As soon as the emperor's words fell, Meyer said as he rose from his seat. I am Meyer Knox. If your majesty commands it, I will use my red wolf troops to close that dungeon right now. Yes, I'd feel a lot safer if your flame mage went. The emperor nodded encouragingly. Fabian clucked his tongue in frustration at Meyer's every move. Then I'll leave one unit to the Black Knights, and the other unit Wind Direction Expeditionary Force. Do you have any Flame Wizards among you? I'm sorry, but we don't have a Flame Wizard in our expedition team, Your Majesty. The leader of the Wind Direction Expedition lamented in a frustrated voice. The Emperor looked around and asked. Does anyone have a Flame Wizard over level 50? With his anger towards Meyer, he couldn't let this opportunity pass him by. Fabian came to his senses and shouted as he quickly rose from his seat. I am Fabian Ignis of the Fabian Expeditionary Force, a flame mage over level 50. F. Fabian. The Fabian Expedition members, who had not yet gained enough experience in high-level dungeons, rolled their eyes anxiously. Lack of high spirits. But no matter how much they didn't like it, he had to do it with them. He had relied on them so much before, and now he felt as if they were dragging him down for some reason. Instead of reassuring the expedition members, Fabian looked only at the emperor in the distance of the round table with a firm gaze. At that moment, his eyes met for a moment with June, who was standing behind the Black Knight Meyer, who sat next to the emperor. Her face hardened. She didn't seem to think that he had raised his level this high. The euphoria of a small victory stung Fabian. Good. Then I'll give you and your expedition a chance. You'll close the dungeon with the Black Knights. The order of the Emperor had come. Fabian then smiled brightly and bowed his head. I will obey your majesty's orders. Fabian's eyes lit up at the bottom of his bow. She said she'd see him later, so they would have to face each other again. June's time of regret was not far off. Fabian let his unrequited affection for June burn through his hands. He didn't even know that fire had spread through him, and he didn't know that it was his mistake, to the extent of that. Ah, I thought I was going to die from managing my facial expressions. I slipped out of the reception room and caught my breath. This was all Meyer's fault. He was always telling me I can't manage my facial expressions, and it's been bothering me. Fabian was fully expected to play in this dungeon. 
He missed that dungeon by five levels in the first round, which was a shame to him. He was even more disappointed when he found out that the dungeon produced the pumpkin of Fulger. Fulger's pumpkin was a gem-shaped artifact made of hardened pine resin from a wood monster. The item was dropped by a wood monster, but it had a very rare lightning attribute. Fulger's pumpkin was an artifact that allowed anyone with magic to use the magic. If you infuse the pumpkin with magic power, you can use the lightning inheritance magic scorpion lightning. Only those with magical power could use it, but it was an item worth a thousand bucks because it could be utilized with dual attributes. In particular, Fabian could not let go of his regret for the artifact because it was a good combination with Jean, the ice wizard Fabian had with him. In the first round, of course, the Black Knights took the artifact. Of course, just because it's the second round doesn't mean that will change. It belongs to the Black Knights again this round. Chapter, 109 I don't know about Fabian, but the odds of him snatching the Fulgur Pumpkin were slim to none. It's an item that Fabian can't even get in the game from the start. Except when you get an item from a treasure chest, like when you get the Dragon's Pearl, the last hit of the boss monster, i.e., the person who struck the last blow, takes ownership of the dropped artifact. So I had to be careful about taking the monster's life. At the time I was playing the game, I tried my best to make it through this dungeon. However, in the program, Meyer had no choice but to hit the last hit. It was an immutable law. In any case, a game-like system of ownership was also embodied in practice. So it was customary for the expedition leader or vice leader to strike the final blow for the boss, and in this dungeon, Meyer was supposed to be that master. Fabian's thoughts were clearer than fire. I'm sure he'll try to claim that he made a mistake after intervening in the last hit and taking it away. In fact, there were often cases where people claimed to do so and tried to rob the artifacts. Many times, they were stabbed to death. It was the same not only among other expeditions but also among members of the same expedition. An artifact was a symbol of strength and wealth. People turned into deceptive demons who were willing to betray their friends and acquaintances in order to get artifacts. But I can't believe he's thinking of doing such a thing to Meyer Knox. I can't believe he would try to take Meyer's last hit. A fish drowning would have been more likely. If I could, it wouldn't be bad to kill Fabian in this dungeon, but. It doesn't matter if people die in the dungeon because it was a bookkeeping index. But I quickly dismissed the idea. Killing him was easy, but cleaning up after him was a hassle. This time, the Emperor and all the expedition's eyes were focused on the dungeon. Others would be praised if they closed the dungeon safely, but the Black Knights, who were called the strongest, would be criticized for intentionally killing the expedition team if they failed to safely build up the team they entered with. I can't have any unnecessary rumors about my hero. Of course, if Meyer knew what I was thinking, he would say just kill him because it didn't matter what happened afterward. Rather, it was an innermost thought that could not be revealed further. Yeah. If I wanted to kill him, it didn't have to be this time. In addition. Far from losing the last hit, will he be able to withstand this dungeon properly? Fabian had never been in this dungeon before. So he took it lightly, trusting only the attributes and the approximate level, but the dungeon was definitely not sweet. However, the more hope Fabian has, the better it is. Because when he fell into the abyss, he would be driven more and more into despair. I want you to be alone with your futile expectations as much as possible. As the level of the dungeon is quite high, it will take time for the gate to open, but there was nothing good about the delay. We were ready to enter the dungeon right away. The dungeon was mainly composed of Axion and the Red Wolf squad, but due to circumstances, many members were replaced with elite players. Do you really have to go this far? I think our Red Wolf unit alone is enough. Began asked curiously. It is inevitable that His Excellency participates in it because it is the order of His Majesty, but it seems that there is no need for the Vice Commander, Priest August, and the Captain of the Yellow Lightning Unit. There's a reason for everything. I added with an awkward laugh as I made my entry this time. I couldn't reveal the reason to begin, as I had put a lot of dreams into selecting the members of the attack. Hmm, if that's the case with the vice commander, then that's what it is. Fortunately, began quickly accepted. Axion, who was checking the supplies next to him, grumbled absurdly. 
How come, to me, the commander of the unit, you always pry, but then accept what the vice commander says so quickly? The unit commander sometimes insists on weird things that don't make sense. It's hard to understand the reasons for your actions. Began responded. Jinnia, the shield carrying supplies on her horse, laughed quietly as she listened to the conversation between the two. Axion grumbled, wiping his round glasses lens gently. By the way, June, can you handle so much at once? You're not going to wipe your mouth this time, are you? The dungeon is invalid this time. Axion would not have thought that a dungeon he was supposed to go with me to in return for pretending to be my lover would appear so quickly. I laughed helplessly. We just have to get it done somehow. You know, some people say that no matter where you go, you should only go to the capital. At my sly response, Axion sighed and shook his head as if he couldn't help it. But the depression didn't last very long. He chattered happily. Well, it sounds fun. It's my first time dealing with a wood monster. The wood attribute is the only biological type, isn't it? I'm looking forward to seeing how such a biological attribute is combined with magical power. You're excited, right? Meyer, who had arrived late to say goodbye to the Emperor on his departure, glanced at Axion and spat out. Everywhere I looked, he seemed to be dissatisfied. Ever since the false lover incident, Whenever Meyer saw Axion and me together, he would complain to Axion like that. Under Meyer's gaze, Axion smiled awkwardly and slowly escaped. Then I'll go and check the rest of the supplies. Axion's stubbornness was also formidable, seeing as how he was compelled to come out and sing a song about going to the dungeon even though he looked so glum. The atmosphere became awkward between the two stubborn men. While everyone was looking at each other, Jinnia conspicuously asked me. Speaking of which, the vice commander will probably be going around the dungeon without the kids for the first time in a really long time. This dungeon is a little early for the kids. Ha! <laughs> Didn't they cry to take them? Sigh, don't remind me. Having understood Jinnia's intentions properly, I waved my hands exaggeratedly. However, this time there were too many variables and it was dangerous. I had a hard time forcibly separating the trio. But it's still like that. Didn't they come to meet the vice commander on your way out? I asked Rober on purpose. I want her to train them while I'm in the dungeon. They're probably running hard at the imperial palace right now. Ha! <laughs> you have to be thorough. While chatting back and forth, the atmosphere became quite friendly. By the time the preparation for the appearance was almost completed, those who seemed to be from the Fabian expedition came from afar. They didn't seem to dare to talk to us casually, and the Fabian expedition team glanced at us while scurrying around. The disparity between the two expeditions was drastic. Perhaps they were also taken aback by the sudden decision to attack the dungeon. Fabian, hiding his frustration, approached Meyer and casually greeted him. It is an honor to conquer the dungeon with the Fabian expedition and the Black Knights. I figured Meyer wouldn't respond. But somehow, he instead accepted Fabian's greeting slyly. It is strange indeed, to see you again like this. Don't you think so? A crack appeared on Fabian's shrewd face. Fabian tried to pull back a smile, but it did nothing to help Meyer's next words. I admire your courage for not retreating to conquer a formidable dungeon. But greed is a recipe for disaster. Well still, don't worry too much. No matter how much you have a sense of self, you are not the type to just sit around and watch people die in dungeons. Your expedition only needs to hold the ankle. Do you understand? Wow, I guess Meyer can be sarcastic. I paused and looked at Meyer. Fabian looked taken aback as if he hadn't expected a verbal beating, and his blue eyes immediately rose in anger. Whether he did or not, Meyer turned around and came towards me. He had a rare smile all over his face as if he were asking, I did a good job, right? I wasn't the only one who saw this. The other black knights turned away in a panic as if they had seen something invisible. Meyer spoke without paying attention. Let's go now. Yes. As soon as Meyer's words fell, the black knights got on their horses. Minor Forest was not very far from the imperial castle, but it was not necessarily a walking distance. 
Unlike the Black Knights on horseback, the Fabian expedition had to walk to the minor forest. One of the members of the Fabian expedition approached him with a slightly recalled face. Fabian, do you know the Black Knight? No way. But you seem to know him. You're not out of the eyes of the Black Knight, are you? No. Fabian retorted irritably. Fabian's sensitivity made the expedition members look at him and quietly keep their mouths shut. Some of the people Fabian had brought with him were familiar faces, like Decca and April, while others were new. But just because I had seen them for the first time in reality, I already knew them. It was because they were one of the possible welcoming companions in the game. These are the kids I took a sneak peek of in the past. At the time of the first round, he didn't acknowledge my help at all, but the information I dropped and went seemed to have been eaten away. In the meantime, I caught a glimpse of a small head. Blue hair. It was Jean. I wrinkled my brow. This dungeon requires a lot of evasion, and I think it's a little too much for Jean to handle. Jinia, who was next to me, changed her gaze along my gaze, and soon found Jean. Her forehead was crumpled. Jinia kept glancing at Jean as if she was bothered. Then eventually, she couldn't stand it and spoke to Fabian. Fabian Expedition Leader, your ice wizard over there looks very young isn't this dungeon dangerous since it's an attribute dungeon with not so many cases. Are there any other expeditionary candidates? Chapter, 110 Jean is a decent expeditionary member. She's the second highest level after me. It's nothing to worry about in the Black Knights. Fabian replied as if Jinia had interfered too much. Behind Fabian, Jean bowed her head as if avoiding the gaze behind Fabian. Jean was such a quiet girl that even when I played the game, most of her lines consisted of. It bothered me more because I knew that she was a girl who didn't express herself much even when she didn't like something. But if Fabian, the expedition leader, told us not to worry about it, we, the other expedition members, had no right to talk about it anymore. Fabian hid Jean behind his back to avoid our gaze. It was as if we were staring at Jean. I watched Fabian's back as he disappeared in a hurry with Jean, but Jinia whispered quietly as she followed her horse towards me. Will it be okay? Well, the commander is coming with us, so it won't be a big deal. I tried to be calm and answered. However, in the dungeon, a momentary mistake takes one's life. Meyer may guarantee the extinction of the demons, but he could not guarantee perfect safety in the dungeon. And Jinia learned that fact, too. That's true, but. The end of Jinia's words was full of anxiety. Perhaps it was because she was the shield keeper who had been in charge of the front of the team, she was especially concerned about the children in the back. I'm sure they have their own ideas. I murmured, glancing at Fabian and his expedition. Did he feel our eyes? Fabian tried to raise his voice as if he were friendly. However, it didn't seem to be able to dispel all the worry and anxiety deep in the hearts of the expedition members who had to take on the challenge of a high-level dungeon. At that moment, my eyes met April's, who was standing there blankly. As soon as she saw me, April's face hardened, and she immediately turned her head away, pretending not to know me and avoiding the attention of others. The bait has been thrown in moderation. There was nothing for me to do now. Just faithfully conquer the dungeon all that was left was to watch Fabian walk into a pit of ruin on his own. I smiled contentedly in early celebration. The dungeon in the minor forest proceeded exactly as I knew it would. In short, it was extremely complicated. Maybe it's because it's a bonus stage we don't have to open, but the difficulty just went up significantly. If it's a bonus, you'll be able to eat it raw, but this damn game called One Holy Demon War was used to stimulate gamers' desire for a challenge. Still, it seems that it had a conscience and set it up with attributes that were weak against the flame magic of the main character, Fabian. It's really terrible from the perspective of not being a flame wizard. As soon as I thought so, a tree stem wrapped around my ankle. Oh, seriously. I stomped my feet in anger. You never knew when or where a tree stem would pop up and stick to you relentlessly. Moreover, the tree stem's power was stronger and more defensive than I had expected. I couldn't even get free with ordinary strength. Fortunately, as soon as I shouted, Meyer, who was far away, came running before anyone else and cut off the branch. 
Are you okay? I'm okay. It wasn't a big deal. I replied under my breath. I said I was okay, but I didn't sound very trustworthy. I wondered where the numerous tree branches that had been running towards me had gone, but as soon as Meyer approached, my surroundings immediately became more comfortable. Looking at the people they were covering, it was clear that there were even eyes on the tree trunk. After taking a breath for a while, I pushed Meyer back. You can go back. Don't you need me? I'll call you again if I need you. I said that, but honestly, I didn't think Meyer would back down easily. Okay. However, his head of consent fell more gently than expected. Although he glanced at me with a worried look, he calmly returned to his place. I thought he'd insist on being by my side. It felt like he had read me. I let out a small laugh at the thought. Why would Meyer be reading my mind? Well, I'm glad I didn't waste my time and energy trying to convince him. With Meyer gone, I once again surveyed the battlefield with nervous eyes. The tree branches were not particularly deadly, but they were annoying to go around people if they were not careful for a while. While I was struggling in isolation to use support magic while avoiding tree branches like that, Axion was floating around and burning tree demons like a pile of firewood. Ha 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 ha. Axion laughed out loud as he watched the burning fire. He seemed to be excited to relieve stress after a long time. It was like he was in another world. I clucked my tongue in admiration. Just then, Axion shouted in the distance. June, could you possibly do a support spell that would increase agility? There's something I want to try. Okay. I started the skill right away. As soon as he received the skill, Axion jumped in between the wooden monsters as if he wasn't afraid. It was a quick gesture that was unbelievable for a wizard. The tree demons reflexively covered Axion not knowing that he was a bomb that had entered their mouths. At that moment, with the sound of an explosion, the residue of the branches scattered everywhere. Phew, one shot, two kills. Just before the tree demon covered him, in a fluttering moment, Axion slipped out at the same time as the magic chant, smiled briskly, and sweat poured down his forehead. He looked like a child who had just skated on a pair of skates given to him as a gift for the first time. Unit commander, it's dangerous. Jinnia, who was in front, grumbled, hitting a tree branch. It was a voice that could be clearly felt that she was not worried about Axion. Whether or not, Axion only smiled. It would have been a big problem if you didn't raise his agility. It would have been a big problem if I raised his agility. I answered back, clicking my tongue. However, it didn't seem to touch Axion's heart much. He only said what he had to say. It's unusual to use magic while moving like this. It's quite thrilling. Perhaps you could superimpose more. We're not here to have fun. I complained, but I walked with an open mind and superimposed my skills. Due to the nature of a wizard, he always used magic from the rear, but it looked different when he stepped up and attacked. It was that ambition that seemed to have chosen the expedition team to be a presence stronger than the expedition leader. In addition, I didn't know when I could go back to the dungeon after this. Since I didn't know how Meyer would interfere, I could use this opportunity to my advantage. As Axion ran wild like that, most of the monsters in the primary area were soon organized. It's tough because the wooden monsters don't have a fixed direction of attack. They attack from all sides, including the ground, so they are very square-shaped. Jinnia grumbled and leaned on her shield. Then, she murmured with concern, glancing in the direction of the Fabian expedition remaining. We've been struggling so much, will they be okay? Well, thanks to the fact that we brought most of the demons with us, there are only a few demons over there, so I think they'll be fine. Began clicked his tongue and slurred his words. Began and Tragula also took small breaths and cleared their throats, while I, needless to say, remained positioned on the ground. However, there were three people who were in decent spirits. Axion, because he's having a dopey day today, so let's say that's true, and Meyer, because he's the one who has a much harder time getting tired. Why does August look fine? I thought he had the strength and power style to compete with average tankers. I felt it when we went around the dungeon bang for six months together, but with the elite and similar level of Tragula by my side, it was even more comparable. I exhaled and said. 
Speaking of which, I have a question for Priest August. What is it? Why do you have to do so many strength exercises all the time? Actually, priests don't need to do that much. You already have enough ability, but it's overflowing. August usually spent most of his time, except for the time he spent praying to St. Marianne or preaching at the monastery, on strength and physical exercises. Nova was also more thorough than the average defender. If you were already that strong and your original occupation was a priest, you didn't have to do that. Moreover, August made it the best virtue to devote time to St. Marianne. It was surprising that he took time to train steadily. However, August replied as if my question was strange. What is sufficient to hone the talents that St. Marianne has bestowed upon me? That talent is muscle strength and stamina. Right. August nodded resolutely. Then he calmly continued his words. And isn't the priest a job that has to live until the last minute? That way, the possibility of attacking the dungeon increases. To do that, simply being protected by others is not enough. It seems to be enough to eat active defenders beyond being protected. It was true that you had to be that strong to survive to the end of Meyer's party. Began, who was listening to the story, added, sticking out his tongue as if it was ridiculous. Usually they are not as extreme as Priest August. As long as you get the treatment right, that's all that matters. A weak mind comes from a weak body. In order to have unshakable faith in St. Marianne, you need a strong mind, so it is natural to grind and polish the body, right? Holy Masquerade will be changed to Holy Demon War. For Accuracy Chapter, 111 August's strong faith remained unshakable. Indeed, he was like a fanatic who regarded asceticism as joy. If that's the case, then. As soon as I felt awkward for a while at August's confident answer, Axion suddenly jumped up from his position and shouted. Oh. There's another demon there. As soon as we took a breather, Axion ran off, delighting in the demon. Not looking back and forth, his eyes turned to the monsters, and he didn't even know that the time had run out and the support magic had been lifted. Be careful. I rushed to double and triple the support spell. Then I could finally breathe a sigh of relief. Anyway, all the flame wizards had fiery personalities. Of course, that didn't mean that they were in harmony. It's like fire in that if the fire spreads even a little, it's an easy point to burn. Don't even look at the before and after. I shook my head as I watched Axion frolicking in the distance, killing tree monsters. It's a monster. The Fabian Expeditionary Force looked at Axion with astonishment as he sprinted through the demons with great skill. The demons that they had finally defeated were scattered into ashes by Axion's hand. Fabian could also use fire magic, but he was not a wizard, he was a swordsman. His magical firepower was also second to Axion. However, he had no choice but to use as much magic range as he was born with. Instead, he had better styles like strength and agility than Axion, and he thought he could make up for it, but. He was no match for the Axion who received buffs from June. Grind. Fabian's back teeth clashed and there was a bleak sound. It was humiliating to see the difference between him and Axion so visibly. If it weren't for June's support magic. That's right. Axion's proper ability was not that. How could he show off with his exaggerated skills? Originally, that support magic was mine. Fabian's heated gaze shifted to June. Sweat was beating on June's cheeks as she used her support magic behind Axion, safely behind the Black Knights. The Black Knights were surrounding June as if to protect her. Come to think of it, how was June in the first round? Fabian recalled the memory. At the back of the expedition. He couldn't quite remember where June was, as he had given priority to April the healer and Jean the wizard. In fact, June was not in a prominent place. Support wizard is missing. So June tried not to go against the mood of the expedition members, but the expedition members grumbled that she was only looking for safe places quickly. Fabian, who remembered that far, tried to swallow memories of the past as if he didn't know. To him, the past was not a mirror of truth to make him regret it, but just another possibility to make him guess the future. 
he couldn't feel guilty for June because of the vague things in his memory that left no trace. It was Fabian's near willfulness that kept him from admitting that June would not give him any more opportunities. One of the members of the Fabian expedition, who misunderstood Fabian's view of June and the rest of the Black Knights, shamelessly praised the Black Knights. Wow, there's a reason why the Black Knights are the strongest. It's hard for us to kill one, but over there, the Flame Wizard alone deals with several at a time. In addition, the Black Knight hasn't even come out yet. Words praising the Black Knights to the point where their mouths were dry bothered Fabian. Fabian, who was unfamiliar with the words, became angry. Aren't you guys fast? What's amazing about them? What's wrong, Fabian? Honestly, they're much better than us. It's just a level difference. We can do that if our level goes up. Then Fabian fell silent. The members of the team noticed the unpleasantness of the expedition leader, which they could clearly feel. To be honest, Fabian didn't think there was much of a difference between him and the Black Knights. To be a little more precise, he was close to not knowing how difficult this dungeon would be. When the boss monster appears, will I really be able to strike the final blow? He hadn't doubted it before, but he was finally starting to get worried. He could feel the gap that could not be mixed between the two expeditions. It was as if Fabian's limit was here. No. I can't fall behind Meyer. Even in the first round, when I had no memory, I finally beat Meyer Knox. It won't change just because it's the second round. I will beat Meyer again this time. But he couldn't help but be annoyed when he muttered to himself. Fabian rushed the expedition members. Let's catch up quickly. If we do this, the Black Knights will catch more demons, and the more they do, the more experience we will miss out on. But Fabian, it's too much for our level to go deeper here. We can ask for help from the Black Knights. What nonsense are you talking about? Then, how funny would we be to them over there? Fabian was furious. Decca, who spoke out, looked awkward, but soon opened his mouth resolutely. It's not bad for us either. After all, we'll have the experience to share. We don't have to dare to go back to the difficult path. If we're not careful, we'll be in real trouble. As the vice commander, I advise you. As he said this, Decca glanced at Jean. Jean's complexion was pale as if she had been pushed too hard. Jean was the highest level wizard in the Fabian expedition. So they brought her because she was not advantageous in terms of attributes but she was not particularly disadvantageous either. Here, higher levels of physical strength and agility were needed than expected. It was a difficult dungeon for ordinary wizards. But it was not just the Fabian expedition. Surely June would have a hard time conquering this dungeon, as she didn't remember it either. That's what Fabian thought until the beginning of the dungeon. As if to mock Fabian, June and Axion were very active with her support magic. On the other hand, Jean of the Fabian expedition was almost stranded. Moreover, the other expedition members spent more time worrying about protecting Jean than Jean did firing support shots with her magic. If this is kept up, we brought Jean for no reason. However, to admit so hurt his pride, as he had been so stubborn that he had no choice but to bring her here. Just as Fabian's heart was set on fire, Jean suddenly came to them. Meanwhile, the Black Knights seemed to have swept the demons away again. May I cast a spell to support you? Her smile was unfamiliar as she approached with a plausible face. It was an expression he had never seen before, not once since the second round. Her ulterior motives were plain to see. Supportive magic. She was going to try to act all high and mighty with the compliments of those who ignored her, wasn't she? Fabian, whose mouth was filled with anger, tried to grab the corner of his mouth and stared at June. It's okay. We can do it ourselves. Still, he was able to respect the other members of the expedition by paying attention to their gazes. But that was the best Fabian could do. Well if that's the case. June smiled at Fabian and turned right back to the place where the Black Knights were. The expedition members, who belatedly realized the situation, jumped and rebuked Fabian. Why did you reject it, Fabian? It's supportive magic. But the Black Knights also receive supportive magic who are we to reject the magic? Are we in a position to pick and choose such things now? 
Decca rebuked Fabian as if he was frustrated. However, Fabian covered his ears and insisted. That's all a trick to be parasitic on our workforce. She's trying to delay our growth by siphoning off our experiences. You say outrageous things. There's no way someone who's the vice leader of the Black Knights would do that. She could go in and gain as much experience as she wanted if she had to. And what is the reason for stalling our growth? There's already a huge gap between us anyway. Fabian pressed down on his lips. It was almost frustrating not to be able to say that June was holding a grudge against him, so he didn't know what kind of trick she would use against him. Decca patted Fabian on the shoulder and said as if he were scolding him. I think you're getting nervous lately, which is unlike you. Is it because of the results debriefing that you've become so competitive? But it was all an expected outcome, wasn't it? Yeah. We decided to take a long look. If we raise our level step by step, we can catch up someday. Take it easy. There's a saying that you have to step back in order to leap forward. The Fabian Expedition's shield highly praised them. Fabian's heart boiled with resentment towards June and inferiority towards Meyer and Axion. But that didn't mean that he was so unprincipled that he didn't notice the buzz of public opinion within his expedition. If he turned his blade on them again, it would only damage his reputation. Realizing that it was time for him to bend, Fabian changed the color of his face with a small sigh. Sorry. I was sensitive. It's already late this time, so I'll talk to her then when the wave is over and the next break time comes. Yeah. That's a good idea. It might be advantageous to have a faster hunting speed, even if it costs a little more experience. Decca smiled broadly. Others also seemed relieved by Fabian's permission. As if receiving June's support magic was a ray of hope. As for Fabian, it was a reversal of his attire. Seeing the expedition, Fabian hid his misguided true feelings with a half-hearted smile. Chapter, 112 I secretly saw the situation of the Fabian expedition under the pretext of supportive magic. It was nothing more than I guessed. It'll be harder in the future. Fabian flatly rejected my proposal as if he thought I approached with a dream, but it was a really pure favor for me. Fabian's hardships were to be welcomed with open arms, but the expedition itself had to be completed safely and without sacrifice. Well, I actually did cast a support spell on them, and it was almost maddening to hear them marvel at it. They were the ones who didn't know a single thing about me being useful, even if I had cast so much support magic on them in the first round. I chuckled as I thought of their reactions in the past. Anyway unlike the entrance to the dungeon, where there was only the base of a tree, now demons that looked quite like trees began to appear. The body of a tree demon looked like a walking stump, but the higher the level, the more neatly it looked like a tree. Tree demons were very rare. Wood was the only one of the various attributes that possessed life force, and life force was originally a force that conflicted with magic. Therefore, wood demons were so powerful that their magical power overshadowed their life force. The more you went to the center of the dungeon, the more demons with strong magical power you would find, and the more difficult it is to raise the magical power defense, the greater the damage will be. I was struggling with the hard protection of the skilled tanker Jinnia and other black knights, but the expedition with the still inexperienced tanker would be even more difficult. Even Fabian's expedition is at a similar level, except for Fabian, at a slightly higher level than the trio. He wasn't a low level, but his abilities were quite insufficient with experience to conquer special dungeons above level 50. Sure enough, there was a horrible problem to worry about. Jean. A raucous cry rang out in the dungeon. April was seen rushing to Jean. It looked like Jean was injured. Fabian, who had been cutting down monsters ahead of her, yelled in frustration as he recognized the situation a step too late. How did the rear wizard get hurt? Are you out of your mind? Sorry, Fabian. While I lost my focus for a while, April, is Jean okay? Stop the demons first. No more. There was a lot of noise and words flying around. With the demons still around, Fabian's expedition team gritted their teeth and grabbed the formation that was about to collapse. If it had been anyone else who had been injured, I would have pretended not to know, but it was the young Jean. 
Jinia, who continued to care about Jean, also distorted her face when she realized that Jean was injured. However, she was the main tanker of the Red Wolf unit. She was the very figure of the shield of the exemplary expeditionary force that had prevented the demons without a single flicker. I thought about helping her out, but I was too busy with myself. There were far more demons surrounding the Black Knights than the Fabian expedition. Of course, it wasn't impossible to help. It was because of Meyer's backup that I was able to turn my attention to the Fabian expedition, despite my grumbling about being busy. The luxury of having a backup of the highest level an opportunity as important as the highest level putting you on a bus. Meyer, who controlled all the situations in the dungeon, must have known the emergency situation taking place in the Fabian expedition. I glanced at Meyer. He had only remained quiet in the midst of the mayhem going on in the corner. The word to save Fabian's expedition lingered around his mind and disappeared. Meyer hates Fabian as much as I do. On the contrary, when I thought about continuing to be conscious of Fabian, if the accumulated resentment had been greater than mine, it would have been great, but not less. For me, if there was ever a point where I had to step away and start thinking because they were characters in a game, for Meyer, Fabian was a real-life archenemy. If the Demon King had taken away the happiness in Meyer's life, Fabian had taken away his hope. So it was understandable that Meyer would be sensitive to Fabian. It was troublesome, though. I didn't want to go against Meyer's mood, so I ended up closing my mouth. At that moment, April's impending cry rang out. And no. If you don't hang in there a little longer. Commander, can you help save the expedition over there? Unable to take it anymore, I finally whispered to Meyer. Meyer asked me, looking down at me with a meaningless glance, who grabbed his arm. Does it bother you? That child is innocent. I watched him with my shoulders set tightly, afraid that Meyer would use Jean as an excuse to reprimand me for actually caring about Fabian. The reprimand didn't matter, because I could just ask right back and say something, but the time it took to push and shove became a bit of a problem. If Jean got in trouble, Okay. I thought he would say something, but Meyer left more gently than I thought. I watched Meyer's back as he approached the Fabian expedition with incredulous eyes. It felt as if the tree demons were retreating with every step Meyer took. Meyer drew his sword without a care in the world. Along with the sound of iron hitting his scabbard, the peculiar cold of iron pierced my skin numbly. With an attack power of SS rank in the 80th level, the mere act of drawing the sword itself was threatening. And Meyer swung his sword. It was pure power itself, with no magic pulled out of it. The trajectory that his sword drew became the boundary of annihilation. A faraway land that everyone there could not even dream of. Everyone was lost, and watched in a daze as Meyer's sword swept away the demons and dissolved them. Everything in the dungeon was organized, and the expedition members were only able to take a breather. Ha! Every time I went around the dungeon with Meyer, I realized anew about his deceptive abilities. How annoying it must have been to lose to Fabian with such abilities. It must have been extremely frustrating because he hadn't even lost because of his own abilities. In the meantime, April successfully healed Jean, and she sat up. Ah! Uh. Jean, don't overdo it. You're resting. April dissuaded her, but Jean lifted herself up. However, she was still dazed and seemed to be in a state of shock. Fabian stood in front of Meyer and said hostily. Why did you interfere? We're in charge of these demons. The Fabian expedition members all gulped at Fabian's behavior, which was rather angry in a situation where even thanking the Black Knight was not enough. They held their breath and looked at each other, worried that Meyer would kill Fabian. It was a dungeon thing that was possible, though they thought it was unlikely. But instead of drawing his sword, Meyer opened his mouth. I don't think you can do your job properly there. Meyer replied with a thump. Even if a dog barked in front of him, I thought he would react more faithfully than he did. Your pride may have been damaged, but as an expedition leader, you should know that your expedition members are more important than your pride. Meyer completely tore Fabian's pride apart by words. The ridiculed Fabian gritted his teeth and stared at Meyer. That was all he could do. While Fabian couldn't say anything, I quickly approached them. I think you're having a hard time. May I help you? 
We still have a bit of spare time on our hands. We didn't have time. The same was true of Meyer's struggle if he didn't help, but I deliberately made myself look good to provoke Fabian. Fabian's lips pursed in frustration. He tried to be calm and direct. No, thank you. It's enough that you just helped me. At that time, the shield of the Fabian expedition, who was wary, opened his mouth. However, Fabian it's too much for us to block this side alone. How about getting some help from the Black Knights? He thought Jean was hurt because of him, and his face was full of anxiety. This shield was a character that was immediately welcomed in the game, but one that could not be brought in the first round due to conditions not being met. If I hadn't told Fabian, I could have brought Aegis to the Black Knights. I regretted it inwardly. There was no way I could wave to the bus that had already left in time. I had to concentrate on what I was aiming for. The Fabian expedition, not knowing a word about my thoughts, began to fuss. In addition, Jean is also this time the dungeon was very hurried to the young Jean. I'd rather leave it to the Black Knights and take a rest for this dungeon. Aegis. Then we'll have six of us attack. Can you do that? But Jean is a kid, Fabian. But she's a decent expedition member. If you recover, you can fight again. Right, Jean? Fabian said so and looked back at Jean. It was an attitude that he had no doubt that Jean would nod to his question. And Fabian's prediction was accurate. Jean nodded awkwardly with a pale face. Fabian muttered, forcing Jean to stand up. In addition, Jean is excluded from obtaining experience when she rests. She's lagging behind. Jean wouldn't want that either. Right? Stop it, Fabian. Unable to contain herself, April screamed. Her face was pale and her fists were trembling with anger. April pinched her trembling bottom lip and glared at Fabian. Jean is injured. Isn't the first thing to ask how hurt she is and if she's okay? The fire on the fuse finally caught fire on the gunpowder. I thought Fabian, who was nervous, would dig his own grave, but I didn't know he would react so immediately. Everything was going according to plan, which rather whetted my appetite. While I was pushing the situation as hard as I could, it seemed that there was still some residue of the heroic Fabian in the back of my mind. It was for nothing, though. I laughed at myself for being pathetic, shaking off my lingering feelings that I didn't even know were left. Chapter, 113 Fabian had been acting strange lately. The closer the performance report got, the more sensitive and irritable he became. It was impossible for April, Fabian's old friend, not to know that he was laughing and encouraging everyone in the front, but gritting his teeth in the back. How long had Fabian been like this? In retrospect, she may have already seen the signs when he left his hometown to lead an expedition, not recently. Unlike April and Decca, who were initially stunned after defeating the demons, Fabian spoke of far-off borders that were far away from that very moment, as if they were in his hands. At first, she thought it was wonderful and reliable that he had sworn to fend off the Black Knights and defeat the Demon King himself, but the more Fabian talked about the distant future and hurried the expedition, the more out of control he became. Still, it was for the greater good and peace. Even if the other members of the expedition were dissatisfied, only Fabian's right and left arm, Decca and herself, must take center stage and support Fabian. But the attitude that Fabian showed to the vice commander of the Black Knights was the kind that could not be described in good terms. April, frightened by Fabian's unusual appearance, visited June with the feeling of just in case. She wanted to give her a warning. As she opened her mouth, April felt that June could not help but treat her as a crazy person. But June spoke to her with a soft smile. Do you know who I am? June smiled cheerfully as if buds were beginning to bloom. She felt a somewhat strange sense of intimidation from her as if she alone knew what she did not know. She should have known from then on that something was wrong. Having deliberately moved Jean far away, she soon spoke in disbelief. It was outrageous that she remembered the first round and now the second. April's face twisted involuntarily. June continued without caring even though she clearly showed signs of reluctance. June asked back and smiled quietly. How calm she was, April herself approached June, 
but all of this felt as if she was rolling on June's palm. June whispered softly and grabbed April's arm. Naturally, the distance felt as if she had known her for years. Beyond June's words, a sense of regret oozed out of her. She didn't need to ask to realize that she and Fabian hadn't ended on a good note. What the hell was going on? June's words could have been dismissed as a falsehood. That she had mythomania and was trying to deceive her. But she surprisingly knew a lot about April and the Fabian expedition. What would the vice commander of the Black Knights know so much about a priest of the middle and lower regions? She couldn't even believe her just because she said one thing. If she did, it would shake the very foundation of everything she had ever believed. It was only for Fabian that April left the village and stepped into the dungeons. She felt bad for her friend who would be a young hero alone, so she wanted to be a little help next to him. What? No. I don't want to hear it. I don't think there's a reason why I need to know. I'm the main healer of the Fabian expedition, and no matter what I hear from you, I'll never betray him. April shook her head as if trying to shake off June's gentle voice, which stuck to her ears like a devil's whisper. But devils are devils for a reason. She brought up a topic that April just couldn't refuse. Afraid of the word Jean falling, April raised her head and stared at June. Her wide open eyes did not match her white face and were floating. Jean was someone whom April cared about as much as Fabian, or maybe more. What in the world was going on with Jean? June, who had been mumbling about things April hadn't asked about earlier, suddenly stopped talking and shut up. The skinny April wanted to take a piece of June's flesh, but she deliberately held back with reason. June lowered her voice more than ever. Then she said, moving her lips in an audible and inaudible manner. April gave a fake laugh. Then she shook her head nervously. But June could only watch her with a blank stare. It was as if she was looking into April's innermost thoughts. June grabbed the arm of April, who was talking gibberish, and made eye contact. Only after discovering the disheveled image reflected in her red eyes, April was able to calm down a little. June sighed in disappointment. June firmly cut off April's lingering feelings. April repeatedly held and unfolded her hand. She didn't want to believe it. It would have been better if June was lying. However, June blocked even where April would escape. That was it. June's words, thrown at a moment when she was questioning Fabian's recent decisions and actions, stabbed April in the chest as if she was shot. However there was no way Fabian would act so inhumanly just because he was immersed in the expedition. In addition, she couldn't abandon Fabian, believing only in June's words. Fabian was her best friend. They had been together since childhood. April may have felt conflicted, but June backed away and stepped aside. But at the same time, she didn't forget to throw a bait until the end. She was just ignoring it as a crazy woman's nonsense. April didn't want to know the hidden truth. Because it was usually just as horrible as she hoped it would be. She knew she shouldn't have gone out there at that moment. April went to the appointed place and secretly listened to Fabian and June's conversation. As the conversation grew longer, April's legs began to tremble. Unless both June and Fabian were psychotic or teamed up to play a joke on her, she must have been telling the truth when she said she remembered the first round. Then Fabian had really sacrificed Jean. It was a truth she didn't want to admit. Even looking at a body dissected in detail, she thought it would be less nauseating than this. It was no longer possible to deny it, but that did not mean that she could shake off Fabian at once. So April swallowed her confusion and accompanied him to the dungeon. And the sight faced in the dungeon was. If you recover, you can fight again. Right, Jean? Jean's woundedness was nothing to her, and her gaze was as pale as frozen iron. Above Jean, who collapsed, April's never-seen future overlapped. Jean's cold, bleeding corpse. April shuddered. She could no longer avoid pretending not to know. Now she also had to make a decision. Fabian blinked his eyes in dismay at April's accusatory words. Never before had April accused Fabian in such an open manner in front of the other expedition members, the first and second round combined. Fabian, finally realizing later that he had made the wrong choice, hurriedly tried to placate April. Sorry, April. 
I must have lost my mind for a second. I'm getting nervous it wasn't my intention. Jean, are you okay? I'm sorry. Fabian looked at Jean and looked at April. Fabian was sure that one day April would make her anger known. April and she were not the kind of people who would be disturbed by an argument of this magnitude. However, April's tightly closed expression was hard to undo. In the precarious situation that seemed to break soon, June intervened without any sense. She was as insensitive as if she had just stepped out onto the white ice of a splitting lake. I was going to use support magic, but the level of the Fabian expedition doesn't seem to be that much. Fabian's stomach churned. But June spurred Fabian on even more in his boiling. If you're worried about Jean rather, we will take care of Jean here. If we do that, the Fabian expedition will be able to conquer the dungeon with peace of mind. Every word she said with a smile weighed down Fabian's pride. As if Fabian was over-enthusiastic. But he couldn't say no. It was obvious that stubbornness would repeat the same thing as before. Rather than that, it may be profitable to let go of his pride. Fabian, who changed his expression like a palm flip, smiled and suggested. Then you'll take Jean, please. Don't worry. Jean will be safe. Thank you. But since it's like this, can I ask you one more favor? What is it? June asked back dismally. She didn't know Fabian would come out like this. Fabian asked with a deeper smile than before. Because Jean's seat is empty, we're in a difficult situation can you make up for a long-distance striker? Chapter 114 Currently, the Black Knights had two long-range attackers, Axion, the Wizard, and Tragula, the Archer. They couldn't give them Axion, the core of this dungeon attack, so naturally, they would send Tragula. As expected, June frowned as if she didn't like it. Do you mean Tragula? I'm hoping that the captain of the well-known Yellow Lightning Unit can help us. Oh, of course, if it's too much work, it's fine. Because I also don't want to hear that I dragged the Black Knights by their ankle. Fabian glanced sideways at June's figure. June's mouth, which had been full of enthusiasm earlier, was now full. June glared at Fabian with a disgruntled look in her eyes. Tragula was the one who betrayed the Black Knights in the first round and joined Fabian's expedition. When Fabian referred to Tragula as such by name, it was understandable for June. You must be more anxious because you can't guess what I'm going to do. Even if she wanted to decline his offer, she would have to accept it in the end because June had been scratching his stomach so far. As if realizing that she had no choice, June looked at him again and tried to smile. It's to the point where it's hard. I'll do it if you want me to. Tragula. June beckoned toward Tragula. Tragula approached with a bemused look on his face. June gave Tragula a small earful. How quietly she spoke, even Fabian, who was not too far away, could not hear. From the looks of it, Tragula and June didn't seem to be on bad terms. Probably putting in a lot of effort to make sure I don't take him from her. It was also proof that Tragula was very useful. It was rare to find someone as talented as Tragula. Above all, he was a descendant of the Heavenly Palace. The strength that remained in the blood of a thousand-year-old hero was not something that could be easily erased. Humph, but it's no use doing that. I know the weaknesses of Tragula that you don't know, June. Fabian snorted inside. However, the face that was exposed on the outside was just natural. Soon, Jean held June's hand and headed to the place where the Black Knights were. She continued to look back hesitatingly, but Jean had already been put on the back burner for Fabian. Fabian now was only preoccupied with how to effectively screw over June and Meyer with this opportunity. As Fabian's head was spinning like that, Tragula, who was left alone, approached Fabian and bowed with only his head small. He didn't seem to want to talk much. However, Fabian did not give in and greeted Tragula kindly. Then, I look forward to your kind cooperation. You don't have to care about the rear, so just take care of yourself. Don't worry. I'll be tight. Fabian responded skillfully to Tragula's chilly response. Of course, behind that appearance, there was an irritation about what June had been whispering to Tragula. You couldn't spit on a smiling face, and Fabian talked with a round smile, 
so even Tragula couldn't win the conversation. While pretending to be that close to Tragula, Fabian didn't think he could recruit Tragula now. In the first round, Tragula had been welcomed into the Fabian Expeditionary Force only after they had become somewhat worthy of mixing with the Black Knights. For now, no matter what he said, it was clear that nothing would work. However he could make a lot of trouble for the Black Knights. Fabian knew Tragula's weaknesses. He was currently pretending to be a stepson sponsored by Countess Nerys, but in reality, it was a contractual relationship with the Golden Falcon. No matter how much Tragula was said to be the blood of the Heavenly Palace, it was not easy to readily give the Golden Falcon to someone who was only an adopted son. Everyone praised the distribution of Countess Nerys and thought Tragula wanted to use Countess Nerys to raise his honor. But in reality, it was different. Tragula could and had to do anything in Countess Nerys' name to have the Golden Falcon return to him. The fact that Tragula had abandoned the Black Knights in the first round and joined the Fabian Expeditionary Force had Countess Nerys breathing down his neck strongly. June doesn't know that much. I just happen to know. Fabian would not have known about it if he had not heard Tragula, who had been badly injured the first time, screaming with resentment at Countess Nerys for the fact that he could not attack the expedition anymore. The Golden Falcon was Tragula's catalyst and leash. If he stimulated that area, he should get some kind of response. He needs to get closer to him to do that. Quickly moving his head, Fabian looked for an opportunity to talk to Tragula alone. Please, Jean. April eagerly spoke, leaving Jean in my arms. Her face was filled with devastation and determination, and there was a sense of overwhelming pressure that could not be said. Trust me. I won't let Jean get hurt anymore. When I said so, a pale smile came to April's mouth. After such a short conversation, April went back to the Fabian expedition. I came to where the Black Knights were, pulling Jean by the shoulders and holding her in my bosom. The original Jean would have been uncomfortable with the intimate actions of a stranger, but she looked somewhat stunned, perhaps due to the injury she had just sustained and the mental shock of Fabian's actions. Meyer looked at me and Jean and soon fell back. Until before, he was stuck like a stone next to me. He seemed to know that he did not make a very good impression on the child. It was fortunate that he hadn't made the anxious Jean state more serious, but it wasn't refreshing to see Meyer convinced that others didn't like him very much. It's bothering me. I remembered Meyer's awkward appearance, who was looking forward to eating with me. He was more familiar with dungeons and slaughter than anyone else and was unfamiliar with all the ordinary things in the world. Maya was an adult, so I didn't have to worry about him that much, but there was a part where something stung my chest and stepped on my view. Let's get a grip. That guy isn't a poor bear, he's a wild bear roaming around the mountains. I turned my head to the distant Meyer and patted Jean on the shoulder. You have to stick close to me. Okay, Jean. Jean nodded without replying. She was calmer than at first. As I squeezed Jean's hand, I secretly sensed the presence of Fabian's expedition. Fabian, unaware of the status of his expedition, was looking for an opportunity to talk to Tragula. Sure enough, he was going to take this opportunity to approach Tragula, right? But will it be as easy as he thought? I'm disappointed that you think I brought Tragula here honestly. It was only natural that Fabian knew Tragula better than I knew Tragula. Perhaps he could threaten Tragula anyway, he might have known about things to manipulate. Under such circumstances, there was no way I would have brought Tragula to the dungeon without any precautions. Anyway, I did some research on Tragula anyway I'd already given him medicine. I don't know what card Fabian will pick, but will it be more attractive than I suggested? I smiled round and round. Fabian found time to talk to Tragula while attacking the dungeon. However, Tragula only silently defeated demons. Fabian was nervous, but he remained calm and waited for his opportunity to come. After waiting for a long time, the opportunity arose. Fabian spoke to Tragula as naturally as he could. The difficulty of the dungeon is unusual, it seems that there will be a valuable artifact in this dungeon. High level dungeons don't confirm artifacts. It would be comfortable not to jump to conclusions. Tragula responded coldly. However, Fabian did not give in. It was positive just to accept what he said. Fabian smiled and continued. 
I have a good feeling about it. If it's a dungeon with artifacts, I quickly notice it. That's how I got some artifacts. Fabian then raised one hand. A flame ring with a red flame asleep on his finger glistened. Or how could an expedition member from the countryside like me have so many artifacts? Fabian, who felt Tragula looking through him, deliberately turned around as if showing artifacts. It stimulated Tragula differently. Tragula responded sarcastically. Even if an artifact does appear, it has nothing to do with Commander Fabian's expedition. Indeed, that's right. Wouldn't the Black Knight take it anyway? Because that's the customary way. Fabian shrugged as if he agreed with Tragula. In the meantime, he hinted at Tragula's innermost thoughts. But isn't the commander of the Yellow Lightning Unit sad? What do you mean? Tragula was serious, but Fabian pretended to be tactless. I think the upcoming artifact will be comparable to the Golden Falcon held by the Yellow Lightning Unit commander. Are you disrespecting the Golden Falcon? No, no. I didn't intend to do that at all. However, Fabian hurriedly waved his hands at Tragula, who turned hostile. Pretending to be immature and innocent, he quietly touched Tragula's weaknesses. In the end, the Golden Falcon was borrowed from Countess Nerus. If this artifact has a similar value to the Golden Falcon, you could exchange the Golden Falcon with the artifact dropped this time to Countess Nerus. I said it out of the thought that it would be great, so please don't listen too closely. Tragula's mouth shut tightly. His eyes shook dizzily under his curved gaze. Tragula clenched his teeth and spoke, pretending to be unconcerned. It seems that Expedition Commander Fabian is very interested in my personal history. Chapter 115 I just know it's a famous story. If I made you feel uncomfortable. No. But I don't think it's a good idea for the commander to hear about this. I think this is as far as we should go with the chatter. Tragula tried to stop talking with a bored and annoyed look. But Fabian, who couldn't stop here, persistently stuck. Isn't the leader of the Yellow Lightning Unit the same Black Knights, not some other expeditionary force? The Black Knight doesn't seem to be that in love with artifacts even if the captain accidentally hits the last hit and acquires the artifact, it wouldn't be a big deal, right? Fabian thought it was stupid. No matter how Meyer Knox pretended to be not interested in artifacts and didn't care, human nature is all the same. Essentially, it was the rich saving more money. Just because they had a lot of artifacts, they probably tried to monopolize more of them because they knew how valuable they were. Of course, it was strange that such a person covered June with artifacts, but I'm sure he kept it for others to see anyway. It's just a way to show off that he's so rich and has so many valuable things. It shouldn't have much effect on June's stats anyway. It's a pearl necklace around a pig's neck. Anyway, Fabian said this nonsense to shake Tragula. And the purpose seemed to work very well. After all, the Black Knight's strength will be stronger no matter who has it, don't you think? Well it's just a matter of if. Because the Yellow Lightning Troop Captain will not intentionally make the final blow. Tragula did not pretend to have listened to Fabian's words. Fabian, who kept talking to him, showed signs of irritation. However, Fabian, who knows Tragula well, could see that he was shaking inside. I know how much Tragula wants to escape from Countess Nerus. He may ignore me this time, but later he'll think of me without realizing it. It won't be easy to shake off the temptation. If Tragula betrayed Meyer to extort artifacts by falling for his fanning. He said it was no big deal, but that was bullshit. Eventually, he would be kicked out of the Black Knights. If he targeted that time to propose to him to join them, he would be able to complete the expedition he had drawn up earlier than he had originally planned. Perhaps June would try to capture Tragula. However, if she did so, there was no way Meyer would accept Tragula, which would only lead to a feud between June and Meyer. June has never led an expedition, so she doesn't know how sensitive an expedition leader is to be challenged for authority. By nature, collapses start with small tremors. Right now June was elated that she would be supporting herself in the Black Knights, but he wondered if she would still be able to do so after being abandoned by Meyer Knox. It was a pity that he couldn't see her miserable face in person. Tragula then silently caught a demon, 
without exchanging a word with Fabian. Tragula's arrow pierced the tree demon's unbroken roots with precision. Even with the addition of just one Tragula, it was certainly much easier to proceed than before. Everyone in Fabian's expedition glanced at Tragula as if he was indeed amazing, but Tragula was lost in thought as if thinking of something. He must be in conflict. Fabian couldn't help but smile. He didn't realize that the smile on his face was not the smile of a hero. Finally, it came down to the boss battle. The boss of this dungeon, a huge wooden demon, had been dealt a handful of blows by Axion's fire magic. Unlike Axion's glamorous activities in the middle, like fireworks in the night sky, Fabian only had to cut down the relatively small wooden demons that popped out from the edges. The role of Fabian's expedition team in the boss battle was to handle the miscellaneous monsters. Fabian's inner thoughts were twisted by the determination not to hand over the boss's big experience. Fabian saw the Black Knights in the distance. June, who had Jean, seemed to be flaunting that she was in a safe place, protected by everyone. Fabian gritted his teeth. Eventually, the dungeon boss staggered away. The sound of tree branches clashing horribly echoed in their ears as the demon, which looked like an oak tree with lush foliage, swayed. The final moment loomed. Axion, who had driven the boss to its death, shouted for Meyer to give him one last shot. Commander. It's now. All right. Meyer lumbered out, and at that moment, Tragula's hand, which was holding the golden falcon, froze. His gaze slowly settled on the boss. Fabian watched the whole scene with bated breath. The direction of the arrow aimed at the bow gently shifted and headed towards the boss. The hand that pulled the string trembled slightly as if it was still struggling. However, Tragula's worries did not last very long. Soon after he sighed, all hesitation was erased as soon as he raised his head again. Tragula's long and thin fingers were pulled tightly to place a string. Whoosh! The arrow, which was shot with a golden afterimage, penetrated the boss as it was. Jaya! The scream of a demon close to a wavelength echoed through the space. It was a scream of despair and desperation. What's with the arrow all of a sudden? Fabian grinned as everyone was confused by the sudden appearance of the arrow. He didn't know Tragula would move this fast it wasn't a bad result for Fabian. Everything went according to his plan and wishes. Fabian was very sure. After the debriefing, when everyone was intoxicated by the atmosphere of the banquet, Tragula secretly slipped out of the banquet hall to avoid being seen. His light footsteps, characteristic of an archer, swept through the darkness, leaving no sign of his presence. The rendezvous point was, as usual, a secluded place out of sight. The strange atmosphere was supported by a few swaying candles. Tragula couldn't help but think that it looked like a place for a secret meeting. However, he quickly shook his head. The thought of what they were about to meet made him feel disgusted that he had even entertained such an idea. It was Countess Nearest, of all people, who entered the room a step later than Tragula. She poured herself a glass of wine in a familiar manner and said indifferently. It's been a year. Is there a reason to avoid other people's eyes every time? I would be your son externally. Tragula asked, showing signs of discomfort. If I see you often, others will think I'm dreaming. And as a result, dirty rumors will come up. On the other hand, if I stay away from you, they'll think I'm purely sponsoring talent for the cause. After all, it meant that Countess Nearest herself did not want to be hurt in the slightest. Tragula gave a small sigh of exasperation. Once a year, at every results meeting, Tragula met with Countess Nearest, who called him, to report on the inner workings of the Black Knights. In a sense, he was a traitor and an internal scout. With this, Tragula had no choice but to understand why Meyer Knox was so wary of him. But Tragula had no choice. Because he was a dog on a leash. Tragula tried to suppress the displeasure and reported what he knew about the situation of the Black Knights. Countess Nearest, who was listening quietly, sighed and muttered. Has the Grand Duke manifested his holy power? The world gives everything to one person. Countess Nearest was not very happy with the situation now that Meyer Knox monopolized it. The more solid a hero was, the more powerful their imperial authority would be when they later became emperor. 
Besides, Meyer Knox was a grand duke. As a great nobleman, he was already well aware of how to run a fiefdom. As such, he would not have dared to ask for direct advice on how to run the country with a nobleman by his side. It was inherently highly dangerous and highly profitable. Of course, she invested in Meyer Knox in her strongest card, Tragula, but it wasn't a safety net after all. She secretly hoped that some other commoner hero would show up and put Meyer Knox in check. However if Meyer demonstrated his holy power, the appearance of someone who would oppose him would be even more remote. Countess Nearest clucked her tongue and drank her drink. The situation was not promising, but apart from that, it was inspiring to learn information that the rest of society did not know. She translated with satisfaction. I was worried when I heard that you were alienated from the Black Knights I didn't know that an old hawk would be better than a little crow. Tragula dropped his head to the ground and looked at his toes. Tragula already knew that Countess Nearest had another set of eyes on him. As such, Countess Nearest's reaction, who seemed to know his position in the Black Knights, was not very surprising. Countess Nearest wouldn't care what Tragula was thinking. She continued her words without hesitation. I was worried that a vice commander suddenly appeared in the Black Knights when you were out of Meyer Knox's eyes. Because a vice commander is naturally supposed to be elite. Speaking of which, I'm really glad that the unit commander of the Green Brigade is dead. You would have been kicked out. The wine in the so-called Countess Nearest glass looked like blood. It was typical of her to always fill his stomach at the expense of others. Tragula thought of Umbra. They hadn't been very close, they had been distant, but not so distant that he was glad she was dead. She had been a good companion, and as a fellow troop leader, she had deserved some respect. She was a much better person than he was, a count's dog for the prestige of the family. As if to mock his thoughts, the sound of Countess Nearest tongue clicking struck Tragula in the back of his mind. Try harder, Tragula. You finally defended your elite status this time, but the special forces she's raising will always be watching your back. I'll do my best. It's not enough to do your best. If you want, use your hands. What Countess Nera said was clear. Tragula paused without realizing it. From what I saw, they were all very young but don't let it slide just because they're young. The Countess accurately hit on the indecisive psychology that remained deep inside of Tragula. Of course, it was true that Tragula was reluctant to kill the special forces. But it wasn't just because they were so young. If Tragula killed them, wouldn't June notice that? No matter how hard he hit it, she would have discovered it one by one herself. And if Tragula killed the special unit, she would never leave him alone. Chapter, 116 If he told Countess Nearest about this, she would probably snicker. No matter how great June is, she's just a supportive wizard, so what's to be afraid of? The truth was that he was probably afraid of Meyer Knox, who was lurking behind her. Everyone in the Imperial Palace recognized her as the Vice Commander of the Black Knights, but in the end, they only recognized the June Carantia that Meyer recognized. Only those who had looked back at the dungeon with her would understand the fierce beast that lurked within her, the beast that had sunk to the bottom. When he faced those fresh red eyes that stared at people, he choked up as if they were revealing every single secret he had been hiding. However, such an assertion would only sound like a weak excuse to Countess Nearest. Tragula swallowed the story of June over his throat. Then let's go now. There's nothing good about stepping on my tail. Let's look forward to more willing news at next year's performance report. Countess Nearest waved her hand as if she had no more business to attend to. But Tragula did not leave the room and hesitated. Countess Nearus raised one of her eyebrows in annoyance. After a few moments of hesitation, Tragula thought about it and wore it heavily. How's the kid doing? Kid? What kid? Countess Nearus asked back naturally. Tragula's face was hardened by her shameless response. Countess Nearus burst into laughter as if laughing at Tragula's reaction. She pretended to realize it late. Ah, you mean your brother. He's doing well. You really miss your brother who you've never seen before. Shouldn't we work harder for your brother, who will inherit the house of Nearus? You will also be the rightful owner of the Golden Falcon. Okay. 
Tragula couldn't bear the chill he got from Countess Nerissa's hand as she lightly tapped his shoulder, but he persevered. He occasionally imagined strangling the woman's neck. He didn't have to put any effort into his hand, her thin neck would snap straight off. But he couldn't. The owner of the Golden Falcon was still Countess Nerus. The Golden Falcon not only showed the whereabouts of the artifact but also had powerful possessive magic that broke as it was when the owner died. If Countess Nerus died, the Golden Falcon would also break. He became strong enough to have the title of a Golden Falcon at level 60, but in the end, he was only a human being tied to the Golden Falcon. There was nothing Tragula could do but clench his fists tightly. As such, he parted from Countess Nerus with only an unrefreshing feeling and thought it would be next year's performance report meeting when he would see her again. However, a few days later, Countess Nerus suddenly called Tragula once more. I heard that your vice commander is not the lover of the Black Knight. Did she go out with someone else? No. I don't think so. Tragula raised an eyebrow, wondering why the question was suddenly about June's lover. Okay. Then can you possibly become the vice commander? It's not a bad picture. If you become elite as planned, you'll eventually defeat the Demon King and become a Grand Duke, so it'll be a union of a Grand Duke and a Grand Duchess. Countess Nearest tapped her finger on the table as if counting. Tragula's ridiculous feelings were not considered by her at all. You will become the son-in-law of the Vice Lord Commander, and the Grand Duchy will be inherited by your son then, House Nearest will be a strong family that nobody can underestimate. She nodded satisfactorily as if she was satisfied with the future she drew. Tragula looked at Countess Nearest in vain. He knew that she only saw him as a tool but to this extent that she would trample him down without any consideration for human dignity. It was no surprise to him now that he thought about it. Because he had been able to anticipate this kind of thing from the moment he had been asked to sleep with her. Tragula couldn't remember with what expression or what answer he had parted with Countess Nerus. That's how taken aback he was. The only thing that kept spinning was Countess Nerus's voice telling him that he had to seduce June. This time, what Countess Nerus had demanded was too much. It was not even possible. Seduce June Carantia. Regardless of whether she liked him, would Meyer spare him if he approached her? However, Countess Nerus would be very angry if her instructions did not go well. If he slipped up on the elite, it would make matters worse. A moment later, as Tragula was holding his head in his hands, wondering what to do now, June, the target of his worries, appeared in front of him. She smiled at him as if she knew what Tragula was thinking. Tragula. Shall we talk for a second? Before entering the dungeon of Minor Forest. When I learned about the meeting between Countess Nerus and Tragula through Sevi, I pondered. In the first round, I adapted to the sudden world in the game, and from then on, I was relatively unfamiliar with my surroundings and had to endure the exclusion of my peers. So, naturally, there were times when I didn't know what others knew. If I could learn more about Tragula, I thought my anxiety would diminish a little. After all, the best way to be sure was to ask an informed person. I went to Meyer, and it was Meyer who noticed something unexpected. Stepson. Yeah. It's not really a secret. The owner of the Golden Falcon that only descendants of the Heavenly Palace can use is Countess Nerus, and the actual descendant of the Heavenly Palace, Tragula, was adopted and it was lent to him. It's a famous story for aristocrats and social circles. The character setting book stated that Tragula is a descendant of the Heavenly Palace, but it does not say anything like complicated family history according to the ownership of artifacts. I made a puzzled look. Whenever I hear that, I don't think there's a reason to be on bad terms didn't Countess Nerus give Tragula a favor. Everyone sees it like this. They all think Tragula is using Countess Nerus. And that Tragula became a high-level expeditionary member thanks to her lending the Golden Falcon to him for free. Meyer's words were subtle. Do you think the same way, Commander? At least I don't think Countess Nerus has entered a damaging relationship. After all, the rejuvenated family after Tragula's name is the Nerus house. There is something she has to gain as well. Perhaps there are greater benefits than we know. Hmm. I tapped my fingertips around my mouth. 
It seemed to be a fairly reliable guess that the Meyer made a remark that seemed to support Tragula even a little. I could have brushed it off, but it felt awkward. Maybe Countess Nearest intervened in Tragula's betrayal. I thought Tragula was full of desire for fame. I also thought that's why he wanted to be the tail of a dragon instead of the head of a snake. However, I had strong speculation that he might have been a puppet to paint the picture that Countess Nearest wanted. Countess Nearest would have hoped that somehow Tragula would become an elite member of the Black Knights, and so Tragula was sticking with the Black Knights while being treated coldly by Meyer. When I thought about it, the part that had been strange hit me just right. He had tried to look good to me by taking advantage of my moods as he saw fit, but sometimes there were subtle moments when his soul seemed to be missing from all of his actions. Meyer lamented as if he had never thought about this before. Countess Nearest intervened. Because in the first round, back then, I was the ship that was going to sink. I don't know much about Countess Nearest, but she seems to be a very broad person if she's adopted Tragula and lent him an artifact. It's probably not the kind of future she wants. Perhaps she wants Tragula to become one of the seven heroes and the House of Nearest to become Grand Duke. Meyer nodded as if he thought it was possible enough. If Countess Nearest really led all that work I can't sit still. First of all, we'll have to break the relationship between Countess Nearest and Tragula. But for Tragula, the Golden Falcon seems to be very important to appease him, we'll have to attack that part first. Do you want Tragula that much? Meyer grumbled disapprovingly. However, he had a much more relaxed attitude than before, and he looked like a sulky puppy. A large handsome man whining. It was pretty good to watch. I smiled quietly, suppressing my desire to pat Meyer's head. There is an expression called chicken ribs among the words I know. I had a feeling that Meyer might not understand it because it was a legend from the Three Kingdoms however, the astute Meyer soon understood the meaning behind it. Chicken ribs. It's a waste to throw away, but there's nothing to eat. Exactly. Of course, Tragula is more useful and overflowing than chicken ribs. In addition I can't open my eyes and see Fabian taking away the resources of the Black Knights. So we should completely subordinate Tragula to our expedition. I spoke firmly. In the end, Meyer, who couldn't break my stubbornness, said with a sigh. Yes. If you want to I've entrusted you with the composition of the expedition. Meyer nodded more gently than expected. Then he peeked at me, and he looked like he was expecting me to compliment him. I could do that for him as much as he wanted. I said with a big smile. I knew the commander would understand. The only person I trust is you. Ahem, ahem. Meyer turned his head lightly and cleared his throat. Maybe it's because he was not in an environment where he's often praised, but flattery worked well. I was worried when Meyer became emperor later. I wonder if there will be a lot of disloyal subjects next to him. I wondered if it was possible, but it was still just in case. Even after defeating the Demon King, I thought I had to stand by Meyer until a foundation was established to some extent. He was a bit of a handful. I immediately smiled and approached Meyer to negotiate. Then how much can I use to appease Tragula? Chapter, 117 What will you use? Supportive magic, artifacts. Come to think of it, the artifact from this dungeon is important I can't use that as a negotiation item, can I? It was no exaggeration to say that the Golden Falcon was legendary in terms of its history and capabilities. However, its versatility was so extreme that there was no one but Tragula who could use it now. On the other hand, Folger's pumpkin had good effects and relatively wide versatility. It was no less of an artifact than the Golden Falcon Tragula had. And Meyer, who had been the owner in the first round, should have known better how valuable the item Folger's pumpkin was. I began to wonder about Meyer's mood. But Meyer nodded pleasantly. Do whatever you want. It seemed that he was not interested in the Folger pumpkin's whereabouts. I was suspicious, so I checked once more. Can I hand it over to Tragula? You thought it would be in my and the Black Knight's best interest to give it to Tragula and get him. That's true, but... That's enough. Then I'll take this opportunity to appease Tragula. I muttered resolutely. It was surprising that Meyer was generous with using Fulger's pumpkin, but that did not mean that the value of the artifact fell. 
Maya nodded as if to do so, and soon added as if he was disappointed. I wanted to give it to you. Me? Yeah. If you have Fulger's pumpkin, you can use attack magic. It's not bad for self-defense. I couldn't believe he wanted to use Fulger's pumpkin as self-defense. Meyer's sense of artifacts was crueler than mine, as a player. I have the commander. The commander will protect me. I gently spoke with honey in my mouth. Meyer's mouth quivered as if my words sounded satisfying. I think I learned a little about how to deal with Meyer. I also smiled with pride. At the demon's lifeless body, Tragula exhaled. An artifact appeared shimmering from between the demon corpse. A direct spark splashed as if blocking access from others other than Tragula, who owned it. But as Tragula reached out, the electricity that had been blasting around him disappeared, revealing a terminally strong and clear pumpkin. Axion, the rest of the Black Knights, and the Fabian expedition, minus Fabian, watched the whole process in a daze. After a while, it was Axion who broke the desolation and raised a sharp voice. Tragula, are you crazy? Axion, who belatedly came to his senses, approached Tragula with a big fury. It was different from his usual attitude of pretending to be rational and smiling. It was June who prevented Axion from making sense of the situation immediately. Calm down, Axion. But June, this is a mutiny. It's a violation of the rules of the expedition. I can't believe he's a captain of the Black Knights. June said to Axion, who couldn't control his anger and spat out. Finally, Axion noticed that something was wrong and looked around. Meyer and August, who were stepping back behind June, were calm, unlike himself. It was as if they had sensed all of this. If he had thought about it, the normal Meyer would have gone ahead and condemned Tragula before he could even stand up. As soon as Axion frowned, wondering, Tragula approached Meyer with Fulger's pumpkin. Then, he suddenly showed the artifact. Meyer replied, looking down at the artifact in Tragula's hand. I have been informed that you will be taking possession of the artifact. I didn't mean to receive it. Then don't strike the last hit. I think there's someone who wants it. Tragula glanced at Fabian. In all honesty, what Fabian had whispered was very tempting to Tragula. If only he hadn't heard the exact same thing from June before that. Fabian's complexion had turned white as he realized that the situation was going to change, not at all like the picture he had painted. June, the party who had laid out the situation for all of this, approached Tragula, shouting in an audible voice. Tragula is also more interesting than I thought. He can match rhythms like this. Many in the room did not know who Tragula's words referred to, but a few, and Fabian, who was involved, could not help but know. Fabian's face turned red, blue, and upside down, and you could not tell the color of his hair from the color of his eyes. Whether Fabian did or not, June just wrapped Tragula's hand, which he held out flatly to Meyer, and let him hold Fulger's pumpkin. First, hold it and ponder about it. I don't think I've given you enough time to think about it. June smiled and stared up at Tragula. In the gaze of irresistible pressure, Tragula looked at June without being able to refuse. When the two looked too close, Meyer's face distorted and his murderous intent leaked. It was blatant and obvious hostility. However, Tragula was more afraid of June in front of him than Meyer Knox. Meyer Knox was a stronger man than him. It was natural to shudder and bow to his threats. June, on the other hand, was much weaker than him. Even if her level was higher than his own, the stats she was born with would never be able to overtake him. But Tragula was frightened of June. That made her all the more grotesque and frightening. A vague fear consumed him as if he were facing an unknown entity. He had known from the start that he could not underestimate her, but it had not been long since he had felt this kind of fear. It had been just before he had entered the dungeon when she had paid Tragula a sudden visit. He looked at June suspiciously, trailing off at the words she suddenly called out and handed over. Information on dungeons was precious and should not be disclosed to anyone. She would let him be informed of such things. When he ruminated on their rapport, he was absolutely sure that the decision was not made based on trust alone. Then June suddenly brought up something out of the blue. Tragula's heart fluttered. 
As his work with Countess Neris was public, it was natural for Meyer and June to know. However, there was no excuse for loyalty. Tragula hurriedly tried to deny his position, having been collared by Countess Neris. However, June's mouth was first to open. What is it that you want to say? June said it as if it were nothing, but Tragula was puzzled. She was just going to give him an artifact that was comparable to the Golden Falcon. Why? While Tragula was making a silly face, June quietly continued to talk. It was both of them. Because Countess Neris didn't want to miss one of the two. Tragula swallowed his spit and muttered. She won't give up the Golden Falcon easily. At June's light words, Tragula opened his eyes, bent like a fox. If she hadn't underestimated the Heavenly Palace, she wouldn't have said something like that. Feeling insulted, Tragula clenched his fist tightly. But June did not care. She spoke more bluntly. June's gaze landed on the golden bow that Tragula had on his shoulder. But not long after she shook her head. Having hit the mark, Tragula clammed up. Yes, he had. He had sold his feats to get the golden falcon back. Chapter 118 June's words were as sweet as honey. He couldn't get his head around it. How could June Carantia tolerate him so much? It was more plausible to claim that all this was a lie to deceive him. Tragula asked falteringly. The words people in our expedition sent a huge shiver through Tragula's heart. Tragula had always been a foreigner. Since he had abandoned the castle, he was no longer forced to mix with the blood of the heavenly palace, and although he had taken the new name of Nerus, he could not even be treated as a Nerus. He joined the Black Knights, but he was always just doing things. Just before that, he was confused by what Countess Nerus ordered. June's offer to him, who was full of skepticism about whether he could live like this, tried to descend like a ray of light in the dark. June continued to raise Tragula. Don't you think about the possibility that I might lie to you and say that I broke off relations with Countess Nerus after I steal the artifact you give me? Tragula paused at June's unexpected answer. June continued in a light tone as if it were nothing. June smiled at him. The smile was bright but thick with menace. Tragula realized. This was the only moment in which he could throw off the chains of bondage that bound him. If Countess Nerus had shifted him like the north wind, June had disarmed his mind like the shining sun. He also realized that this whole thing was all a ploy by June. In the end, he would be playing into June's hands. But Tragula had no choice but to take this thin, white hand in his. Throughout the attack on the dungeon, I knew Fabian was wandering around Tragula. The arrow had already left my hand. What kind of dream did Fabian have? I watched it in a pleasant mood. When Tragula struck the boss, I saw Fabian's expression of delight. I was inwardly worried that he might use some information about Tragula that I didn't know, but seeing him like that, I was relieved to see that it didn't seem likely. Fabian's face, which had been elated even the moment Tragula lifted the pumpkin from the demon's corpse, was destroyed the moment Tragula handed the pumpkin to Meyer. He looked at Tragula, Meyer, and me with a dazed expression. It was hard for him to accept the fact that he had been played by me. It was a sight to behold as he collapsed headlong from joy to despair. What should I do? There's one more pitfall I've set up for him. Perhaps because he was concentrating only on Tragula, Fabian didn't seem to notice the division that was occurring inside his expedition. Axion, who had learned of the situation after Tragula had brought the pumpkin, mumbled sadly in a hollow voice. Everyone talked back and forth. I'm sorry I didn't tell you in advance. I guess the priest knew. Apparently, the dunce of a priest said he was fine with it. I didn't hear about it either, but I stayed still because there was no reason for me to step up. Sure enough, brother came forward first. Why are you so cold-hearted? Axion and August quarreled. Soon, Axion readily shrugged with a sigh. Well, as long as you've planned everything. I don't really care. Honestly, it may have been a little embarrassing, but other than magic, he was a very bold man. I smiled and hugged Jean's shoulder. Well, Jean, let's go back to April. It was a small voice that may or may not have answered, but I've gotten used to Jean like that. I took Jean's hand and made my way to April's place. 
As soon as I approached, the Fabian expedition welcomed me with a smile. Little did they know how Fabian felt, but they lifted me up as if I were amazing. It's the Black Knights after all. I didn't expect them to handle the boss so easily I honestly thought I might not make it out alive. The Vice Commander's support magic also seemed to break the limits of support magic we've seen. Thanks to you, I've broadened my horizons. As support magic was not particularly impressive or effective, they wouldn't feel it well unless I was the person who cast the spell. I laughed at the words that clearly felt flattery. Do they really want to look so good to me that they have to flatter me like this? Indeed, it's a situation where most of the Black Knights put up a wall without coexisting with them. Even Tragula joined the Black Knights immediately after the dungeon attack with them without saying goodbye. In such a situation, even if I was trying to scratch Fabian's insides, I could understand that they were actively flattering me. I don't know what good there is in looking good to me apart from that. I felt a pang in my chest as I silently listened to them praise me with the same lips that had disrespected me in the first round. I knew that they had no connection to me now, but human memory was not something that could be so easily distinguished. I tried hard to pat Jean on the back, pretending to be okay. Thank you for giving me a high evaluation. Then, Jean. I should get going now. It was fun even for a short time. Jean hesitated and looked up at me. I nodded, and I returned to the Black Knights only after confirming that Jean was going to April. Fabian seemed still puzzled and unconscious. But there was no time to show so much room. The dungeon would be closing soon. With the exception of Fabian, the Fabian expedition and the Black Knights diligently acquired the byproducts from the demons. That's how the dungeon was cleared. The gate closed shortly after the expedition members went out. Normally, it was the vice commander's job to organize the list of byproducts. I made a quick list of the byproducts with Decca, the Fabian expedition vice commander, and we discussed the distribution. We need a lot of fulgur leaves for our expedition. You don't mind if we take 90% of it with us, do you? Can't you do 80%? Good. But we'll take 80% of fulgur's fruit. Decca's face contorted. Normally, 30% was the minimum distribution, even if there was a large difference in level between the expedition teams. However, a 30% distribution is the standard when two expeditions have successfully conquered a dungeon without any support. Considering that Tragula had joined the Fabian expedition on the way, the conditions I had requested were not outrageous. Decca knew this. In his day-to-day -day life, he would have tried to negotiate to bring in as much product as possible, but today he had no choice but to nod in agreement with my request. In fact, Fulger's leaves were not that necessary, although they were valuable enough to be used to make high-quality or better restorative potions. It was just an act of trivial revenge. It was a pretty serious thing for a Fabian expedition. He should have been lucky to get 20% of the profits. Just then, Axion, who was originally in charge of the Black Knight's byproducts, hovered around me and gave me some advice. We need roots, too. Oh, let's take some roots. The roots are 80%. Instead, I'll only take 60% of the branches. I said generously, but branches didn't help much. Perhaps that was why Deal smiled through clenched teeth. And I was done sorting through the byproduct list. The long hours of pushing and shoving had been a challenge. I chuckled and said. Now then, we will report to the Imperial Palace on our end. Yes, then I look forward to your kind cooperation. Decca bent at the waist and bowed to the end. In this dungeon, the Fabian expedition's evaluation was honestly not enough to receive the lowest rating. It was not good for the Emperor to know the details of all this. So I was hoping that we could cover things up properly. Perhaps it was pride in asking him to do it, but Fabian was completely detached, pretending that it had nothing to do with him. Come to think of it, he was always like this in the first round. Fabian was generous and bold, but Decca was always there to take care of him. It was Decca who took care of all the little things that needed to be cleaned up or blushed over. Since Decca was in charge of managing the expedition's funds, I, who was less fortunate, often had to ask Decca for help. Often, if an expedition was short on people, they would offer a suitable gratuity and borrow people from other expeditions. 
It wasn't bad, though, as the expedition members who went on dispatch would get money and a small amount of experience. There was no expedition anywhere that wanted a supportive wizard. Instead, they would refuse even if I offered them my money. In fact, that had happened many times. Even though he was clearly aware of my situation, Decca dared to talk about dispatch. Chapter, 119. But that's just it. Now that I think about it, Decca should have been feeling a great deal of stress about putting together an expeditionary team with barely enough money. So I'm going to stop picking now. If Fabian ate the candy anyway, he would have a hard time with him as well. I had done my best to save April from her scheduled suffering. But, aside from what I didn't want to do, Decca wasn't the kind of person I could do that. Decca was suspicious and blind to Fabian. There was no one else who gave affection like April. He was not an easy person to win over in many ways. Anyway, all that remained was to return to the Imperial Palace. It was really fortunate that the debriefing ended while we were still in the dungeon. The Fabian expedition also had to go to the Imperial Palace with us even if there was nothing to report to the Emperor. The Fabian expedition was on the way to go together, so they wanted to have a small conversation with each other. It was a pretty good deal no matter where you went to attack a dungeon with the Black Knights, not to mention friendship with the Black Knights. But it's not like the Black Knights met one or two expedition members who were sticky like that. No one from the Black Knights approached the Fabian expedition in a friendly manner. From the beginning, there was a blatant attempt to block their approach. In the end, the Fabian expedition was unenthusiastic and secured their lines piece by piece. At that moment, April leaned over Jean's shoulder and managed to whisper to her. She took Jean with her and approached the direction where the Black Knights were. It was me, to be exact. Jean looked up at April, a look of tears on her face, but April averted her gaze. April slightly pushed Jean's back and sent her forward with an awkward smile at me. Um, can you take care of Jean at the Black Knights? Jean. I asked back awkwardly. I wanted to ask what exactly she was doing and why Jean was the only one, but I held back and pressed on for the sake of the ears around me. Fabian and other Fabian expedition members looked dumbfounded by April's sudden bombshell remarks. It didn't seem easy to understand what they heard. She showed an unreliable appearance in this dungeon, but she's the best level wizard in our expedition. I know that Jean's talents are outstanding. This time the dungeon just didn't fit her propensity. Thank you for looking at it like that. April giggled. It was a smile that seemed to be happier than any compliment she had received herself. The gate opened early and we were there to pick her up because she was a child who had lost her parents and her home, but we are a small expedition and it is somewhat difficult to take care of young expedition members. That's why we went ahead with an impossible schedule like this dungeon. It was a statement that could have been blamed on the Fabian expedition. As April's words grew longer, Jean's face turned white. Jean hurriedly tugged on April's clothes, looking at Fabian's expedition, but April continued, staring at only me. But the last time I saw the Wind Wizard, the Black Knights didn't seem to overwork the young wizard no matter how talented he was. I think that could be misunderstood. As soon as April's words fell, August and the rest of the Black Knights secretly looked at me. It stung. Although I educated Sevi a little severely no, no matter how much I did, I didn't abuse him like that. The moment I coughed in a small way, Fabian, who came to his senses late afterward, shouted and approached April. What are you talking about, April? Fabian grabbed April's forearm roughly and turned her around. His face was full of red, perhaps because he was angry to the tip of his head. He roared at April. Why do you say you'll send away an expedition member however you want? You should have discussed it with me and Decca. Would you have agreed if we had discussed it? That's. Fabian was speechless at first. His agitation, however, did not last long. Fabian soon spoke quietly, lowering his voice to soothe April. What makes you trust them when we just shared a dungeon with them? Jean is a member of our expedition. Even if she goes to the Black Knights, she's just a stone that rolled over. Do you think Jean will be treated properly by the Black Knights? Rather, they'll roll her more roughly over there. I understand the bewilderment of the Fabian expedition leader, but that doesn't mean you should evaluate us like that. 
Axion smirked and interrupted him. Just when I wanted him to interrupt, he came up with a timely remark. It was at times like this that I really thought that Axion could read my mind. The Black Knights roll in and do not judge people by their own merits, but the Vice Commander said she is an outstanding wizard, so we will naturally treat her as we would a superior wizard. Began also stepped up. Fabian's face twisted as the Black Knights interrupted. All the while, April's expression was uniform. It was as if she had anticipated all this chaos and Fabian's opposition. Fabian struggled to hold on to reason and gritted his teeth. It's within our expedition, so don't interfere. If the expedition leader Fabian hadn't mentioned the Black Knights, I wouldn't have thought of interfering. Axion replied, wrinkling his brow. At first, he thought it was ridiculous, but Fabian's hostility had been more than he had imagined, and he had been a little confused and annoyed. Well, even if Axion has met a lot of people who feel inferior to him, it would be the first time he has expressed it this openly. For the current Fabian, dealing with Began would be the limit. Fabian, unfortunately, fluttered like a fish that came out of the water every time Axion said something. Is it my fault? Aha! I guess the Black Knights usually siphon off other expedition talents like this and put out their flippers. Fabian's expedition leader was whispering to me well in the dungeon, but I don't know if he's in a position to shout that loudly. Tragula, who had been taking a step back so far, sarcastically interrupted him. Axion and the others would not have known, but Tragula seemed to be poked and prodded as if he had done his bit. Fabian's face scrunched up. He dug his own grave as I watched this ridiculous confrontation, I couldn't help but mutter. Anyway he doesn't know who he's blaming for his inability to manage the expedition. Everyone was sensitive for a while because we had just confronted demons. Everyone there heard me muttering. Oh, mistake. Stop thinking about it. I shrugged my shoulders naturally. Fabian's anger soared like a flame. He fired up his boiling anger at me. June Carantia. This is all because you made it up. Fabian's left hand headed to my neck. It looks like he's trying to catch me. I had a sense of deja vu from when we met again at the Imperial Palace. We were almost the same level, but Fabian was a swordsman and I was a wizard with low physical stats. I knew I would get caught, but there was no way to avoid it. Before Fabian's sharp fingertips snatched my neck, his hand was held in the air. It was Meyer. That's the second time that you reached out to June's neck. Meyer was calm as he stared at Fabian. His expression was nonchalant, but as I faced him right in front of me, I could see that his eyes held a heat so hot that it could melt gold. And Fabian would also have felt the pressure and threat. He clenched his teeth and tried to pull his arm out of Meyer's grasp, but there was no chance. And so, lest Fabian should squirm in vain, Meyer's great hand grasped it in its entirety. Lightly, as if there were nothing to take in his hands. Crush, clench. Cake you wake. Fabian tried to endure it, but the pain of bone crumbling and muscle bursting was not a tolerable kind. Fabian's chills were broken and his body sank to the floor. However, because of his arm held by Meyer, his body stopped in the air. All Fabian expedition members shouted, pulling out their weapons and saying, that kind of guy who jumps on senseless opponents without fear is also an expedition leader. Meaningless threats and violence between expeditionary units are prohibited by discipline, Grand Duke Knox. They shouted boldly, but their spirit went that far. They clenched their teeth and aimed the end of their weapons at Meyer, but could not dare to attack. Meyer burst into laughter quietly. Their desperation must have felt like a charge of ants to him. Meaningless? I'm punishing those who have meaninglessly threatened my vice commander. Please, generosity. Decca struggled to say in a cold sweat. It seemed difficult to endure Meyer's momentum. I have a lot of trouble cleaning up after Fabian's uncharacteristic deviations, which he usually pretends to be virtuous. Realizing that I was a step behind, I gave a small smile and a simple thank you to Meyer. Thank you. I'm still not used to this kind of rudeness. I was a little carried away. It's the ones who are disrespectful that are the problem. Thanks to Meyer, I didn't get a hair out of place. A guard dog would have been less faithful than Meyer Knox. Chapter, 120 
But this was enough. I dissuaded Meyer. Stop it now. You're soft-hearted, after all. Meyer clicked his tongue low. However, he opened his hand more gently than I thought. Fabian's hand, twisted by Meyer's hand, fell to the floor and his body also collapsed. Ugh, he walk. Fabian rolled around the floor and grabbed his left arm. The twisted hand was bizarre. If strong pressure was applied, his hand would be gone. Fortunately, or unfortunately, Fabian's hand was still attached. I stared at Meyer's hands. I was caught in those hands. I drooled over without realizing it. I could definitely see why August hated it so much when I awakened Meyer's mana. It was a force far beyond what I thought. Fabian grabbed his arm and found April. Cook April. April, please treat Fabian. Decca and the other expeditionaries all looked at April with earnest eyes. With a low sigh, April approached Fabian and treated his left arm. The healing magic of this world could also be used on an arm that was cut off. The muscles of the torn arm were at least repaired nicely. Even if his hand had been attached properly, the phantom limb pain would still remain and would torment Fabian for years to come. Fabian was ambidextrous, but the minute he gripped his sword with his right hand, he would struggle for a while. It was also questionable whether a dungeon attack would be possible. I stared at Fabian. He used to be such an imposing man, shining brighter than the sun in the sky. I felt a mixture of joy and disturbance in my heart. Catching my breath, I spoke to Meyer. Please excuse me while I have a word with Expedition Commander Fabian. But. Since there are the eyes of others anyway and the commander is here, he won't be able to do anything nonsense. And the pain in his arm will remain. Even if I didn't hide much about the existence of the first round, I didn't have to go around blatantly telling everyone about it. Realizing that I was going to talk about the first round, Meyer nodded as if he couldn't help it. I can't wait that long. Yes. There's not much to talk about. After asking Meyer for permission, I was bitten around. Meyer finally shot Fabian with a disapproving look and left. At the same time, he ordered Tragula to point his bow at Fabian, as if he was anxious. I was left alone with Fabian, who was breathing heavily. Fabian staggered to his feet, his eyes filled with venom. Maybe it was because I was always looking at Meyer. Fabian's shoulders were much lower and more diminutive than I remembered. I looked through him with a dry look and sarcasm. I'm glad your arm is attached, Fabian. It was more painful than that when I lost my arm instead of you. You! Fabian shouted. Half of his voice was empty, mixed with the wind, probably because of the pain. How does it feel to be stabbed in the back of the head? How did you seduce April? Ha, I was really impressed this time. It's amazing. I can't believe you're doing such a harsh thing to make me judge your value again. What bullshit are you spouting? I gave a small laugh at how ridiculous he sounded in this situation. I wasn't even angry right now because I couldn't grasp him like this. What's the meaning of the value you've judged? You are not the strongest expedition leader as before. You need to know the theme. Fabian shook his fist at my contemptuous gaze. It seemed that he had never thought the game would change like this. Fabian shouted as if he was wrongly accused. Did you have a grudge because I didn't pick you up? That's why you used April to cause internal strife in our expedition. You were trying to provoke internal strife in the Black Knights, and I can't. How can you be so selfish? I asked back, smiling with my eyes bent. I hadn't originally intended to go this far, either. April, quite frankly, I was the one who actively invited her, but Fabian was the one who brought the whole Tragula thing on himself. You're really foolish, too. You've taken Tragula in the first round, and there's no way I brought Tragula to the dungeon without any countermeasures, knowing that I'll encounter you. Ha! Huh. I only brought him here because I thought he might be interested, but did he really want to use Tragula? I don't know if I should say it was as I expected, or if I should say that I'm surprised because it was too much as I expected. And April why are you asking me this when you're so irritatingly cruel to Jean? You know how much April cares for Jean. Fabian bit his lip. As much as what he had done to Jean, 
there would have been no point in turning back on himself. Jean is a waste to you. What qualifications do you have? I'm overflowing with qualifications. I laughed out loud. I couldn't stop laughing. I've never laughed so happily. I felt my voice was unfamiliar. Suddenly, I saw the people near me wince as I laughed. I laughed even more at the sight of people sitting in the middle of the path, wondering if they should approach me. Fabian looked at me blankly, as if I were a madman. His thoughts must have been of a small-minded and gentle companion. It was only natural that he should be perplexed by this sudden frenzy of mine since I had responded only rationally and without raising my voice after we met again. After laughing for a while, I wiped away my tears. Do you think it's just Jean? The crown that would have been placed on your head, the honor that should have been circled on your back, the power that you would hold in your hands. I mentioned everything I thought Fabian might have in the first round. They would disappear from Fabian's life, leaving only virtual images like a mirage. That's how I was going to make it. I'm going to take all that was yours. Just watch me. June Carantia. After finishing my sentence like that, I turned coldly. A scream that sounded like Fabian's rang out behind me. Up until now, no matter how much I hated him, he's heard it in his ears, but now he seemed to sense the reality and urgency of the situation. Without regard for Fabian, I headed for where April was. April, who was sitting in the middle between the Black Knights and Fabian's expedition, faced me with a stiff face here and there. I smiled softly and pushed my hand out to reassure her. Okay. We'll take Jean. I won't let anything dangerous happen. I swear honesty. Marianne. Thank you. It was only then that April breathed a sigh of relief and held my hand. At the end of the first round, I never thought that she and I, who once worked together to make Fabian a warrior as his colleague, would become like this. This was the beginning of Fabian's ruin. We left the Fabian expedition behind and headed for the capital. It was only when we came to the dungeon that we had to enter together, so we aligned ourselves, but there was no need to do so when we left. The atmosphere is also a mess. Before I left, I met April one last time. For April, it was not a situation to meet me openly. April's face was full of fatigue, perhaps because it was hard to sneak out. The Fabian expedition seemed to be very wary. I said with concern. April, I want you to come to the Black Knights, too. If you're that talented, the Black Knights will welcome you. I didn't just say it, I meant it. She was talented enough to be chosen as the main healer for the main party. However, April gave a small shake of her head. Thank you for the offer, but I'm also Fabian's best friend. We've been running around together since childhood, and we've been together the moment we made an expedition I can't abandon Fabian and go to another expedition. Will Fabian understand how you feel? For Fabian, you're just a random traitor. I'm sure Fabian would be angry at her for being so reluctant to join the expedition. Fabian won't know. April mumbled absent-mindedly to herself where the Fabian expedition was. Her face was full of regret as she stared at the sight of Fabian's red hair swaying in the sunlight. What I heard from you will continue to be a secret. You can reveal it to Fabian. That I told you about the first round. No, it's just the first and second rounds it was something I shouldn't have known in the first place. If I needed to know, I would have returned with memories with you and Fabian. There must be a reason why St. Marianne didn't leave me a memory. April said firmly. Perhaps it was because she was mentally tired of unexpected truths. She showed a more defensive attitude than at first. But that didn't mean I could just send her to the Fabian expedition like this. I repeatedly persuaded April. Fabian now is not the person you know. He's completely different. Fabian might kill you at this rate. Then that's my business, too. I was at a loss for a moment to persuade April's small words. I have a promise to Fabian. Even if I can no longer be with Fabian's expedition I can't work for another expedition that competes with him. My only expedition leader is Fabian. After saying that, April returned to the place where Fabian's expedition was. It's something April doesn't remember, but I got help during the first round it was uncomfortable to keep her on the sinking ship, but April was stubborn and I couldn't help it. Behind April, 
my old self overlapped. Me in the first round, who was blind and knew nothing but to follow the one path given to me. Suddenly anxious at that moment, I held April's arm trying to move away in a hurry. My reflection in April's embarrassed eyes was somewhat desperate. I was in a hurry to say it. April, maybe. Chapter, 121 Suddenly alone among strangers, Jean seemed depressed. As if she missed April, she kept lowering her head and only moved her hands. Knowing how Jean felt, I continued to care for her. Jinia, who had been worried about Jean before we went to the dungeon, also paid attention to Jean. But both of us were too insensitive to treat a child. We didn't know what to say to her, and we couldn't open our mouths. Jean and I had known each other in the first round, but we were not that close. So I didn't know the slightest bit about what Jean might find interesting, which would be a topic for conversation. But bringing up April would be setting fire to straws. As Jinia and I were looking at Jean, began approach Jean without hesitation. Jean, do you like dried fruits? Then he held out a small package of dried fruits. It was a neat white linen pocket with a sky blue ribbon tied around it. I wondered where in the forest he had suddenly gotten such a pocket, and if he had tied the ribbon himself he had good talent. However, such an attempt by began was useless. Jean bowed her head and did not answer anything. Even though it would be awkward to play drums and jangu alone, began continued to speak skillfully by himself with the momentum of spinning his head. The good thing about the Black Knights is that they cook rice well. And dried fruits, you never know how thick and sweet they are. Began took out the dried fruit by loosening the ribbon. Then he asked Jean, sticking it out. Do you want to try one? Just looking at the dried fruit, which was covered with a snowy powder of sugar that seeped out of the pulp, made me salivate. She had to accept the fine stuff as it was thrust at her nose. Eventually, Jean picked up the dried fruit and took a small bite out of the end. Her eyes, which had previously sunk into melancholy, went wide for a moment. Isn't it good? Began smiled and gave Jean the whole pocket. Jean raised her head puzzled, but Began, who achieved his goal, moved away from her. It was a proper hit and fall. I sneaked up on Began and gave him pure admiration. That was amazing. The best way to get close by nature is through what you eat. Breaking down vigilance with food was really one-dimensional, but it was definitely an effective way. In fact, the first day I came to the Black Knights, I received the menu and was very satisfied. That's right. She's thirteen years old, but she's that small we need to feed her well. I agree. Come to think of it, the leader has closed dungeons since he was thirteen years old I think the leader has managed to grow up well. I glanced at Meyer driving a horse from the lead. Even just a big Meyer wearing armor and riding a huge black horse, he was almost as big as a huge demon. If Meyer had been shorter, he certainly wouldn't have been as intimidating as he was now. I nodded my head fortunately. The commander is an exception. He is an example of bloodline and lineage winning over nutritional intake. Began jumped up. I certainly didn't consider Meyer to be in the summit category either. I asked, glancing toward Jean. By the way, when did you pack those dried fruit bags? It wasn't an existing supply bag. I normally like things like this. We didn't have this last time when we did the dungeon bang. I took it with me. Just disappeared as soon as I got around the dungeon bang. Began complained, saying, the vice commander rolls people too hard. At the same time, his eyes were nailed to Jean, who began to eat dried fruits little by little. A look of nostalgia crossed Began's face. Does he think of his child? But I only had a rough idea of Began's past. As I couldn't ask openly, I quietly shut up. Looking at that, I could understand that Jean was depressed all day after falling from April. Among the expedition members, the proportion of those who were left alone after losing their families was quite high. Just as Began tried to project his child onto Jean, whom he had just met, Jean probably thought of April as her only family, as her own sister. April also thought of Jean as her own little sister, which is probably why she sent her to the Black Knights in this way, to try to avoid a future where Jean might die. It was only natural that the pain of separation would be great since they were more than just expedition companions, they were almost family. 
even after that, began constantly talk to Jean. I was amazed by his tenacity and perseverance. There's a boy your age in our expedition, Sevi. I know. The door opens when you knock, and after began talk to her several times, Jean began to tremble and answer. Do you know? Have you met him already? When? Jean nodded her head small when began asked back in surprise. The two of them then continued their conversation, albeit in a slightly different manner. The specific gravity of Began's remarks was such that Jean could only say a few words, but it was clearly a noteworthy achievement. Come to think of it, even when Sevi was mumbling cheekily, he answered shrewdly. Should I say it was patience? He was really good with kids. Began murmured as if he were happy. So Jean will be joining the special forces after all. I'm thinking about doing that. I drove my horse toward him and answered. I couldn't leave her to another unit as I was asked by April. Began made a fuss. Wow, Jean, you're lucky. The special forces have a lot of support. The vice commander is the captain of the unit and is very frugal and delicate, so she supports the members a lot. Hmm. It sounds like the captain of the Red Wolf unit doesn't. Axion suddenly intervened. Began asked back as if he was absurd. Then, is the captain frugal and delicate? He's only crazy about magic and is likely to drive his troops to the limbs. I believe in the abilities of the troops. If the vice commander rolls people hard, the unit captain rolls people rough. There's a subtle difference. Jean smiled softly at the appearance of Began and Axion grumbling. I was relieved because she seemed to adapt well to Began. Just because Jean had suddenly decided to join the Black Knights from a expeditionary force of the Middle and Lower Regions, there had to be some people in the Black Knights who were not mature enough. Still, it was good to know that all of them who came to the dungeon this time were competent and had enough common sense not to think badly of a child for something like this. But Jean. I'm curious about something. With ice magic, how much temperature can you drop to? In the case of flame magic, the magic is triggered by selecting the ignition point within the range of mana is ice magic the same? Can you freeze not only moisture in the air but also other things? I'll take back what I just said about common sense people. If you put magic in front of him, I forgot for a moment that he could not see age, situation, or back. Jean, embarrassed by Axion's sudden conversation without a clue, showed reluctance. However, Axion kept asking Jean whether she was shy or not. Among the magic used in the dungeon, there is a magic called Absolute Zero. Is that magic consumed as much as the temperature lowered? Uh, that. Have you ever frozen a flame wizard's ignition body? Even before Jean could answer, no question mark killer went out first. Everyone there sighed. I shook my head and stopped Axion. Be in moderation, Axion. It didn't take long to get back to the Imperial Palace. As soon as we entered the capital, people cheered. As it was a dungeon held in a forest near the capital, everyone seemed nervous and anxious. Upon arriving at the Imperial Palace, Meyer and I immediately visited the Emperor. So we completely wiped it out. Hmm, as expected of the Black Knights. I've always had faith in you, but you've always shown more than trust. I'm flattered. Meyer nodded his head curtly. Even though his mouth was overly complimentary, his face was nonchalant, and his true feelings came to light. By the way. I didn't know the expedition I chose would hold you back. I believed that the expedition leader came out boldly, but if you hadn't gone, something big would have happened. The emperor lamented. Not that Meyer had said or done anything bad about Fabian to him. He was just reporting the facts. What Fabian had committed was really trivial to say, just an objective phenomenon with no personal feeling. It wasn't to that extent in the first round rather, I think in the first round he was calmer and smarter. What made Fabian so foolish? I clicked my tongue low. They say that when people become self-conscious, they don't look at their surroundings, and that's exactly what happened. It was such a bad yoke that he just kept burying himself in the fact that he was the chosen hero and had no choice but to win and fall into the quagmire. I've been holding on to you for too long. Go and rest. 
After such public work, Meyer and I returned to the accommodation where other expeditions were waiting. The conclusion was that the training menu went well as I asked Rober. As soon as I was satisfied with the children's whining, I heard an unexpected story. What? Julieta's brother came to the training ground? Chapter 122 The training grounds were only open to expedition members and the Imperial Knights, but I couldn't figure out how a nobleman, Julieta's brother without a title, could have gotten in. I remembered my parents who tried to get close to me through the Black Knights. The truth is, they have good guts, too. I clicked my tongue. For a while, your parents went in and out, and now your brother is here to bother you. I looked at Julieta with a pitiful gaze. But the expressions on the faces of Julieta, Nova, and Sevi were strange. Yes, but he went by quickly. He'll probably never come back. Why did he come here then? At my expression of incomprehension, the trio looked at each other. It was a look that pushed them to see who would speak first. In the end, it was Julieta, the party who carried the gun. Julieta crept around and said. My parents have been coming to see me lately. So my brother may have thought he was left out. So what? Um. I guess he had something against me. In short, it was crooked. I thought he was trying to be seen well by Julieta or connect with him, but the reality was beyond imagination. I couldn't believe it was the one visiting his sister, not the parents that caused the dissatisfaction. This was sickening, even for a late adolescent. Sevi, who was listening to the conversation, got an itch in his mouth and eventually couldn't resist interrupting. As soon as he came to the training ground, he screamed and looked for Julieta. It's a good thing there weren't many people at the training grounds. So. What happened? What do you think? When the person entered the training ground, Julieta was simply breaking logs as a warm-up exercise. Of course, with bare hands. Ah. I sighed lowly. I could see the situation in my mind. I rushed Sevi. After that? Well, he took his tail and turned straight back. How could he raise his voice when he saw that? He was also a non-expedition member. So that's what happened. When I saw the power of the flying black knight, Julieta myself, I sometimes got goosebumps. It seems that he came here thinking that he had enough muscle strength to have an accident before Julieta went to the monastery, but he must have broken out in a cold sweat when he encountered such a scene. It's okay because everything's fine. He won't show up for a while. I was relieved little by little. I hated annoying things. He probably won't appear in the future. He sent a letter to Julieta. What letter? He felt sorry. I lost my mind for a moment please forgive me. I've been working hard to be the son my parents expected me to be, but suddenly I felt like I was being pushed away, and I think I went crazy for a while now I've regained consciousness. From now on, I'm going to find my own life, not the one my parents want. The day I left you, I left home immediately and started looking for a job if I get a job safely later, I'll say hello briefly, something like that. Sevi went long and hard over the contents of the letter to Julieta. He seemed to remember the letter in a roundabout way. He changed his position so fast. I'd rather have that. Julieta sighed and added. I'm weak-minded, so I think I'd have been bothered for a long time if my brother had gone off on some strange tangent. Gambling, hanging out with the wrong crowd, and causing accidents. Knowing herself well, Julieta shook her head as she counted on her fingers the stirrups her brother would pull. Just the thought of it seemed to be exhausting. Perhaps he didn't even dare to rebel or twist at the sight of Julieta's power. Maybe he didn't dare defy his sister's moods because he might end up in her hands if he made a mistake it was a story with a lot of possibilities. I couldn't have the slightest idea what her brother was going through, but as if it was just a blessing, I looked at Julieta with a sufficient smile and complimented her on a job well done. I looked around late and asked. Come to think of it, a new friend came into our special unit. Have you met her? Yes. Jean. Began and Ginia showed her around earlier. She looked pretty tired, so we put her to bed for now should we wake her up? Julieta asked, secretly looking around. I didn't see Jean anyway, so I roughly guessed that the situation would be like that. I shook my head. 
No. You did a good job. Jean is younger than Sebi, so you have to take good care of her. Got it? Don't worry. Being seniors, the trio nodded enthusiastically. Their enthusiasm was cocky, so I added a word of concern. Don't say weird things. Weird things. Don't scare her for no reason. Like saying things such as that you didn't leave the dungeon for six months. Eh, but it's the truth. Sevi, you're becoming more like Axion. Ack. Scary to hear of Axion, Sevi shuddered. Nova and Julieta pointed and giggled at the sight. As I was bickering with the trio, I felt like I had returned home for some reason. A sense of belonging that I could not feel in the Fabian expedition. I stroked Sevi's hair and immediately opened my arms to hug the trio at once. The children, who were much better than me in terms of strength and muscle power, easily followed me and made sleepy noises in my arms I laughed out loud at the peace that this moment gave me. The Fabian expedition returned to the capital one step later than the Black Knights. The excitement that had greeted the Black Knights had already cooled down. The pain in Fabian's right arm kept reminding him of the humiliation he had suffered. Fabian gritted his teeth. Thus, Fabian's expedition stepped between the indifference of the crowd and entered the Imperial Palace. Among the expeditions that were still in the Imperial Palace, one who recognized Fabian spoke without noticing. Yo, Fabian Expedition. How do you feel about breaking the dungeon with the Black Knights? Did you see the wizard skills? Fabian passed by them silently. The mere mention of the Black Knights raised his fever. The ignored expedition sarcastically looked at Fabian. Look at this, you're an expedition in the lower and middle ranks yet you're acting all cocky because you've broken a dungeon with the Black Knights once. It was not a small voice, so it caught his ear. The rest of the expedition followed him with restless faces as Fabian gritted his teeth and stepped forward. The rest of the expedition, who had been waiting at the Imperial Palace when they heard the news of Fabian's arrival, welcomed them with bright smiles. Fabian, did you level up a lot? How did you experience breaking a dungeon with the Black Knights? The same words he heard earlier in the hallway. Decca gave the expedition members a look that told them to be quiet. Realizing that there was something wrong with the atmosphere, they all fell silent. At that time, someone who noticed something asked confusingly. Huh, Jean. All the eyes of the expedition members who had been to the dungeon turned to Fabian. Fabian felt their sharp stares as if it were an accusation against him. He couldn't keep his mouth shut forever. Fabian smiled with all the pretense he could raise. She moved to the Black Knights. Wow, really? How? Is that possible? Fearing Fabian's words that fell, the expedition members made a big fuss. They all seemed to be in disbelief. Well, Jean's talent is outstanding, so it's worth aiming for in the Black Knights. There's no ice wizard with a title there either. But she's raised her level in our expedition so far. Aren't the Black Knights eating too raw? I know. They have enough manpower, so do they have to bring a mage from a small and medium-sized expedition like us? Jean is Jean, too. No matter how young she is, she's going to go right now just because the Black Knights offered her a proposal. She's not loyal. She's young. She can't see things far away. Those who had been to the dungeon in a whirlwind of noise and maintained only silence. April's expression, in particular, was frosty and very horrified. April said in the middle of everyone's commotion. Why aren't you saying anything, Fabian? You have to tell them that I sent Jean to the Black Knights at will and that Jean didn't go because she wanted to go. Jean is the only one being criticized. April. Your error in judgment put Jean in danger, so I sent her to the Black Knights where she would be safe. Why are you aiding and abetting the story to go back and forth as if Jean had gone on her own? April's voice echoed low in the common room. The gazes of those who had remained in the palace and those who had gone to the dungeon were mixed with anxiety. Those who didn't know what was going on stared at Fabian in bewilderment. I thought I wouldn't be disappointed anymore you're the worst. April said and kicked her way out of the common room. No one could easily open their mouths to the unexpected situation. In the cold, watery atmosphere air everyone was just looking at each other, 
Fabian tried to fix the situation with an awkward smile. There was a misunderstanding with April in the dungeon. I think she's completely mistaken. I'll try to persuade her. Then he rushed after April. Decca also hurriedly followed the unusual momentum of his friends. Fabian called out to April from the other side of the corridor as she walked in a wide stride. April. Chapter, 123. April's feet stopped at Fabian's shout. Then she turned around lazily and faced Fabian. The expression on April's face as she turned and faced Fabian was so cold that it was hard to believe he had ever seen her like that. No. He had seen her face like that once at the end of the first round, when Jean died at the time of the Demon King battle. Of course, Fabian knew that April cared for Jean. But he didn't know she could act so irrationally because of that. It was frustrating to lose power to the Black Knights of all people. For April, Jean was irrevocable, but she was too emotional. Okay. He should take this opportunity to say something about it. Fabian thought and opened his mouth. What on earth are you? Perfect timing. I also have something to say, Fabian. But April came first. She calmly continued to talk. I've been thinking about it, but now I'm determined. What? What the hell is wrong with you? That you took the liberty of sending Jean to them, and that I deliberately stifled my anger because it was you. I've given you plenty of consideration. You don't have to put up with this because of me. April responded coldly and heartlessly. Fabian tried to keep his anger in check and speak favorably, but April was not the least bit sensitive to Fabian's feelings. I'm going to leave the expedition. There was not the slightest hesitation as the guillotine fell. Decca, who caught up with Fabian and April, looked confused, unable to adjust to the sudden atmosphere. Decca looked at Fabian and April alternately, but the two glared at each other in spite of Decca. Blue flames flared in Fabian's eyes. Winding up tightly, Fabian shook his fists. But he pretended to be casual and listened unconcernedly. Why? Are you going to join the Black Knights too? No. I'm going back to my hometown. April's sarcastic expression answering Fabian's question was firm without a little backing down. At that moment Fabian felt an irreparable crack between her and himself. It wasn't something he could repair. It was an instinctive realization. At the same time, Fabian bent his eyes and smiled. It was a friendly and sweet smile. Sure. You've decided that, so there's nothing I can do. Fabian. Decca shouted in confusion. However, Fabian did not reverse. April also showed no signs of agonizing. It's too much to pack right now, so I'll leave this evening. Yeah. It's a shame that this happened, but there's nothing we can do about it. First, go to the dorm and rest. Fabian pretended to be generous. April immediately turned around and headed for the accommodations. Decca, who came to his senses late, shouted absurdly. Why are you both so natural? Am I the only one who's flustered by this situation? Calm down, Decca. What do you mean, calm down? April is upset about what happened to Jean, so she's doing that. How can you react to that right away? It's not a situation that can be persuaded. I did something wrong. I was too mean to Jean. Fabian drooped his shoulders. His sullen face was full of sad feelings. But Decca couldn't guess what Fabian was thinking at all. Unable to say anything more about Fabian's drooping appearance, he was tongue-tied by frustration. Confusion and resentment shook Decca, but he was the vice-leader of the expedition. Such a position to make rational judgments as much as possible. Decca groaned and asked. What are you going to do with the healers in our expedition? The healers we have in our service are low level. For the time being, we have no choice but to raise our healer levels in parallel with holy water. Phew, seriously. Decca shook his head. Everything was spilled water and returning seemed to be a long way off. Then, he had no choice but to do what he could now. Let's go back to the rest area first. I'm sure all the expedition members were flustered. April will change her mind if she rests a little in her hometown. I hope so. 
Decca grumbled that April was too much and headed to the rest area. Fabian's gaze, left alone in the hallway, reached the place where April had disappeared. A cold face where you had no idea what he was thinking about teased the space. Decca, who had been moving ahead, turned suspiciously back at Fabian's lack of pursuit. Fabian? Yes, I'm coming soon. Soon Fabian turned his head toward Decca and smiled. Everything that had been lurking in his face until just now had disappeared. April packed up right away. April's equipment would have been quite a fortune to sell, but she gave it to her usual close priests and wizards. This? This isn't it precious? April, you even saved for a while to get this. I don't have any use for it anymore. They, who were anxious and regretful about the fact that she was leaving the expedition, did not refuse April's distribution of equipment. I quit like this but you guys are the strength of the Fabian. No matter how less affectionate she was, Fabian was still her best friend. She wanted to be of help in this way. April smiled bitterly. After all, she was too weak to know the truth. That night, as promised, April quietly packed her things. She wondered how long she had walked out of the Imperial Palace without anyone knowing when a familiar voice stopped her. I'm here to say goodbye, April. Still, between us we can't just break up like this. Fabian. April's face, which had been standing so far, had eased. Fabian approached April with a light step. An old smile broke out from her best friend she hadn't been familiar with for a while. Come to think of it, they had been through everything together ever since they were born. This was the first goodbye that had been placed between them. When she thought about it, April's heart, which had been as sturdy as iron earlier, slowly began to crumble. At that moment, hot and sharp pain penetrated April's abdomen. Cook. Since we won't see each other in the future. Fabian whispered in a low voice as he held April in his arms. April was taken aback by surprise. Incredulous, April groped her abdomen. She could feel the coldness of the sword blade that pierced her abdomen on her fingertips. It's a lie that you're going to your hometown, and you're planning to go to the Black Knights, right? As if he had changed suddenly, there was even resentment in Fabian's gaze at her. As expected, you're thinking of following them. Right? Like June and Jean it's not the first time. Do you think I'll let them take you, too? April scratched Fabian's arm, but there was no way she could overcome the mage's power. Fabian's arm, which had been twisted by Meyer, was not as strong as it used to be, but it was difficult for a priest to overpower it. Holding April tightly, Fabian pulled the sword from April's abdomen and twisted it again. Her eyes lit up with searing pain. This wasn't just a stabbing pain. It was clear that he used poison. April spat out reddish-black blood and stared at Fabian with bloodied, torn eyes. Ugh F Fabian. I didn't want to do this either, April. Fabian mumbled falteringly. His red hair was hanging down and his face was bloodless. It was ridiculous to think of the Fabian of before, even for a moment. The man in front of her was a stranger to April. As she was stabbed to death, April struggled and managed to continue one letter at a time. Earlier the reason why you said you'd just let me go is because was it because of Decca? There's Decca, too it's not easy to kill in the Imperial Palace. It's easy to get caught. Really how did this happen, Fabian? The end of April's voice was teary with regret and pain. However, Fabian was just drunk on his own pity for killing his little friend with his own hands. I was always like this. You're the one who changed. So why do you want to abandon me and go to the Black Knights? You you won't be able to achieve anything like this. Fabian remained calm despite April's curse-like sentence. That's just the thought of a normal person like you. Rather, Fabian swept April's blood-stained cheeks as if he truly felt sorry for her. I've been chosen. I wanted you to enjoy the honor of the end together it's a pity that this happened. April wanted to say something back. You are definitely not the one who was chosen however, the poison took the tip of her tongue and made it firm. April's body immediately went limp. Fabian caught April's pulse. Her spark of life was almost gone. Healing with holy power was not as easy as thinking. It took a lot of mental strength and concentration, 
and in this state, she would die just by being left alone. Fabian took April to a hole he had dug deep in the ground. As far as he was concerned, burning it would be the cleanest way to destroy the evidence, but he couldn't do that because it was night. If I do this, they won't be able to take you away goodbye, April. Still, I'll put your name in an honorable position later for our past friendship. Fabian, who buried April in the ground and handled it, hurriedly returned to his accommodation. Decca, who was reading with the moonlight as the light, welcomed Fabian. It's later than I thought. Did April see you off well? Yes. I asked her to come back when she changed her mind. Good. April is sensitive to Jean, but she may change her mind later. Decca shook his head. At the same time, his gaze was out of the window. Fabian knew that Decca was secretly in love with April. But Decca had kept that fact hidden, and Fabian had only pretended not to know because he didn't think it would be a good idea for romantic feelings to interfere with the expedition. And now he had to hide it even more. As soon as Fabian, who had pledged to do so, tried to turn his foot to bed, Decca asked as if he was wondering. Have you changed your clothes, by the way? I can smell the faint scent of blood. Chapter 124 It was a heartbreaking question, but it was all within the upper range. It would have been rather strange if Decca, one of the most skilled archers in the expedition, hadn't noticed. Fabian answered flatly. Oh. I got into a quarrel with another expedition on my way here. That's why you're late. Decca clicked his tongue low and closed the book. Then he looked at Fabian seriously and added with concern. Don't make me stand up so much. You never know when, where, or how you'll meet, and it's never good to be pestered for no reason. Okay. I won't do that from now on. Fabian nodded gently. Yeah. You must be feeling uneasy and distracted. Let's sleep now. Decca, who was deceived by Fabian's natural acting, lay in bed without knowing anything and slept. Fabian, who got to bed one step later, looked out the window. The moonlight was exceptionally bright today. As if to reveal his sins. Fabian tried to cover himself with the blanket as if he didn't know. It was not until his vision was covered with darkness that he could relax. I dug up the dirt and before too long April's face appeared, completely white. Gritting my teeth, I rushed to brush away the dirt that had spilled on her face. I tried to pull April out of the hollow, but she was dug deeper than I thought and it was not easy to pull her out. Wait. Meyer stepped up. For me, the hard work, like pulling out a tree by the root, was easier for him than pulling out a radish. Meyer laid April on the ground. April still couldn't come to her senses. I immediately looked at the status window to see what was going on. April's strength was still intact, but she was still unconscious. I asked August in concern. Are you sure she's okay? Why won't she come to her senses? Body damage and mental damage are separate. She'll get herself together in a little while. I let out a low sigh of relief. As August said, it wasn't long before April's eyelashes trembled. April, are you okay? June. April opened her eyes slowly. Her eyes were still hazy as if they had not escaped from helplessness. It was then that I finally felt completely at ease. It's been detoxifying, but it's going to be hard to move right away because of the aftereffects. I know. April couldn't even nod her head and just let her lips quiver. I smiled bitterly at the sight of her. I'm glad I took precautions just in case. When we parted after the dungeon attack, I had an uneasy feeling and hurriedly grabbed April to warn her. April didn't like it. She didn't seem to want to doubt Fabian that much. However, she nodded that she would do what I said in the end because I was forced to insist. Thanks to that, I was able to meet April before she left. Everything seemed to be going away simply, but I couldn't easily believe it. I could have called it doubt sickness. There's a saying that you have to knock on a stone bridge before you cross it. I asked April carefully. April was alarmed by my repeated and inexplicable requests. She had a faint suspicion that I was trying to take advantage of her. Even I thought it was a gentle attitude like a scammer doing voice fishing. I wanted to tell her it was okay if she didn't like it that much, 
but I had a feeling that Fabian would continue to try to find a way. I didn't give up and persuaded April. It was not until I swore to Esti. Marianne that I could accept her as a party member. That's a relief. I really didn't know if Fabian would try to kill her. What I used on April was holy devotion. Holy devotion was not omnipotent, and there were several conditions. Due to the requirement that it can only be used within the same party members, I was forced to let April join the party and transfer her damage to the other party members. Of course, I tried to designate myself as the person to be transferred, but Meyer and August jumped when they heard the story. Meyer was so violent that it was a lie that he had ever been obedient. He was really fickle. I asked back awkwardly. Meyer looked at me curiously. Rationally, it was the right choice. Meyer would not be intimidated by Fabian's current attack power, even if it was fatal. However, I felt uncomfortable and uneasy putting Meyer forward. A corner of my chest tensed up strangely and uncomfortably. What was more frustrating was that I had no idea why. Still, as the leader of our expedition, was it appropriate to be swept away and hurt by what I had done? I thought long and hard but could not get a clear answer. No matter how much I tried to explain my discomfort, August and Meyer were deaf to it. In any case, I had no choice but to accept reason and logic and decided that Meyer would be my designate. And the three sat in Meyer's drawing room and waited for the time to come. Rather, I hoped that dawn would rise without anything going on. Meyer calmly suggested. As long as Fabian attacked dungeons, he was a necessary evil for Meyer. That's probably why he kept him alive even though he was a thorn in his eye. Now Fabian seemed to have been so irritating that even such beliefs were covered for a while. She's still on guard now no matter how attached she was to Fabian, it was definitely not a good choice for us to ride out and kill him. Once again I emphasized. Meyer said as if it were annoying. At Meyer's coercion, I breathed a low sigh. With Meyer and August, April may not be eye-catching, but the position of the main healer of the main party was not given to anyone. We carried August around now, but as the party grew bigger, healers needed one more decent backup. In the meantime, the moment that I waited for and did not wait for arrived. As soon as Fabian's blade penetrated April's abdomen, the wound was conveyed to Meyer. The moment I saw the blood trickling from Meyer's abdomen, I regretted that maybe I had made the wrong choice. Of course, Meyer was calm about the pain of being stabbed. He was fine, but my heart, watching him, was not. Injuries to expedition members in dungeons are more frequent than I thought, so I was used to them. It wasn't something I should be in such a hurry about, but I couldn't help but feel my heart sink. No matter how good the treatment would be, would it be worth the pain it would cause Meyer? At this moment, I couldn't nod in agreement at all. Apart from the fact that my mind was in turmoil, August treated Meyer well. However, blood was constantly flowing from his wounds, as the cause of his injury was not here. August, who saw the color of blood, muttered quietly. Meyer clicked his tongue in disgust. The word poison made me change my state in a panic. In spite of holy devotion, April's strength was slowly waning. I had to save April first. I decided to fold up the complicated emotions that were plaguing my mind again and focus on what I needed to do right now. We rushed to the place where the party window appeared, but April was not there. It didn't take long to recall that she would be buried. As a result of such a hurry, I was able to save April safely. April came to her senses, but she was still out of it. She murmured blankly with a hazy face due to the aftermath of the poison. I really I guess I got the wrong person. Chapter, 125 I helped April pull herself together. While doing so, I slowly noticed. I knew she was out of her mind now, but I had to persuade her right away. If Fabian knew you weren't dead eventually, he would kill you again to keep your mouth shut. You can't go to your hometown like this. Then what should I do? April hung on to me and asked. Her shaky eyes didn't faint. I held April's trembling hands tightly and made eye contact with her. I'm sorry to reverse my words, but it seems safest for you to be in the Black Knights. Because the only way to not die to Fabian is to eventually become stronger than him. I tried to speak as if I were as selfless as possible. But it wasn't wrong. 
As I said, the only way she was safe was to become a black knight. There was a shadow on April's face. Meyer, who was still listening to the story, suddenly intervened. After all, killing Fabian would be cleaner in many ways. April is not in a good condition. What's wrong with him? I glanced at Meyer. Meyer shrugged and said nothing. He didn't do it unknowingly, and his attitude was clearly intentional. Maybe it was because of what we had said earlier about being willing to kill Fabian if April agreed. That seemed to be the only reason I could think of. Please don't kill Fabian. April got up and firmly grabbed the hem of her dirt-stained skirt. Her hands were stained with blood. April smiled bitterly and muttered, wiping the blood dried up on her hand on the skirt. Although I can't forgive him for doing this still, I want to believe that he's just off now and that this is not what Fabian Ignis really looks like. Just because you want to believe him doesn't cover the truth. Commander. I stopped the sarcastic Meyer. As April was also Fabian's colleague, there was no warmth in Meyer's attitude toward her. But Meyer's words were not wrong. I asked April once again in a calm voice. Do you want to save Fabian even if you live in hiding for the rest of your life because of him? Fabian will do the exact same thing in the future. Maybe even get in the way of our path. Do we still have to save him? When asked again, April blankly lowered her hand. She rubbed it several times, but there was still a bloodstain on her hand. April said quietly. If he is kept alive and still remains the same at all if all of his true appearances I believed were pretenses, then. I'll kill Fabian then. April raised her head resolutely. Of course, it was close to impossible for her as a healer to kill Fabian. But that wasn't the point. Determination to kill Fabian. It was meaningful just to get the resolution from her. April added with an awkward smile. I know it's shameless of me to do this even though you saved me regardless of this or that, I have a debt in my heart to Fabian. Although Fabian tried to kill me, before that, I broke my oath with him first. If I save Fabian now I'll be able to shake off all that debt. I remembered the conversation script Fabian had with Decca and April as they left their hometown. It was a story in the game for me, but it would have been a memory and hope embedded in April like a nail. I nodded my head. If April's determination is so but you can't live as April Pius in the future. She had to wash her identity completely because we didn't know what Fabian would do if he knew. April nodded with a face that accepted everything. I'm determined. I if you accept me, I'll do my best in the Black Knights. This drew April into the Black Knights as well. It was a painful accomplishment that reminded me of the first round. Since they belonged to the Black Knights, there were as many outstanding talents as radishes scattered across the field, but I really had to work hard to hold them in my arms in the first round. Mainly because I listened to their wishes and in the process of resolving them they came to trust the Fabian expedition. Still, it was a good thing that Fabian, the game's protagonist, had so many fateful encounters with human resources it would have been more difficult if they had never met in the first place. Of course, it was a story that had nothing to do with me today. I encouraged April. Good thinking, April. Jean will be able to adapt much more steadily with you around her. April who is now able to move, rose slowly. I helped her in no time. April, who stumbled, looked at me and said. But for me, the object of my allegiance is not the Black Knight. When I said I didn't understand what April was saying, she knelt down in front of me again. I rushed to stop her, but April held her ground. June. She looked up at me and said. You were the only one who tried to save me, and you were the only one who didn't give up on me. Her quiet voice rang in the vacant lot. Unlike me, who didn't know what to do, April didn't back down as if she had firmly decided. June, you give me a new name. You'll be my new hero. But. I know you're having a hard time. However, for me. April shook her head stubbornly. To swear loyalty to the vice commander over the commander, there is even a degree of ignoring Meyer. If Meyer took it a little crooked, it was not unreasonable to regard it as a will to rebel. Meyer doesn't like April as there are many things to do with her in the future, it was difficult when she was out of Meyer's eyes. I was in a hurry to catch on to Meyer's mind. 
Meyer opened his mouth slowly. Commander, Vice Commander, it's all just a title. However, Meyer was less interested than I had expected. I wondered if it was because of his overwhelming confidence in my abilities, or if he trusted me that much. He looked at me and tapped his chin toward April as if he didn't feel the slightest threat to his position in all this. It's the person you saved. So you're right to take responsibility, June. I nodded. Finally, a smile of relief spread across April's face. I took April back to my quarters, and the first thing I did was to look for someone in secret. An ordinary woman of April's age and build. It wasn't long before August brought a woman who met the conditions I wanted. She was a village wife living on the edge of the capital. And I cast transformation magic on April. The village wife was surprised by the magic she saw for the first time. This is possible with magic. We have to keep this a secret. If you spill this fact, the Black Knights will not forgive you. I threatened her. The lady turned pale and jumped up. Oh, don't worry. The money you gave me is too abundant for my work, so I know. I'll try not to wander around and live calmly in the village as much as I can. Good. I nodded in satisfaction. Maya would have managed to keep her mouth shut without my saying anything anyway, but I needed to show April that we were willing to invest to this extent. April, who had thus acquired a new face, groped at her own face, fumbling around. It'll be hard to adapt for a while, but hang in there. You don't want anyone to find out about you. I'm fine. However is the vice commander's mental and magical strength okay? We can't keep the transformation magic forever. This much is fine. I answered back lightly. My level had risen considerably, so this magic power had not been too much. Others seemed to have a lot to pay attention to when using magic, but I didn't care much because I just had to start it. April laughed awkwardly as if I were joking, and her face paled as soon as she realized it was true. It was as if she was looking at something that was not human. On the other hand, Meyer and August were nonchalant, as if they were used to it. Meyer said as if it were obvious. She's the vice commander of the Black Knights. She's not a person to judge with clueless common sense. Why are you so proud, commander? Because I was admiring my eye for choosing you. I shook my head at Meyer's threadless joke. April stared blankly at Meyer and me. I glanced at April and smiled. Why? Didn't you know that the commander and vice commander of the Black Knights would be joking around? I'm not joking. Honestly, yes. I think it's a much more finite atmosphere than I thought. April nodded her head gently. Still looking puzzled, I approached her with a small smile. There are differences from other expeditions, and there are similarities you'll have to get used to it. Her expedition would now be here, the Black Knights. April Pius is dead. You are now Anasta. You will become Anasta. I put my hand on April's shoulder, now Anasta. Thus, Fabian lost his left arm, and the Black Knights gained a new talent. Chapter, 126 But how foolish! To kill someone who was the main healer like that. We have to think about persuading to bring her back later. Meyer clicked his tongue. After sending April and August out, he and I were alone, so he seemed quite loose. I sat facing Meyer and sipped the tea. It was tea made by Meyer. Maybe it's because Meyer made tea from the beginning, but somehow, Meyer's serving tea naturally stuck between us. So I continued to enjoy the luxury of serving as a tea attendant for the Black Knight. As I gazed at the calm surface of the teacup, I thought of Fabian. Was he triumphant because he thought he fucked us over, or was he filled with self-pity? I don't think he even had time to think about it. Because with Jean joining the Black Knights, he must have been worried that April might do so again. Those who are backed into a corner make foolish choices. Although the judgment in the midst of life and death in the dungeon was made accurately, this political thing or the kind of use of people seemed to be a poison. A side of things came together that I hadn't noticed in the first round. Decca and April helped me a lot in using people in addition, I also sneakily poked at the information I knew, and I could always have the upper hand in human relations, so I wouldn't have been cornered. Perhaps, I thought, even if Fabian had defeated the Demon King and become Emperor, 
as the game's ending suggested, the empire would not have been sustained for very long. Or I may have ruined the environment in which Fabian grew emotionally. Originally, he would have grown up well, struggling in a sedentary manner, looking around, and keeping his head down. The information I gave him may have been his overnutrition. But Fabian was not a growing child, and he was already an adult when he met me. There is a saying that if you want to know human nature, you have to seize power. I didn't take the chance away from him, I gave him the chance and he turned out like that, which shows the hidden nature of Fabian. Meyer, who had been pondering over my story, muttered quietly. Sometimes, I think like this. What do you think? That it is your existence that separates me from Fabian. No way. I'm serious. If you hadn't chosen me that's the kind of thinking that could have happened to me. I would have fallen into obsession and only thought about defeating the demon king. What kind of absurd feeling has he fallen into? It was because he was pretty sentimental. He always thought of something weird like this once in a while. I grumbled. You still think about defeating the demon king? I thought Meyer would laugh at my complaints, saying yes. But Meyer stared at me without saying a word. He seemed to have something to say, but he seemed unable to say it. What the hell? He usually didn't say anything when I was cockier than this, but now was I going against his feelings again? In any case, I have no idea. I can't believe I have a man who is both sensitive and difficult as my boss. If I revealed this to someone who didn't know Meyer, I bet they would tell me to quit that job immediately. I opened my mouth involuntarily. Anyway, don't think about weird things. The commander kept Tragula alive even though you knew he would betray you, and Fabian thought April would betray him, so he killed her. It's completely different. Fabian dug his own grave don't worry too much about his collapse. I said this and happily poured the remaining tea water into the teacup. It was a habit that spilled out unintentionally, closer to drinking alcohol than drinking tea. When I said so, Meyer replied with a sigh. I feel at ease because you say so. His face still looked uncomfortable. However, it was a little too much to ask about the cause of the inconvenience. Well since he says he's feeling at ease. The reason I affirmed about Fabian's fall was to ease Meyer's worries about Fabian, but it was also because it was a roughly drawn future. Now that April is gone, the things that Fabian can't take care of will come to the surface one by one. Besides, Decca is subtly sharp no matter how well Fabian made excuses about April this time, he would have already noticed something suspicious. Speaking of which, Fabian, do you know where the expedition that bumped into you is? Why all of a sudden? It's not bad to know. If they say something later on. That's not going to happen. Don't worry, Decca. And Aegis, two in the character settings that I remember, even though he usually looks bold he was practically not a very strong-minded person. Will Fabian be able to take care of Aegis well without April? No, did he take care of him from the beginning? Fabian, I have something to say. It's important. What is it, Aegis? I've been thinking about it, but I, I want to quit the expedition. I realize that I'm still inexperienced as a tanker in the end, Jean was injured because I was pierced. Jean could have died in the near future. Wait, Aegis. It was an unavoidable situation. You did your best. I did my best, but she got injured. All the attackers did their best, but I it's my fault. Jean is a child. Jean was the one I should have protected. Aegis, Jean is also a member of the expedition. When you followed us, you promised many times that you wouldn't treat us like children. I'm sorry, Fabian. I can't be that cold like you. I'm only big I don't think I'm a vessel worthy of being a member of the expedition. Aegis, Aegis. However it is only my guess that there may be discord with Decca and Aegis. Maybe Fabian can overcome this crisis better than I thought. If he set his mind properly, he would have been able to rebound by overcoming April and Jean's escape. But looking at his twisted mind at the time he tried to kill April, his downfall was a matter of timing a procedure that was eventually decided. How far the Fabian expedition crashed would be seen when the results were reported next year. So far I've also had to concentrate on upgrading the Black Knights. 
I'm already too attached to the Black Knights. The same was true for this large, unpredictable beast-like commander of mine. I really didn't want to go through the death of loved ones twice. Besides, this is the second round. It was the last chance. It would have been easier to just let them roll them hard and never let them die. It was better for my mental health, too. I laughed quietly, thinking of the list of dungeons to go forward. Now that we were done at the Imperial Palace, it was time to leave the capital. For April, we decided to leave the capital as soon as possible. Everyone was wondering about the existence of the healer who suddenly appeared, but everyone accepted that she was a talent who went to the cathedral with August and was picked up. April no, Anasta's origin may be questionable, but Priest August's assurance of identity has helped greatly. Thank you very much. Do you think it's all thanks to me? Of course, right? In response to my thanks, August crumpled his face and glanced at me with a strange gaze. Then, soon after, he shook his head as if his mouth hurt. Even if I compliment him, he's still like that. I shrugged and went to my business. I was already out of my mind because there were quite a lot of things to take care of as a vice commander. When everyone left the capital, Tragula remained in the Imperial Palace. It was to talk to Countess Nearus. Will Countess Nearus accept the exchange of the Fulgur Pumpkin for the Golden Falcon? I hope you get the results you want. I agree with you. Tragula smiled awkwardly. The fingertips of touching the Golden Falcon on his shoulder looked somewhat uneasy. His face also looked gloomy and full of skepticism. Whether he was afraid of talking to Countess Nearus or unsure of his choice I thought it could be both. As soon as I reached out to him with a small tap on his shoulder, Meyer, who was far away, called me. June. Come here for a second. Then good luck. The timing was everything. At Meyer's urging, I parted ways with Dragula by comforting his hand and saying a brief goodbye. I rushed to Meyer's side, thinking it was urgent. Why did you call me? Hold on, hold this for me. And yet, what he handed me was his horse's reins. Meyer's horse was great, so it was quiet even if no one dared to hold the reins, and most importantly, I had no reason to hold these. I narrowed my eyes at Meyer. You called me on purpose. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you hate it when I talk to Tragula? I do. He pretended it wasn't so, but less than thirty seconds later, his true feelings came out. Chapter, 127 Besides, the look on his face as he stared at me was shameless. If he knew how handsome he was and was trying to get me to go along with it, he had miscalculated. I revealed my ridiculous innermost thoughts without addition or subtraction. It's just a goodbye. You never asked me if I was okay, but you're saying goodbye to him. No, when did I don't tell me you're talking about when I was attacking dungeons while leveling up the special forces for a while? Meyer snorted as if he didn't even remember like he was some thief. I clucked my tongue low at his shameless attitude. Why has the commander sulked so much? First of all, the first thing to do was to let go of the hard feelings. I approached Meyer, who was pouting and poked him in the arm, which seemed thicker than my thigh. Are you angry because I didn't ask you how you were? I don't get angry at you. I think you're angry. Meyer furrowed his eyebrows and shook his head. Really? However, as I drove Meyer to be angry again and again, his momentum, which he had been affirming at first, began to subside and shrink. It's an illusion if I seemed angry. I didn't get angry at you. I was. Hmm. Okay. I understand. So that's it. It's not like that. It's really not. When I didn't accept it easily, Meyer grumbled and stuck. On the other hand, he seemed to have no idea how he came to be in a position to explain himself. At first, I'm sure he thought he had the upper hand over something I didn't ask about. I laughed at Meyer, who was puzzled by the sudden change in the game but desperately making excuses. While enjoying this monumental moment of Meyer listening to my mood, I belatedly realized that the expression of the Black Knights looking at us was not good. On second thought, we did not set an example as commander and vice commander. I smiled awkwardly and pushed Meyer out. Okay, stop now. Do you really know? If you feel like I'm angry, 
then. I understand. Feeling a little embarrassed, I tried to shut him up in a hurry. However, he was not a Meyer Knox who cares about others' eyes. He persisted with me to hear a definite answer that he had never been angry, regardless of how others saw it or not. After struggling for a long time to get rid of such a mire, I could barely get on my horse. Sigh, I raised the situation like this in the first place, so there is no one to blame why did I do that even though I knew Meyer's personality. Why did I do that? Honestly, it was good to see Meyer shrink while looking at me. I had nothing more to explain myself as I set fire purely for my pleasure. While contemplating my wrongdoing alone, Axion sneaked up on me and fueled the fire. Now the performance report is over, right? Am I being abandoned as a fake lover? What nonsense are you talking about? Oh ho, you can be honest with me. I was for camouflage after all, wasn't I? A smoke screen between you and the commander I understand everything. No, that's not it. Hyuk, I'm just being used. He pretended to cry as if he were hurt, but he seemed to tease me everywhere. I looked sarcastically at Axion, whose face was buried in his sleeves. You're having so much fun right now, right? Did you get caught? What was caught? There was nothing to hide from the beginning. The edge of his mouth twitched up, or maybe he was lying somehow. Axion, who raised his head, had a cheeky smile. He was determined to go to the dungeon he was supposed to go to in exchange for his lover's act in the dungeon in the minor forest. Even by making fun of me like this, it was clear that he was trying to make ends meet. Axion continued to grunt like a mosquito squealing next to me. It was a very brave talent to be able to act like this while driving a horse. Unable to endure, I took extreme measures. If you tease me like this, I'll kiss you. Pardon? What? I'm going to kiss you. Don't think I can't do it. I really stick to my word. Are you crazy? Are you going to kill me? Axion, who had been hovering around me a moment ago, turned a dead color and moved away. Now I feel like I have a little personal space. Axion glanced quickly in Meyer's direction. I didn't even bring it up to Meyer, but Axion seemed convinced that Meyer would kill him if I kissed him. Fortunately for Axion, Meyer seemed to have not heard the conversation on this side because he was talking to August. I easily pulled the reins of the horse and scolded Axion. So stop it. You two are really dating, right? Otherwise, how can you use such shameful threats at will? Axion trembled. To what extent? I shrugged. I know. I'm not really dating the commander, but I'm surprised that this could be a threat. Lie. Is a surprised person so natural? There's been a lot of cases so far. I'm just following inductive reasoning. Ah. Uh. Axion's mouth, which would only float even if he fell into water, was closed. I heard a small toast of victory. But it was definitely weird. I was so accustomed to Meyer's strange and twisted obsessive checks and balances that for a while it didn't seem like a big deal, but it wasn't a normal and positive relationship by any means. It's obvious that Meyer doesn't see me romantically, since he gave me a definite answer, but why does he act so sensitive to the men around me? Even if that's the case with Tragula and Fabian, it's not like he has to be wary of Axion, Nova, or even August once in a while. We have to conquer dungeons. I couldn't figure out what the hell the process was. Just then, my eyes met Myers, who was glancing in my direction. As soon as he saw me next to Axion, Myers' forehead crumpled. At this point, it's basically a spinal reflex. Meyer turned his head abruptly to the side as if he didn't, but his first reaction was so quick and clear that he seemed incapable of hiding it. Anyway before, Meyer had been insecure about my true intentions, and I thought that would be the case, but didn't I also stamp my relationship with Fabian, who he cared about the most, as a catastrophe? If I have a chance later, I'll have to talk again about his being too sensitive around me. As soon as possible. Even though I turned my head, I clicked my tongue quietly as I saw Meyer staring at me continuously. But I had something to do before that. As soon as we arrived at Nocantoria Castle, I immediately began organizing the Black Knights from generation to generation. It was something I had been waiting for since I took office as vice commander. 
It was inevitably postponed due to the level up of the special unit and preparation for the performance report, but there could be no more delay as I thought there might be a spy for Countess Nearest in the Black Knights. I'm glad Tragula told me about this now I could have been in danger if he hadn't. It wasn't that I was particularly worried that inside information would leak out. It didn't matter that only a trivial amount of word of mouth would get passed around, since only Meyer and I knew what was really important, and the next most important information was shared only by the elite. However, it was difficult for a spy to approach the special unit with malice. The special unit would stay in the dungeon for most of the time anyway but still had to stop by Nocantoria periodically. It's a problem if they approach them in the meantime and use them for no reason. They'll get hurt. According to the results of this debriefing, it became apparent that the special forces had not yet been trained much in human-to-human -human malice. However, I have no intention of training them up. The Demon King will be defeated in a few years anyway, so there will be peace. Perhaps it was because I was worn out after rolling around, but I hoped that the special forces would remain as pure as possible. Anyway, now was the right time to deal with the spy. Tragula was supposed to have said goodbye to Countess Nearest now, so I had to make my move before Countess Nearest gave any orders to the spy after that. It also deceived even the rotten tangerine. I checked the list that Tragula had called as suspicious. Of course, I can't believe everything Tragula said, but there was no reason not to. All the people he nominated were similar to each other. In short, they were inconspicuous. Of course, some of them had made achievements within the Black Knights as well. However, I did not have any unfinished business that would make me doubt the authenticity of Tragula. In the middle of organizing the members of the Order in such a way, a backlash finally occurred. Why in the world do you want me to leave the Black Knights? The one who raised their voice was an agility-centered melee dealer who used twin swords from the Yellow Lightning Unit. I had seen her face a few times, as I had gone with her to the results briefing. I understand that the Black Knights need to be reorganized. Those who lack performance are not needed for the Black Knights. I agree with everyone. But it's not me. She raised her voice as if it were very unfair. I worked really hard for the Black Knights. Is this the price of constantly closing the dungeons on the side with the unit captain as a member of the Yellow Lightning Unit? Chapter 128 The eyes staring at me were full of spite and resentment. It seemed really unfair. Perhaps because she was a spy, her acting skills were excellent. It happens when our unit captain isn't here as the vice commander trying to keep our captain in check. She doesn't seem to know that Tragula had appointed her. Or maybe she does, and she's trying to buy herself some time by framing it this way. Are you trying to drop the captain or weaken the force of the unit to put your beloved special troops into the elite? Ichem. This is how you lead public opinion. As if it were not meaningless, one or two people incited by her words began to talk in secret. She's not just a member of the regular corps, she's a member of the second army under the elite corps it's certainly not right to kick her out without permission from the corps captain. The shield keeper of the yellow lightning troop, whose heart was shaken by the resentful theatrics of the twin swordsmen, bowed his head before me and pleaded. Vice Commander Please hold off at least until the unit captain arrives. We are like a family that has been closing dungeons together for years. It's terrible to go without saying goodbye like this. It was a skit that didn't even make me laugh. That shield would have no idea that the person he was advocating for was a traitor. Perhaps thinking she had me in a corner, the twin swordsman became very snide and raised her voice with enthusiasm. If the vice commander acts for personal gain without clear standards and discernment like this, the honor the Black Knights have built up so far will fall to the ground. Ah, how did the Black Knights of the Heavens become like this, well? I stared at the swordsman. I tried to see how far she could say, but there was no end. I tried to quietly kick her out without making a fuss, but she scratched my temper like this. Well I think you know the reason why you're being pushed out. The twin swordsman cringed at my meaningful words. I remembered what Tragula said when he handed over the list. Tragula had a heartbroken face when he said that. He had thought he had hand-picked the troops, but it was all in the hands of Countess Nearest, so it was no surprise. She should have seen the face of Tragula. Then. If she had done so, 
she wouldn't have been able to say this so brazenly. No, maybe she would have been more brazen. Usually, these people jump more at the fact that others have a small suspicion of themselves rather than how shameless they have been. I approached the twin swordsman. She was so confident earlier, but when I got closer, she hesitated and stepped back. I looked coldly at her and asked. I'm working with very clear standards. To become a black knight, you have to be good enough to wear this uniform above all, you must serve the black knight as your master. Now, let's hear it here. Who is your master? Of course. She opened her mouth proudly, but she couldn't finish talking. Her eyes shook to sleep, not knowing how far I was grasping. Hmm, if you're going to play, you might as well do it a little more boldly. I snickered and shook my chin as I walked past her. Get rid of her. Wait, wait. I can't go out like this. Nova caught her as soon as my words fell. The twin swordsman resisted, but could not shake Nova, whose stats were higher, though they were similar in level. But that didn't mean that Nova was in trouble. I approached her as she struggled and whispered to her, tapping her lightly on the cheek. I think it would be better to leave if I go and get the commander, you'll miss your chance to walk on both feet. The twin swordsman's eyes widened. She shuddered in fear of what she would become. Seeing her quiet in an instant, Nova looked at me with respect. I shrugged and beckoned as if to clean up, and unlike before, the twin swordsman was quietly arrested by Nova and kicked out of Nocantoria Castle. Everyone who was watching the scene whispered. What, was she a traitor? I didn't know there was an idiot who would betray the Black Knight. There's no way there is only one of those things. Correct. As I reorganized the Black Knights, I searched for Countess Nerys's knuckles and processed them one by one. There was also a new recruit who came in with Nova, so Nova, who was helping me with my work, was also troubled midway. After such a coercive battalion organization of the Black Knights, I was given the nickname Tyrant. It was a nickname I never thought I would get, so when I heard it for the first time, I spit out all the liquor I had drunk. Unfortunately, it cost Meyer his pants. Well it's still better than a weak-looking nickname. Even if I'm not actually strong, it's better to look strong than weak. I took the new nickname positively. The work was roughly completed, and I praised Nova for his hard work for this incident at the afterparty of the special unit. Great job, Nova. No, it's all necessary. I'm proud that I'm doing my part because I heard that it helped the vice commander. His big smile was like a good Labrador retriever. Egu, how cute. I passed the largest and fattiest part of the meat to Nova. Then Sevi and Jean caught sight of it. That's right. I have to cut it for them too. As I was distributing the meat in this way, one after the other, in the order of the children, I became strangely dressed to distribute the food. Now that this has happened, it's not a bad idea to allocate some for everyone and start the afterparty. I cut the meat as hard as I could. Anasta, too. April, now Anasta, who was handed over a plate, was confused because she didn't expect me to cut the meat for her as well. Anasta and Jean were also included in the special unit. Naturally, I let Jean know that Anasta was April. Since the trio of the special unit were not mean children, they easily accepted Anasta and Jean. Thanks to this, Jean had adapted to the Black Knights in a much brighter way than she had in the Fabian expedition. This made for a composition that could be considered a single weight unit. One healer, one long range offensive mage, one defensive mage, one shield, and one dual purpose short range attacker. And me, a support wizard. One seat was vacant, it was August's position. I think it's time to attack without August. I had no choice but to bring it up because Meyer would act like a slug bathed in salt. So a chunk of meat went up on everyone's plate. I applauded in a cheerful voice. Well, let's eat first. The reason why you want us to eat for now is that you have something to do after we eat, or you have something to say is it something like that? Sevi asked, rolling his eyes as if he were anxious. I clicked my tongue. That's why you're quick-witted. After eating, I'll get indigestion once or twice. Sevi shouted. At first, the child was innocent, but he grew up a lot. I shrugged and responded as if it were natural. 
but it's always indigestible even if you talk before you eat. Do we have to talk about it today? Sevi shook his head earnestly. He knew the answer clearly but pretended not to know like he was trying to escape reality. I have to tell you in advance so that you can spend your free time more frugally. I've taken all of you into consideration. Ah. Uh. In response to my shameless answer, Sevi pulled his hair out. Nova and Julieta also didn't look good. After all, if you've also eaten meat and know what it tastes like, it seems to paint a white picture of a hellish time after a few days of rest. Anasta and Jean, who didn't understand what was going on, only blinked. They'll find out soon enough, anyway. I urged them with a big smile. The meat is going to get cold. We'll talk about it after we eat. Yes. Hearing my predictable answer, the special unit despaired. But there was no point in rebelling. Having quickly adapted to reality, they decided to enjoy some rest and became quite lazy. Even Jean and Anasta got twisted. Rober, who couldn't stand to see how lazy they were, was so worried that she asked. The trio of the special unit has not been seen on the training grounds recently. Isn't that terrible, no matter how long it's only been a few days since the performance report? A little freedom has to be enjoyed. If you repress them too much at a sensitive time, they'll go sideways. Aha! You've got a schedule. That's a different situation. Rober giggled. Somehow, the trio's expressions looked like death, and she added that it was worth it. And Tragula came back. Oh, really? Yes, I saw him on my way here. At Rober's words, I immediately headed to Meyer's office, where Tragula was presumed to have headed. Thanks to that, fortunately, I was able to meet Tragula without being late. I cut off my relationship with Countess Nerus. Tragula's shoulders were empty. The Golden Falcon, which had always been positioned as his symbol, had disappeared. Chapter 129 I've been stigmatized as a traitor who doesn't even know grace, but I'll have to endure that. A bitter smile caught Tragula's mouth. Looking at his tired complexion, it seemed that he had been in and out of a battle with Countess Nerus. Of course, Countess Nerus would not have wanted to let Tragula go smoothly. But yes, I really couldn't believe she would turn down Fulger's pumpkin in favor of the Golden Falcon. Tragula predicted that she would not give up ownership of the Golden Falcon even before talking to Countess Nerus. What's the reason? Curious, I asked slightly. Why didn't she give up the Golden Falcon? However, the answer did not come out immediately. Tragula was worried for a long time and kept his mouth shut. How long did he realize he couldn't hide it? He spoke carefully as if he were exposing his own shame. She has the veins of the heavenly palace other than me. Is it your blood? It didn't seem like something that he would be afraid to reveal. But since it was a family matter, I thought there might be some complications that he was hiding that he wasn't letting me know about. I don't have to know that much, and it was enough to know for sure why Countess Nerus didn't gently pass the Golden Falcon. I changed my words in a light tone. Will that other blood of the Heavenly Palace interfere with the Black Knights? Oh, I'm not asking you to take care of them or anything. It would be easier to deal with them if I knew. There will be no disturbance. Because they're still a kid. Of course, in about four or five years, they will be at the starting point to attack dungeons, but... Then it's okay. One less thing to worry about. I let out a small sigh of relief. It was not long before the Demon Lord's dungeon would open anyway. If my calculations were correct, it would have been after next year's results report at the earliest, and after the results report the year after that at the latest. While Tragula and I were talking like this, the room, or rather the castle owner, Meyer, didn't say a word and just kept his seat in silence. There were three in the space, but it felt very strange to be the only two talking. However, neither Meyer nor Tragula cared much about whether they spoke to each other or not. I feel like I'm the only sensitive person caught in the middle. Feeling so uncomfortable, I also told Tragula in advance about finding a traitor in the Yellow Lightning Unit. Tragula quietly listened to my story. Even if it was a fact that he already knew, he would have felt a lot of betrayal when he faced it, but he looked relieved. The story ended, and Tragula probed as if he remembered now. I'll give this back to you. 
Folger's pumpkin you can just keep this. Because I handed over ownership to you. If you returned the golden falcon to Countess Neris and there was nothing left in my hand, wouldn't it be in vain? But Tragula shook his head. Didn't you say you'd save me a good bow? I'll take the item to replace the golden falcon. He then unavoidably gave me back the Fulger's pumpkin. The warmth of the pumpkin against my hand warmed me slightly. I glanced into Meyer's eyes. Where can I get a good bow? Of course, I was thinking of robbing Meyer's stuff. If I offer to give it here, Tragula and the old misunderstanding. It's not a misunderstanding. It would be nice to relieve the resentment. Meyer, the party, gave a weak response. Tragula said as much, but he didn't seem too bothered about the missing bow to replace the golden falcon. Tragula continued to speak, looking refreshed. Thanks to the vice commander, I have laid down the burden of my heart from now on, please call me Tragula Cornu, not Tragula Neris. Tragula, who regained the name of the heavenly palace, smiled broadly. His smile was as bright as he seemed to shake off the depression caused by the pressure that had covered him so far and his surrounding senses. After finishing the story roughly, I sent Tragula back to rest. As Tragula left the office, I sighed as soon as the door closed. If I had known this would be the case, I would have just met in my office. What? Why? The commander didn't say anything. I feel like I'm disturbing you. No. What do you mean, disturbing? I didn't say anything because yes. I was listening to you. His mouth, which had been tightly closed like a shell earlier, opened easily. I chuckled and asked him back. It's not surveillance. What do you mean surveillance? Meyer jumped up. I wondered if he was frustrated, or if he was stung by the ineffable I set a trap as I probed Meyer. If you're curious about what I talked to Tragula, I can organize conversation records and hand them over. No, I wasn't surveilling you, I was listening. Anyway, if you ever meet someone in the future, whether it be him or anybody else, I'll see you in my office. Are you sure you're not surveilling me? I opened my eyes suspiciously. Meyer avoided my gaze and coughed in vain. Well, there was no reason for me to refuse him when he was offering me his office. Because no matter how plausible my office was, it was not as good as Meyer's office. I sat down on the couch, which was so soft I almost sunk to the floor. Meyer was willing to put up with my careless attitude. Tragula and I can't meet alone it seemed that the weight of grace selectively increased and then decreased. Anyway it's clear that Countess Neris has a dream. Adopting Tragula might be the case. But even as a spy he's also not the only one. The desire to do so was too insistent and vexatious to be a mere restoration of the family. Her track record seemed meaningless unless it was the Grand Dake. I could even feel the obsession. She must have a lot of money and a lot of guts, because she owned artifacts and even kept them on the negotiating table without hesitation. It was understandable that such a person would have great ambition, but it didn't make sense that she would dare to insist on becoming a Grand Duke. It was because the Grand Duke did not represent unconditional power, and if necessary, it was close to an honorary position. I tried to guess what Countess Neris was thinking, but I couldn't understand anything from one to ten. Isn't it cleaner to seek marriage than to adopt Tragula? Or become his fiancée? I said, remembering the noblemen who had attached themselves to me and who had targeted the elite of the Black Knights. They were annoying, but their methods were still at an understandable level. She decided to get married and sponsor him, but then it would be difficult to make a promise after becoming a hero. Attributing a last name to is certainly effective. I don't know if it's common sense, though. Meyer clicked his tongue. Meyer's words are not wrong, but it sounded very awkward for him to talk about common sense. And marriage or engagement is only possible with one person, but not adoption. Those words. There are quite a few people she has adopted. Do you know what her nickname is in the social world? Big Mother. Adoptions of budding expedition members are common in social circles, but she's got quite a few of them. She's right up there in expeditionary patronage. I opened my mouth wide. I didn't know it would be that bad. Well is it enough to take care of all those people? The amount of money it would take to properly train one member of the expedition should be extraordinary. 
Countess Neris is quite capital rich. It would have been quite daunting if Meyer admitted it. I quietly clicked my tongue. Come to think of it, the reason that Meyer, who entered the second round, did not throw Tragula out at once was to use him to close the dungeon. But also seemed to be because the backlash of Countess Neris, who had failed after putting in a promising player, was annoying. Because she was more persistent and annoying than expected. You accepted Tragula as part of the expedition at first, knowing that Countess Neris existed. You don't seem to like the interference of external forces in the expedition. Well, I saw his skills earlier then. Although Countess Neris sponsored several expedition members, I thought it was just a diversified investment. But he didn't think it was enough to make him switch to expeditionary forces. Meyer's lips twisted as he translated in a whisper. It was natural for him to be angry at being taken by surprise. Well I'm sure she'll react somehow because she drank a lot of water from this incident. It's not too late to figure out her intentions then. Wouldn't she be a threat? No one is a threat, as long as the Black Knights are the strongest expedition. And since I have you, the Black Knights will continue to be the strongest expedition. Meyer spoke firmly without any doubt. Thank you for trusting me completely. Shy, I smiled and scratched my neck. Meyer said, pointing his chin at Fulger's pumpkin, which I had placed on the table. Anyway, you can have Fulger's pumpkin. I have a lot of artifacts right now. If there's a lot, there won't be much difference even if there's one more. What kind of logic is this? While I couldn't find anything to refute, Meyer reached out and squeezed the pumpkin back into my hand. Then he didn't let go of my hand until I grabbed the pumpkin. I couldn't even move as I was captivated by the hand that was big enough to hold mine. In the end, I had to take Fulger's pumpkin. That's how I had one more thing to carry. I sighed deeply. Meyer looked at me and opened his mouth softly. By the way, June. Chapter, 130. Yes. Even after speaking out, Meyer hesitated and opened his lips without saying anything. I think there's something he wants to say. However, after a long time of consideration, Meyer shook his head heavily. Never mind. Later I'll talk to you later. Well please let me know whenever you feel comfortable. I shrugged my shoulders. I had bigger worries about how to safely walk around with Fulger's pumpkin than the words Meyer swallowed. I pretended earlier that I didn't need it, but I wanted to quickly use the new artifact that was given to me anyway because the human mind is a simple thing. Just in time, there was a dungeon. I fiddled with the slick pumpkin in my hand and squeezed my brain. I guess I'll just have to hang it on a string and wear it around my waist for now. If I leave it to a blacksmith, it will cost quite a bit. While I was so preoccupied, I belatedly realized that I had occupied my place for an useless long time. Meyer would want to rest too. I hurriedly stood up and added. Then, I've roughly changed the water inside the Black Knights, and Tragula has returned. I'll take the kids around the dungeon after a few days. Already? What do you mean already? If you had the chance, you would go into the dungeon before me. I cut him off with a light chuckle, which was unlike Myanox, who had spent his life closing dungeons. Perhaps too embarrassed to speak, Meyer fell silent. At the same time, he still seemed to have something to say. It was the same earlier they say that thirsty people dig wells, and I, who couldn't stand Meyer's behavior, asked openly. Anything you want to say? Did I make a mistake or? No, that's not it. I just. Meyer blurted his words. As he tilted his head, his handsome nose tilted slightly. How serious the face was, even if I had to choose one out of two boxes each containing legendary artifacts and miscellaneous items, I wouldn't be more serious. Meyer opened his lips slowly. His moderately sensuous lips opened and a deep sigh came out. It was a heavy breath as if embracing all the agony of the world. He sighed quietly. I want to tell you something, but it hasn't been organized in my head yet. What is it? You can just say it. I'll understand it on my own. Frustrated, I urged Meyer. But he just shook his head, perhaps not satisfied. No, go and be careful. Never get hurt. I won't get hurt. Anasta has joined us this time, 
and there are three priests in the unit. If anything, Julietta was incapable of healing others, but this was still a unit with adult-grade healers. The speed of healing might be faster than the speed of injury. Now that there is an Asta, it seems that August does not have to follow, but... Just in time, I thought I would tell the story on the way the story came out, but Meyer's condition was not very good now. I feel like his head is complicated it was a bit too much to be vice commander and add more worries to such a commander. I've gotten used to August, and there's no reason to refuse August. If we leave him alone, he won't be able to level up by attacking other dungeons anyway, but he'll just be stuck in the monastery and do prayer and muscle exercises. I decided not to say anything about August's treatment. Then I'll come and say hello before I go. Yeah. Meyer nodded. His eyes seemed to be full of regret, but he didn't say anything until the end, when I left the office. He knew this would happen eventually. Meyer's teeth clenched as he came to the reality that even though he had guessed everything, he could not avoid it. He had been against the idea of letting Tragula sit in the Black Knights while even holding the artifact from the beginning. The artifact was something Meyer had been thinking of giving to June since the beginning of the second round she joined the Black Order. He didn't like everything about it, but he couldn't help it because June wanted it. Going against June's moods was a taboo that Meyer had to avoid as a top priority. Ever since he found out that she liked obedient people and hated throwing up on her work, Meyer held his breath and watched June. Since he didn't have any information about that function in question, he tried to match the other conditions to the best of his ability, just in case. But that was the limit. Tragula was wagging his tail and sticking to June as if he were her loyal dog. It was ironic to see him smiling and making eye contact with June. He didn't like the way the special forces showed June dog-like appearances, but he had to admit that it was a bit much. They were still just cute puppies. Meyer burned with hostility, directing his owner's affection toward Tragula as if he were a pet dog. That said, it was difficult to forcefully peel away Tragula. It wouldn't do to feel June's weirdness. She was really slow about how people around her saw her, but she was quick to read the room when it came to people's tricks. It was a setback if June was disappointed in himself while trying to excessively check Dragula by going out of the frying pan and falling on the fire. That wasn't all. If she knew how he really felt, she would try to persuade him with forceful arguments about how beneficial Dragula was. He didn't want to hear her defending or praising another man. I have to do something what should I do? Fortunately, June was going to enter the dungeon soon. Whenever he sent June to the dungeon, his mouth would dry up and his heart would tighten, but this time, he had to be pleased. That's right. While June was away, he should set up Tragula's yellow lightning unit and send him to the dungeon too. He was sure he was hungry for a dungeon of the right level of difficulty and to level up, so he would be happy to accept. June went into the dungeon and came out after a while, so it wouldn't be strange for Tragula to not be there when she comes out. If he adjusted the schedule alternately. He was thinking about this when suddenly he sighed and covered his face with his palms. He never thought he would behave so poorly. The old him could never have imagined this. There was only one thorn in his mouth, but it was better to turn Tragula away without thinking. His cowardly behavior, infested with jealousy, was even disastrous when viewed objectively. Meyer pressed his nose bridge between the frowns with his thumb. But June was the first sweetness Meyer had tasted in his life. How chilling it was to feel her fingertips touching his scalp as it slipped between his hair without hesitation. It was the first gentle human warmth he'd felt since his nanny died. Her crimson eyes filled with an unshakable trust in him, and every time they met in unison, Meyer's lips would dry up. Even Meyer couldn't remember the last time he believed himself that way. Is that all? Every time she showed a hint of concern, a chill of glee rose from the pit of Meyer's stomach. How could anyone in this world worry about him, who had been abandoned and ostracized by his parents since birth? Come to think of it, June was always like that. She approached as if it were nothing, and moved away as if it were nothing. When he stood in front of her, he felt as if he was no longer the residue of the demon king, the cursed Meyer, but just an ordinary person. Ordinary. It was a word he hadn't been given to begin with, a word he had thought had no place in his life at all. Until now, Meyer didn't care what happened to his life as long as he could defeat the Demon King. 
even if he had to die together with the demon king, he would have been satisfied with that and would have gladly burned it into his soul. But now, he could envision a life one by one after defeating the demon king. Jun and himself in a world that was free and was no longer bound by dungeons, demons, or death. Of course, he knew that she might not like him. But the possibility that she might. Just one possibility was enough to make Meyer's heart race. Before he had met Jun, he could not have imagined all of this. Nor that he would change like this. Meyer smirked. His past self may not be happy that he had changed like this, but his present self was willing to endure all of this. The gaze she gave him, her touch, was very sweet. But the more he touched her and the more he was with her, the more thirsty he became. This was not enough. He didn't know, but he had already put his tongue on the sweet water of kindness that June gave generously. So he couldn't help but crave it. It was the only possibility of happiness Meyer could catch. For her, he would give up all his appearances, his honor, his convictions, and become earnest, cowardly, and childish over and over again. It was worth it. It was enough to endure. The look in Meyer's eyes that promised such a future was a combination of excitement and gloom. Chapter, 131 Oh, I met you just in time, Axiom. What's up, June? I want to ask you about Jean's growth. The god of fostering talent, June Carantia, wants my advice. Axion made a fuss. While talking like that, eyes fell flat. It was an attitude that was not like Axion, who was usually cold and did not treat people like humans. Of course, I've got the general framework, but I'm not a battle wizard, so I don't really know the details. Please help me. You don't really know. Axion glanced skillfully and cheekily over his glasses. It was unbelievable that the flame mage, a magical lover, knew how to joke around. People passing by gulped at the sight of him. But June was calm. If you keep joking around, the dungeon you thought you'd follow me in favor could also be cancelled. You're so mean. You're like a tyrant. Axion shouted in frustration. They seemed to be close to each other by all accounts. After the two of them left the corridor squirming, all of the black knights there let out a breath at the same time, as if they had been set up. I knew those two were close, but they must be really close. Didn't she ask him to pretend to be in a relationship because they were close? Of course, everyone in the black knights knew that rumors that June and Axion were lovers in the capital was just camouflage. However, there is still a little bit of room, so I guess that's why she was making such a request. That's right. And it's not uncommon to get angry when you pretend to be dating. Phew, I don't know about the vice commander, but the squad leader Axion had to catch the vice commander. That's true. It's not easy for the flame mage to come across a decent partner unless it's the vice commander, right? Everyone shook their heads together. The new recruit, who was not aware of the attitudes of such seniors, asked curiously. Why do you think so? Commander Axion is clean and has good skills. The newcomer hadn't had any contact with Axiom since he joined the group and didn't know much about him, but all he had was the saga he had heard passed down. The most powerful flame mage. However, the attitude of the members of the Black Knights towards him was forever far from respectful. One of the already established members of the Order shook his head and immediately gave him a polite explanation. He's smart, but he's not interested in anything other than magic, so if you're not good at it, and he gets caught by someone who sees only his background and approaches him, they're totally done. Or he'll invest all his money in magic research and become poor, and the other party will run away. Besides, his personality is a bit eccentric. If you don't talk magically, he won't even deal with you. But, are there common magicians who can communicate with fire mages? Still, it's not like there's nobody at all, right? But wizards like that are stubborn about themselves again. It's safe to say that they're a second axiom. The newcomer sighed softly. Even just a few days ago, the memory of hearing about Axion's hair-grabbing fight with the other wizards in the banquet hall of the achievement debriefing due to a difference of opinion came out vaguely now. What about the vice commander? The reason why the vice commander and Axion are getting along so well is because Axion has accepted the vice commander as a rank above him there is no such wizard. Hmm. There isn't. 
the vice commander is a rare case for a wizard. All wizards are stubborn and shrewd, and there are no cases of them having a successful social life. Does the supportive wizard trait show up in such places? A member of the Black Knights, not a wizard, nodded his head. It was a reaction that was a world apart from when June first joined the Black Knights. But when they saw the bottom line that June had shown them for a year, they had to admit that she was capable. Another member shrugged, and quietly added, looking around. Maybe the vice commander is extra crazy friendly. She's doing well with the commander, too. Oh, and Priest August. Actually, it's not enough to have melted into the elite troops without too much trouble, and if it's just one more drink, the vice commander isn't normal either. The vice commander hadn't blurted out her entire life to be obsessed with magic like Axion or closing dungeons like the Black Knight. But wasn't she the workaholic that Axion and the Black Knight recognized and approved of? All three bet their lives on dungeons in different directions, and there could be no normal person among them. Well it would be worth seeing even if the tyrant and the flame mage were really dating. I'm not sure how His Excellency will react. Is she really not in any relationship with His Excellency? I don't know. His Excellency should have been an original disaster. While they were all gathered like that, talking about the gossip of the elite troops, a dark shadow approached them. It was the black armor and solid atmosphere of the Black Knight unit. Perhaps they had heard the noise they were making, but the grim look in the eyes of the Black Knight unit grew stronger. Oh no! The Black Knights, who belatedly realized that their mouths were too light, jumped up and down. People disappeared like a low tide in the crowded corridor just before, and the Black Knight unit remained alone. A Black Knight unit member quietly pondered what he heard alone. And belatedly realized how the situation was going and lamented. Oh my! She wasn't dating His Excellency. There was a lot to be dealt with before going into the dungeon. This was because once in, nothing could be done for several months. It will be a year before the next results meeting. If we leave once in the middle of the year, do a mid-term inspection, and then go back in, that will be the results meeting. Therefore, it was necessary to set the growth direction of other expedition members in advance. It's better to be prepared, and if I don't raise other expedition members appropriately other than the special unit, I won't feel safe. Nevertheless, thanks to a recent major internal reorganization of the Black Knights, only a substantial number of members remain. I visited Meyer with a bunch of member growth plans. As soon as I was familiar with the path to Meyer's office, someone called me. Vice Commander. I cocked my head at the old man's unfamiliar voice. There was a member of the Black Knight unit there. He was the second in rank to the commander in the Black Knight unit. Did something happen to the Black Knight unit member? We don't really have a close relationship, and... I've never even talked to him properly. As I was trying to calm down the awkwardness and bitterness, the Black Knight member approached me and said. I know you're busy, but can I talk to you for a moment? If you don't mind in the hallway. I smiled softly and lifted the report in my hand. It meant that I didn't have much time. It's better if he reconsiders the conversation. However, perhaps because of the suddenness of the situation, the Black Knight member did not retreat, even though he understood exactly what I intended to do. He took a step closer to me with a serious face. It's nothing else, but it's about His Excellency. That was probably it. There would be no reason for a unit directly under the Black Knight to come to me except if it was related to Meyer. Perhaps he had prejudice after hearing the strange rumor about me saying that I had seduced Meyer. He may think that I am overstepping my authority with Meyer's power behind me. If you look at it, it's not too wrong, but... Scared, I waited for what would follow while preparing my mind. Can you tell me what aspects of the Vice Commander's criteria His Excellency is lacking? I asked foolishly in response to a completely unexpected answer. I thought I heard it wrong, but the following words were the same as before. Please let me know and we, the Black Knight unit, will do our best to rectify the situation. And I think they are trying to get me in a good mood. I was puzzled, but all I did was slowly close and open my eyes, which made the Black Knight member grow impatient to see how I accepted it. Of course, there will be a lot of room for improvement with His Excellency. Perhaps because of his rough childhood, 
He may not know how to exchange affection but can you please look at him in a good way? I'd rather he had a conversation with me to stop being a tiger to him. What's going on all of a sudden? I didn't expect this to come out of nowhere. As well as the butler why is everyone so anxious that they can't put Meyer on me? The real party, Meyer, has no intention of doing that. However, to be so angry, the foundation of their heads was in a Confucian country, so it was not easy to raise my voice to those with vain heads. I replied quietly, smiling as I tried. The vice commander and I are not like that in the first place. So, just the possibility that you can be in such a relationship. The commander doesn't see me romantically. He said it himself. That is probably what His Excellency said as nonsense. It can't be. The Black Knight member shook his head firmly. It was a gesture of desperate denial of the reality that had already occurred. He would have laid down in a heartbeat if he had had room to cling to my legs and reconsider. Of course, as for me, I wasn't happy at all. Vice Commander, His Excellency may have many shortcomings, but there is more to him than that. Oh, yes. I know. Whether it's levels or mana, etc. Even excluding those points. So if the vice commander can give a little grace and see his good points. No matter how much I say so. It's not a matter of whether I see his good points or not. I looked secretly at the Black Knight member. I had no idea how to persuade him to leave, but now I had an excuse to escape. I asked him casually. But does the commander know that you came to me and said such things? No. He wouldn't understand. If he did know, he would yell at me for wasting time. Yelling aside, if his pride is hurt. Oh, my. I clicked my tongue low. Then I smiled awkwardly at the mire knocks that hung more heavily behind the Black Knight unit member that blocked my front like a mountain. Hello, Commander. Chapter, 132 the unpredictable appearance of Meyer left the Black Knight unit member flabbergasted and he disappeared in a hurry. If I didn't get there in time to report, Meyer would visit me quite often, and I wondered if he would, but I really didn't expect him to show up at such a good time. It was good to get rid of the troubling Black Knight unit member, but Meyer's momentum was unusual as if he had heard the conversation I had with him. The sound of the Black Knight unit member's voice lingered in my head like an echo. The fact that his own men had come to me like matchmakers, interfering with me every step of the way, how embarrassing. And even though he had already made a definite decision not to have anything to do with me at all. An awkward silence reverberated through us as I followed Meyer to his office. Once in the office, I gravely put down the report that I had in my hands. My arms felt lighter, but my heart was heavy with the fact that I had to talk to Meyer. Meyer had a serious face weighing down on his shoulders, and I couldn't tell what he was thinking. He didn't seem like he was going to open up easily. I guess I'll have to make the breakthrough first. Meyer's pride would be hurt, but the Black Knight unit had brought it up for Meyer in mind in their own way. I didn't want Meyer to complain. I did everything I could to defend the Black Knight unit. He didn't know what kind of relationship we had, and that's why he brought it up. I'm sure he didn't mean to disrespect the commander when he said you weren't enough. He just said it with good intentions, so don't take it too seriously. Okay. I tried to persuade him with a smile. While I was rambling alone, Meyer suddenly asked a random question. So, what do you think? About what the Black Knight member said. Then I coughed in vain. I couldn't believe he was biting back. What the Black Knight unit member said seemed to be very attentive. I shook my head as if it was ridiculous and answered. The fact that the commander lacks a lot of things. That's. Not that. The furious Meyer cut me off and shouted. Whether he was embarrassed or angry, his ears were red. Not that. I frowned and ruminated over what the Black Knight soldier said. There was nothing for Meyer to pay attention to I took what I thought would be close to the answer. About having thoughts of things working well with the commander. Meyer didn't give a simple affirmation, just his lips quivered slightly. It seemed to be the right answer. He can just openly say that you care about it. Did he have to use a speech that he wanted me to recognize? But I also thought I would know what point Meyer was concerned about in the remarks. 
I sighed softly. I know, I know. Meyer's face was brightened by my answer. It was a look of trust as if the vice commander was the only one who could do it. That's right. I'll have to relieve his frustration. I spoke in a confident and firm tone. I won't think anything strange, no matter how much the Black Knight unit does. You don't like me, right, Commander? You don't even see me as a woman. It's not like you have romantic feelings for me. Meyer's face was distorted. It was clear that I pointed it out correctly. I put added on once again. I don't expect that, so please relax. If the rumor is bothering you, then. That's not it. Meyer couldn't hold back a yelp. His face was contorted, but he seemed to be betrayed. How could he have been betrayed? I asked Meyer back, my eyes wide with incomprehensible emotion. It's not. No. What's not it? Meyer squeezed his mouth together again. He bit his lip. He abused his lips so much that his lips, which were appropriately easy to see, turned red. In the awkward silence, I had nothing to do so I fiddled with the end of a document and looked around. In the meantime, Meyer looked straight at me a long time later, as if he had finally made up his mind. I had a feeling that perhaps the reason why he kept repeating the end he had been trying to talk about all this time was related to this. If so, that would finally clear things up a bit. I waited for Meyer's next words, thinking of something to unburden my mind, but what he said confused me, despite my expectations. I see you as a woman. His eyes, staring at me, blushed like hot melted gold. It seemed unfair, frustrating, and he looked as if I had made a very big mistake to him. A corner of my heart began to beat fearfully as I faced those eyes, which were uncertain whether they were hot or watery. Meyer said and asked as if chewing. Is there a problem? Is there a problem? There is. It's overflowing. I looked at Meyer stunned. He said he had no feelings for me. He jumped up and down with a serious look just in case I misunderstood. Is he messing with me? Or is he saying something that doesn't even work because he's nervous? Yeah. There's a possibility. Hasn't he always been wary of Fabian? This time, Fabian's behavior provoked him again, and because of that, I became fickle. It was a possibility enough. My frustrated fingertips saw and curled up to stomp out the corner. Just when I thought I'd finally talked him out of useless thoughts of Fabian and calmed him down during the debriefing. My head was spinning. I had no idea what to cut out of this. Meyer stared at me with a restless expression and opened his mouth. I know it's very confusing for me to suddenly bring this up. Meyer reached out his hand. His fingertips rubbed against my fingertips as I stroked the report, and then withdrew like a mimosa fold. It was just that. A banal contact that had passed between him and me several times. Yet at that moment, Meyer's face turned bright red. It was an emotional upset that was obvious to anyone who saw it. I've endured and held it back because it's too early to do so far, but but now I'm forced to say it. That's right. I can't take it anymore. I'm at my limit. He was going to drop some more bombshells. In all honesty, I wished he would keep his mouth shut. But my wish did not reach my mouth, and I could not shut Meyer's mouth. I just had to listen to what he had to say. June. With a red face, he closed his eyes tightly and forced himself to make eye contact with me as if pressing down the real feelings he wanted to avoid. I like you. Romantically. Is it right that I heard him correctly? My head was dizzy and my heart was as stuffy as if it were tight. No, maybe I guessed all of this inwardly. In retrospect, the telltale symptoms were always there. I just pretended that I didn't know them and turned my face away. It wasn't that I was unhappy or uncomfortable. Rather, it was the opposite, but. It was just that all the plans I had made, which could not be resolved by that, were all shattered and I was suffocated by the chaos of fragmentation. I didn't have time to indulge in such sweet, sloppy, or fiery passions. Does Meyer like me? What variables does that add to dungeon strategy? What if I reject his confession? Or what if I accept? What problems would arise in training the Black Knights? 
Meyer smiled bitterly as he saw me smiling without saying anything in my complicated head. I'm flustered, too. I I didn't know I'd like someone. I was the same way. I thought that Meyer's love was still a long way off after he defeated the Demon King. I never dreamed that it would be me. Meyer stuttered and added as if to excuse his actions. The reason I kept worrying about Fabian it was because I was insecure. I couldn't believe it at all. How could he abandon you? Who would expect that the person who holds the most precious thing in the world would throw it away in one fell swoop? So even though I saw the discord between you and that guy with my own eyes, I thought there was something I thought something was going on that I didn't know about. So I kept being foolish and sensitive. Meyer chuckled. His smile was full of self-mockery as if he was dumbfounded when he thought back on it. But it wasn't that. Fabian was just stupid. And I also realized that I was foolishly ignoring my feelings. Having said all that, Meyer finally grabbed my hand firmly. His hand was hot and trembling finely as he gripped the back of my hand tightly. How nervous he was, it took over his hand. It would have been easy to shake his hand off. But I couldn't budge, and I felt his nervousness and desperation intact. Meyer whispered to me with an anxious, heated gaze. Right now, I know it'll be pressure for me to even tell you this. However it's my first time doing this, so I couldn't stand it without saying it. Meyer said that and grabbed the report under my hand. The warmth that had been passed onto my hand had disappeared. It's not that I want an immediate answer to my confession. After we defeat the Demon King yes. You can answer me after that if you want. So think about it one by one until then. His feverish gaze disappeared without a shadow of a trace. After confusing me and completely calming down, Meyer left his seat. As he walked to his desk in the office, I could read from his back that it meant it was okay to leave. I couldn't say anything at all as the distance between us became greater and greater. I didn't know what to say. I just hurried out of the office, relieved that I didn't have to conclude this right now. Chapter, 133 Even if there was a storm, it would have been more moderate than this. My mind was in complete ruins. I don't know what I had been thinking about since then. The next thing I knew, I was already in the dungeon. Wow, I really seem to be busy. It's as if a film has been cut, and I don't remember what my life has been like these past few days. I was dismayed when I recognized the situation around me a step late. It was fortunate that I noticed it when I was resting a bit. As a matter of fact, I was wondering if I looked strange recently, and the special unit gathered to talk. It seems you've been really busy lately, Vice Commander. Even if you can't concentrate for sure you can't listen with one ear and spill it out the other what happened. Yeah. You were kind of stuck in the dungeon before we got there. Is there something big going on? Priest August can she get treatment for her mental health? Magic for the mind can only be used on a curse. I can hear everything, I can hear everything. But it seems that I've been outside of the box so much that I didn't even notice it until now. I guess it was pretty long. Without knowing that I had come to my senses, the special unit continued to chat. Even in the midst of that, look at how the support magic is accurately stuck. As expected, the vice commander is not a person. That's right. I'm a dehumanized person when I see something like that is that what happens when you become elite. His Excellency, the Flame Mage, and Priest August. I'm just an honest priest. Actually, the priest seems to be the least normal. Sebi shook his head and rolled his tongue. You'll be able to talk like this if you're rolled around a bit in the dungeon even if you're out of your mind, your body automatically moves to live. But, as usual, my mind was too complex to allow me the luxury of a beak of a story like that. I sighed deeply. Is it true that he likes me? But to doubt his true intentions, his every word and action revealed sincerity intact. No wonder he was warier of the people around me than I was. Meyer's confession was not an easy proposition to swallow. More than anything. My biggest problem was that I was glad that Meyer had confessed. Meyer wasn't bad either. No, he was good. Sometimes it was annoying when he was stubborn and tight when it came to listening to me, but even that looked cute like a puppy biting off slippers because he was jealous. 
that's because he's so handsome. My annoyance would subside just by looking at his face. Of course, not at all times. If I was misunderstood as Meyer's lover, my life would be tough, so I tried so hard to avoid him, but it was tolerable as a real lover. However, I didn't think that Meyer would like me, so I just memorized the one sour grapes chant without thinking about it. What on earth does he like about me? Did I make his empathy of remembering the first round together bigger than I thought? Or was it that he likes a capable partner? Considering Meyer's personality, if it was a love that could be easily broken, he wouldn't have confessed. When I thought of Meyer alone, my heart suddenly beat tremendously. If it wasn't too early. At times like this I chewed on my lips. Since Meyer said he doesn't want to hear the answer right away anyway, should I reserve it as it is? Then, do you have to keep lukewarm like this? It's not bad to enjoy being confessed to. However, the problem was that I didn't have that personality. I felt awkward as if I was half-heartedly putting off my work. In particular, when I was busy during the exam period or when I was busy at work, I would give an immediate answer. It was to quickly kick it out of my head and focus on my work. Besides to shelve it so much would be like torturing Meyer with hope, wouldn't it? He himself said that the answer was to take care of the demon king, but if you think about it, he would be nervous about me. I'd be in trouble if Meyer neglected dungeons because he was worried about me. I ruffled my hair. I knew I couldn't go on like this. Because I can't make up my mind more than anything else. Who confesses and feels refreshed by themselves? For whom? I clenched my teeth and made a decision. Then I jumped from my position and shouted. How long do you have to rest? The demons will be here soon. Nova, manage with aggro. Ah, yes. When I suddenly came to my senses, the special unit quickly stood up. Looking at the troops completing the ranks in an instant, I decided to attack this dungeon quickly. We're going to stop by the castle for a bit. I said, as the special unit that had closed the gate was in the process of dressing for their journey to the next dungeon. Nova, who was counting the number of supplies, was surprised and asked. What? We still have supplies left. Right, it's only been two weeks. Sevi and Julieta also opened their eyes wide. I was surprised, too. It's already been two weeks since I was out of my mind. Then August beckoned at me with a serious look. Come here for a second, sister. Why? I thought you might be cursed. What are you talking about? Speechless, I shed my eyes at August. August admitted that I was normal only after using the mental magic. If it's the supplies right now, we can go around for another month or two. Nova said, looking around as if he thought they didn't manage the supplies properly while I was busy. Then Jean and Anasta were surprised this time. Anasta asked carefully. In two weeks isn't it time to go back to filling the supply? We should take some time off. Our supply is different from other expeditions, so it's easy for a month or two. That's how we close the dungeon for six months by supplying it regularly. Constantly. No rest. Sevi said spookily. It was a little bit of a dominant tone. It was clear that he secretly enjoyed pretending to know as a senior. Jean's complexion turned white and pulled Anasta's skirt hem. Anasta also realized that the place they rolled into was the dungeon hell, and her smile hardened. Julieta quickly comforted them. But I think she cares about priest Anasta and Jean. That's why we're going back to the base early. That's right. It seems that the vice commander has finally decided to have a human heart. If I weren't human, what would I be? I nibbled and asked Sevi, who scared Anasta and Jean. Sevi didn't even know I asked, and he rambled. The dungeon is like a secret weapon, isn't it? I thought the vice commander was under a brainwashing spell at first. We can't go back until we've closed all the dungeons we've been given. Something like that. Aha, that's how it is. Hyuk, vice commander. No, I didn't mean it with a weird intention. Sevi, realizing a step too late, bounced back. Nova and Julieta shook their heads as if they had expected this to happen. Although they both acted as if they were taking a step backward, when you get right down to it, 
they were nothing more than accomplices, since they knew that I had secretly interrupted them, and they had allowed Sevi to speak on his own. I pretended not to know and laughed and teased Sevi. Hm, I can't believe that's what Sevi thought, it somehow motivates me to do something in response to your faith. Ah, Vice Commander. Sevi hung over my feet. He was so desperate that his foolish attitude in front of Jean and Anasta, who had newly joined the group, had completely disappeared. Everyone laughed at the sight of Sevi. It was a short break in the middle of a grueling schedule. When we entered No Contoria Castle, the Black Knights all looked at our troops with wide eyes. Their expressions were very incredulous. It's only been two weeks since the special forces went to the dungeon. Why did they come back already? Is there a problem with the unit? But everyone looks fine. Everyone should be fine because there is Priest August. It's a supply problem or equipment problem. In this way, the Black Knights speculated about the early return of the special forces. They all asked in unison, why are they coming back so fast? It's not like I was holed up in a dungeon for six months every time, and it only happened once. As we walked towards the main castle, Axion, who was passing by, spotted us and had a shocked look in his eyes. June, are you hurt by any chance? No, the muscle priest went with you, so you wouldn't get hurt. Why did you come out already? Oh, really? It hurt my mouth to make excuses one by one. After shaking off Axion, I disbanded the special unit members. The special unit ran to the unexpected freedom, humming Loyalala, and I headed to Meyer's office with a solemn face. When I suddenly came into the office, even Meyer was surprised and asked. June. You came out earlier than I thought. I thought I'd have to wait half a year. I couldn't concentrate because of someone else and had to return earlier. Chapter, 134. I don't know about others, but Meyer shouldn't react like this. How can he be more curious than happy that I came earlier than scheduled? I was offended, and for no reason at all, I was being mean and sarcastic. So, aren't you happy to see me? Then I'll go back. No. I'm happy to see you. I'm very happy to see you. Meyer hurriedly waved his hand and denied it. However, while saying so, he could not hide all signs of anxiety. The shadows on his faintly drooping face were gloomy. He looked like a prisoner who was dreading what the judge would decide. And I was the judge of the omniscient and omnipotent God who had taken possession of that prisoner's life. It was so awkward and strange to have rights that had never been given to me before. I sighed and sat in front of Meyer. After thinking about it, I decided to accept the commander's confession positively. Okay what? Positively? Meyer raised his drooping head. It was as if he hadn't expected me to say that at all. Meyer asked back, stunned. Really? Why can't you believe me? Meyer couldn't speak easily. He stuttered like a person who had lost his language for a moment. Then we. A smile that I've never seen spread around Meyer's mouth. At the moment when his eyes were about to rise with joy, I blocked his words. However. However. I think I'll hold off on dating for now. Meyer's face became dazed as if he had been hit by me. Someone who doesn't move an eyebrow when he's actually hit. Stunned like a child robbed of their candy, he asked back as if he didn't understand. Why? I need to level up and focus on closing dungeons. Can't you level up and date while closing dungeons? Meyer carefully asked, looking at me. I shook my head with a sigh. No. Commander, have you ever dated someone? Meyer's mouth was closed tightly. He was a human who had devoted his life to dungeons. Dating experience? Of course, there can't be. I continued to speak with equal momentum. Right? It didn't seem like it. Then, if you're 29 now, and have experienced regression, do you think a person who has never been in a relationship for nearly 30 years will be able to focus on dungeons for their first relationship? You can't. It's absolutely impossible. If you could, the commander wouldn't like me very much. It's not like that. My love for you is sincere. Meyer, who had been keeping his mouth shut, hurriedly added as an excuse. 
I don't know how long that feeling will last, but I know exactly how I really feel right now. I can't not know. It was so bad that that Meyer confessed because he couldn't endure it ahead of the epic battle of the Demon King. I grabbed Meyer's hand. His body stiffened and he looked at me. I said seriously, holding Meyer's hand tightly. So let's date on the premise that we're dating after defeating the Demon King. What's the difference? Meyer asked shakily. To be honest, I knew well that I said something ridiculous like a warm iced Americano. I don't know if it makes sense to have a relationship on the premise of a relationship. But there's a subtle and important difference. In this world, it's pretty natural to have a bed to sleep in when you date. If it had been a romance in my original world, I might have nodded graciously. I'd be okay with holding hands, kissing, that sort of thing. But a bed. A bed. That's not possible. In fact, Meyer was an excuse. If I said okay to that, it was clear that my concentration would be ruined, not Meyer. Honestly, Meyer was really my type. I tried so hard not to recognize it. Every time I conversed with Meyer, I couldn't help but gaze at every single thing like the thickness of his lower lip, the veins on the back of his protruding hand, his arms thicker than my thighs, and his thighs even thicker. So I usually tried my best to pretend I didn't know about it, blurring and filtering my gaze, but every so often I would appreciate it with a drink. Even if he has never been in a relationship, Meyer should have some basic common sense. So he also might have implicitly expected it. Still, I was too shy to tell him I'm not ready to sleep with him, let alone date him. In short, not going out with him was a one Maginot line for me. I cut the contradictory story, and I insisted proudly, hiding my embarrassment with brazenness. We know we like each other, but we're not in a relationship. We didn't even announce it to the world. Meyer muttered blankly. You like me? Really? I like you, so I considered the commander's confession positively. If it didn't, I'd just say no. When I grumbled and responded, joy spread over Meyer's face. But before his face was completely colored with a smile, he suddenly asked with a straight face. What if you change your mind after putting off dating like that? It won't change. But you're not as desperate as I am. In the meantime, if you like another man. I won't go out with anyone until we defeat the Demon King. After defeating the Demon King, you may find another man you like more than me. There are few men better than the commander. It means there are a few. No, that's just the way it sounds oh, let's write a memorandum then. I replied back annoyedly. It wasn't until I said it that I realized that this conversation pattern was somewhat familiar to me. In this way, of course. Okay, good. Memorandum. We should write a memorandum. I knew this would happen. I feel like I've dug my own grave. Meyer busily searched the desk and lined up high-quality parchment, pens, and ink in front of me. Make sure you write that you'll go out with me. Or at least that you'll give me the first chance. Okay, okay. I sighed and grabbed a pen. Then, I wrote down the contents of the memorandum with a brushstroke. As there was nothing complicated, the memorandum was completed quickly. Meyer watched me closely as I wrote the memorandum. There was a shadow over the memorandum because of how close his head was. He checked the contents of the memorandum twice and was relieved when I finished putting my seal on it. He listened to the memorandum I wrote preciously as if it were a white dandelion. Then he put it in a drawer in a box where he kept important things and felt a small sense of relief. The Emperor's edicts are no more important than mine. Not that he's the kind of person who cares about imperial edicts in the first place. I thought to myself and folded my memorandum into thirds. Meyer sneakily asked, reading the air. Then tell your close acquaintances in advance. I can't. What nonsense is he talking about? It's a big issue for the head and vice commander to date. The atmosphere in the expedition will be disturbed. We're not dating. A dating schedule would be the same as dating in the eyes of others. There's a serious reason why I can't go out with Meyer right now, and it seems that Meyer was just trying to keep up with what I said, so I just went on to say that. It was clear to others that it would only be seen as flirting but not dating. Meyer muttered in a small, dissatisfied voice. 
you seem to be disturbed even if we weren't dating. Isn't that because of the commander's lack of leadership? Meyer's mouth was shut. He wanted to refute, but he seemed to be wary of denying what I said. Unlike Meyer's confusion, I was so refreshed because my complicated mind was organized. I spoke cheerfully. Now I'm really going to be stuck in dungeons. I came out in advance to tell the commander not to have a hard time, so the commander should also go around dungeons and gradually increase your experience and magical proficiency. Okay. Don't worry. Trust me. Meyer nodded proudly with a much better face compared to the beginning. It looked as if he was a military dog that listened well, and an admiring heart tickled my chest. I stood up smiling. It was cute to see him like that in the past, but now that I think he's my man-to-be, it was much better to see. That way, Meyer and I agreed to date after defeating the Demon King. Although I belatedly recalled that it was like a death flag, such as asking to marry when you came back from war, the possibility was as slim as Sevi's height growing the same as Axion's. After getting rid of all the drowsiness, I stormed into the room of the special unit where they were resting for a long time and shouted vigorously. We're going back to the dungeons tomorrow morning, so get ready in advance. Ha! Huh. Eh! Yeah. The untimely thunder made the special forces struggle to enjoy the little rest they had left. August did not refuse the sudden trip to the dungeon but welcomed it with open arms. It was clear that he thought even this was part of his asceticism or a challenge of a chance given by God. Now, for the next five months. Let's turn around in a flash. Vice Commander, I think you've changed. But it's better than when you were half-willed before. I think it's time for our spirit to fly halfway. Chapter, 135 Perhaps because of their overambitious and demanding schedules, the faces of the special forces were beginning to show shadows. Even though they exaggerate so much with their mouth, they still follow me. I let the children's grievances pass through me from right to left. The thoughts in my head were erased cleanly, my mind worked well, and my sense of skill became sharp. Jean, the timing of your defensive magic doesn't match Nova's. I'll do my best. Anasta, too. The timing of your heels is too early. Assume that Priest August is not there and put on heels. Yes. I adjusted the timing by dividing it into seconds. The trio was used to having their hands full, but Anasta and Jean took a little longer to adapt. However, both of them are talented enough to be chosen for the hero's expedition. They quickly got a feel for it, and after a month or so, their timing was almost perfect. Then there was nothing left to do but run. We spent the remaining four months rolling around in dungeons like crazy. As a result of such strenuous marching, we had all reached well over level 50. We had grown to the point where we could now compete with began in level. Even though they are not as good as the elite troops, they have become as good as the troops headed by the elite troop members. Once the hunt was over, Anasta bumped her head between her knees and mumbled. I thought the vice commander cared about welfare. I'm sure about the awards and punishments, but I'm not sure about the welfare. I've been deceived. They never said a word about going back to the base while talking. Instead of comforting Anasta, I told her more sternly. Now comes the real part. The speed of leveling up will be so slow that we won't even be able to compare it to before. It's always the same to have to go around dungeons no matter how high your level goes. Sevi meaninglessly answered. As soon as Sevi finished speaking, Nova listened, wiping his sweat mixed with the demon's blood. In addition, we don't even know when our level goes up. That's right. It's chaotic to just roll around. I'm not sure if they've given up or if they've adapted still, it was positive that the dungeon work permeated like life. I looked proudly at the special unit. We had fulfilled the five months we had planned, and we returned to Castle No Contoria somewhat crumpled, but full of confidence. Everyone was happy to welcome me back, unlike five months ago when I had returned unexpectedly. I wonder how much the special forces leveled up. I think they're more than level 60. I heard that the vice commander knows exactly what the levels are. I've heard that she's more accurate than a level measuring device. Then they don't have to worry about how much their levels have risen while going around dungeons. While the Black Knights were giving words of envy and blessing, I glanced around. 
It was just in case Meyer came out. I still couldn't be aware of it when I came back with vigor after the dungeon bang, but it was awkward when we were about to meet again. There was no reason to be awkward if I was meeting as vice commander, but still, this would be the first time since I confessed my feelings to him. I had no idea what kind of expression I should use to face him. But he had a presence that could not be hidden, and not a single hair was seen. For some reason, I breathed a small sigh of disappointment and relief. But as soon as I was relieved, Nova asked. The vice commander will report to the commander right away, right? Huh? Yeah. Are you going to have an after party with the commander? Sevi also asked as if it were natural. It was a question, but it was almost a definite tone. Of course, I couldn't say no it's been five months since I confessed my feelings to him, and this is the first time we're meeting, but I couldn't just give him a quick report and leave. I nodded slowly. Um probably. Then we'll start before you do. Whether you're late or not, we'll do the same. It has a very similar pattern. I don't know if I should say he's good at learning, or if that pattern is so obvious. I scratched my head. In the past, I would have reported right away, but now that I've looked at it again, it looks awful. I'm concerned about my smell, too. First of all, stop by the room, wash up, change clothes, and... Oh, my. Vice Commander. Long time, no see. Are you back? Mary, who had just changed the bedding in the bed, welcomed me. Thanks to Mary, the room was clean and dust-free for the five months I was away. Yes, I just arrived. Did you meet the commander? Mary asked. Everyone seemed to not doubt that I would go see Meyer first. Meyer didn't come to see me. I smiled awkwardly and pulled my shoulders out. I feel a little uncomfortable. I wanted to take a bath as soon as I came out of the dungeon. I understand. May I add some fragrant oil to the bathwater? Um it doesn't need to have a strong scent. I wanted to wash up, but I didn't want to go with the smell of flowers. I thought I was the only one who was excited. Mary guided me to a bathroom with a flavor similar to the scent of eucalyptus. Having become such a neat and at least polite person, I firmly moved toward Meyer's office as if it were a showdown. I'm back, Commander. Welcome. As soon as I opened the door, I made eye contact with Meyer, who was nervously walking in the room. Meyer immediately approached me and opened his arms. I guess he was thinking of hugging me, but when the large man opened his arms, his spacious office seemed full. After advancing like that, he suddenly stopped with me just around the corner. Then he hesitated and asked, looking at my complexion. Even if we're not in a relationship, we can hug each other. Can I hug you? No, after all this time. As I was preparing to hug him, I muttered without realizing it ridiculously. You used to hug me before you confessed. That's. Meyer laughed bitterly. I didn't know how I felt back then. Did getting to know me cause problems? I became more aware of you. I did not seem to reject him, and Meyer finally held me. His broad chest wrapped around me as if to erase me from the world, and all my vision was filled with black. I'm glad I washed up. I felt a pang of relief inside. Meyer, who didn't know how I felt, whispered to me, trying to relieve his overwhelming feelings. I also wanted to run out right away knowing that you were here. But I refrained because I was afraid of hugging you again. Because you don't like me doing this in front of others. It's not that I don't like it, but I care about other people's eyes a little. I pressed lightly on his chest as I seemed to be getting too close to Meyer. I could almost hear my heart beating too loudly against his. I've noticed my heartbeat, and now I'm noticing every single other thing. The temperature of Meyer's arms, the position of his fingers. The sound of his breath tickling my ear. At first, I only pushed out my chest, but anywhere he touched made me itch, and now I had to get out of his chest. As if he were showing off, Meyer had no dating experience, so it was embarrassing to say something. I took off his arms as naturally as possible and continued to pretend not to be shy. This time, the results are good. At this rate, everyone will be able to hit level 60 at the next performance report session. Maybe there will be a title. You can talk about levels slowly. More than that, 
are you hurt? Meyer let go of me in his arms and began to look around. In the meantime, he held my hand tightly. I'm not, at all. I secretly pulled my hand out of his grasp. But if I avoided him repeatedly, even the most insensitive person would have noticed. What's more, Meyer is the kind of person who can read my expression clearly. Meyer's face hardened. Do you feel bad when I touch you? If that's the case. No, that's not it. I hurriedly denied it. But it's already too late. I'm not trying to touch you. Of course, I want to touch you because I like you, but I just want to know more about you. Meyer, who was full of sensitivity, was thinking about what I was avoiding, and in the meantime, the accident reached its extreme. Meyer said somberly with a dark face. If you decide to go out with me because I'm the commander and it might be detrimental to you if you go against my moods, talk to me. I don't like you being conscious of me. You're the one looking at me consciously. I hurriedly tried to calm down Meyer. It's not like that. I like you, too. But why are you avoiding me? That's. I actually said no, but I couldn't bear to say that I refused because I was nervous about contact with Meyer. I struggled and tried to come up with other excuses. Looking at me like that, Meyer said as if it was unfair. Do you think I would crush you? You're afraid I can't control my power. Oh, there was that, too. I remembered now how messed up my body had been when I had kissed Meyer, or rather when I had broken through his mana. Perhaps noticing the silence of the moment, a startled Meyer cajoled me. What? Is this for real? Is that true? Did I ever hurt you before? Chapter, 136 And no. I hastily denied it, but it was too late again. Meyer narrowed his eyes. His gaze took in every corner of my face as if he were analyzing the emotions that had come over me. He asked suspiciously. Are you sure it's not true? Yes. Of course. I smiled brightly. Meyer's eyes became more persistent. Eyes are the windows of the heart, and I smiled more bent to hide my eyes that would be revealing my uneasy feelings. It wasn't long before Meyer sighed and moved. If it were you, you'd tell me exactly why you're avoiding me if you're not, then I guess you're considering me. No, that's not it. I wasn't considerate at all. Meyer's rampant paranoia had to be stopped. But how? Meyer was so busy working on his novel that he didn't notice my bewilderment. No, he didn't even know that I was embarrassed because I was stabbed to the point. Meyer dropped his head, pitiful and pitiable. His deep-set eyes and well-defined nose cast a distinct shadow on his face, but it made him look terribly gloomy. Is it because I have mana after all? As commander, I'm sure you'd resist touching me as a lover whether I had mana or not. I can't just reveal that we've already been through the kissing stage. If it was revealed, it was clear that what I had buried between him and me would come out like candy one after another. I really can't listen to that. He was so adorable and cute even if he made mistakes, but he doesn't know. Meyer muttered as if he were the product of all sins. You might get goosebumps. I understand how you feel. What do you understand? I hurriedly grabbed Meyer's hand with both hands. Okay. Look. I don't care if you touch my hand. Meyer's face was stained with pain. He carefully pulled out his hand as if it were dirt on my hand. The endless self-deprecation of Meyer's situation, the vague feeling of how to get out of this situation, the frustration. The mixture of these two things was boiling over, and my head was overloaded. At that moment, somewhere in my mind, the line that had been holding my reason snapped. Yeah, holding hands doesn't prove it. I jumped out of my seat impulsively. Meyer, sitting on the sofa over the low table, was surprised and looked up at me. June. Okay. I'll prove that I'm not offended or reluctant to touch you. Speaking as if I were spitting it out, I immediately reached out to the back of Meyer's head. My fingers dug into his dark hair. Meyer looked up at me with startled eyes but didn't shake my hands off. It would have been close to not being able to shake them off exactly because I put my lips on him first. Meyer's eyes got bigger. 
he groaned quietly without realizing it, and the small gap in his open lips was enough. Ha! No matter how big Meyer was, he was still lower than me as he rose from his seat. Meyer's head tilted upward, and the back of his neck moved roughly. My hair cascaded down Meyer's face. It felt as if his hair was turning gray. His golden eyes blurred. The arm that was trying to grab my forearm quickly clung to it. Just holding it in his hand was enough to cover half of my forearm. As if his trepidation were a lie, he clung desperately to me like a life-saving rope, or as if I were his only breathing hole. It was as if we were at the time of the mana exchange. I also became distant. The stability provided by the hard muscles that touched me intoxicated me as if I were lying in a cradle. And so there were many breaths. He was persistent and eager to feel this moment forever. As for me, I had committed the act without a second thought in order to silence Meyer, but whatever his intentions, seemed to have no doubt that this act was as noble as sharing his soul. But just as a hand that tries to catch moonlight never achieves its goal, our kissing came to an end. Unlike the first time, when we had bumped into each other in a surprise attack, the process of falling was slow and full of unknowns. Meyer leaned back on the back of the couch and looked up at me with a hazy look in his eyes as if he still hadn't quite grasped the situation. Only then did my senses slowly return, as if oxygen had circulated in my head. And I belatedly realized that I hit hard even if I caused an accident. So I attacked Meyer, who was sober. That's why leaks in the house leak even when you go out. What's the point of keeping it a secret that I kissed Meyer? That habit is still there. My legs lost strength and I staggered as if I was about to sit down. I struggled to get my body under control. In the meantime, Meyer's eyes, which had begun to calm down to a certain extent, were slowly dyed with questions. It was a matter of course. What kind of person would suddenly kiss someone who wanted to hold their hand, and kiss them very deeply? No matter how much of a preliminary relationship it was, it was sexual harassment. But for the moment, the situation was irreversible. I had to get it under control somehow. Shall I apologize? Or should I instead stand tall? I chose the latter. I spoke plainly, hoping that the confused Meyer would not be able to read my feelings to the best of my ability. Commander, I like your black hair. I've never thought about mana while looking at the commander's hair. I tried to pretend to be determined, but my mouth dried up at Meyer's gaze, which seemed to pierce me while blinking slowly. I'd rather Meyer be sly, or brazen it would have been less frustrating if that had been the case. He looked at me as if every word I said was a revelation of salvation. It was really burdensome, so I hurriedly ended my sentence. So, don't think about nonsense I'll just go early and rest today. Sensitive bodies detected all the small signs of each other. In that state, it was not a very good idea for him and me to remain alone in this enclosed space for a long time. I was in a hurry to leave the room. It was only after I left Meyer's office and closed the door that I made a mess of my hair like I was venting out with frustration and regret. I've finally gone crazy. Rather, I think I was more rational at the time when I believed Fabian as the hero and sent blind trust. In short, I had no rationale at all now. Now that Meyer was in a moment of confusion, I was able to get out easily, but it's difficult when he comes to his senses. If I tell everyone to go to the dungeon right now, no matter how nice they are, they'll still rebel, right? I sighed heavily. However, no matter how much I regretted it, it wouldn't change the situation. I don't have the energy to launch the special unit. I really need to go back to my room and rest. I quickly got to my feet. No. I tried to move. Immediately behind me, the door to the office opened, revealing Meyer. Filling the door to the brim, he stared down at me with a look that could have been figurative. As expected, Meyer must have been uncomfortable, too. I looked up at him with an awkward smile. Um, Commander when I kissed you earlier. Even before my excuse was over, his hand strongly pulled me into the office. While I was about to come to my senses, in the dizzying moment, Meyer kissed me this time. Overwhelmed by Meyer's devouring momentum, I even forgot to resist. Bang, without knowing it, he closed the door. Only our gasping breaths remained in his quiet office. 
If earlier he had just been uncomfortable, like being swept up in a tidal wave, now he was relentless as if trying to remember something, and one by one he dug in. The posture was reversed. I was the one who was much different in height from him. My neck arched back as if it would snap. I struggled in Meyer's arms I knew it meant nothing to Meyer, who had me trapped tightly. But the feeling of strength in my toes and stiffness in my body was so foreign to me that I could not stay still. After a long time, Meyer let me go. Only then was I able to breathe. I wanted to ask him, what the hell are you doing? But I didn't feel like asking since I had already attacked him first. Why is he already good at kissing? I didn't know why but it was unfair. I was breathing roughly, and tears flickered in my eyes. As expected. Meyer mumbled, touching his lips. I'm used to it. My heart fluttered at the moment. It was not time to feel resentful about Meyer's kissing skills. When I was embarrassed, I stuttered and asked again without realizing it. W what? This feeling isn't this the first time we've kissed? I couldn't say anything. Meyer looked more than a little confused when I kissed him. Scary jerk. Does he remember the kiss he gave me when he was dreaming and not in his right mind? I remember the last time he said something about the color of my eyes. Meyer asked again with a stunned look on his face while cold sweat broke out. When the hell? Even if he asks me when. What I really needed to keep my mouth shut about was not that it made my heart flutter when I came in contact with Meyer, or the reason I kissed him. It was about the events of that time when I had opened his mana circuits, which I had buried in the other side of my memory. My defeat was that I realized it now. Chapter, 137 Meyer shouted in exasperation, but June pretended not to know, her mouth clenched like a clam. I think it's because you're good at everything you do with your body, Commander. Don't get any ideas. He was good at everything he does with his body, and he could often tell the difference between something he was good at from the start and something he was not. But after saying that a few times, June just shook her head. Thinking she was in a tight spot, she pushed Meyer away and said once and for all. Meyer called out to her, but June did not care and took advantage of the opportunity to run away at once. Meyer chased after her, but it was after she was already far away. Her long gray hair, flying in the dark corridor, remained in his vision like a silver universe. June repeatedly denied that anything had happened, but Meyer didn't believe her. Her blank expression, and the vivid feeling left in her body, made Meyer's conviction stronger and stronger. Surely they had kissed before. But when exactly? I can't remember at all. Meyer remained alone in the office where June left and ruffled his hair. Ever since he was born he remembered clearly what he saw and heard. The scornful stares of his parents, their exclusive behavior as if they would be cursed by him if he touched them even a little. But the kiss with June remained as faint as a dream. It was dim and hazy, as if it would soon dissipate if only he did not concentrate. This made him even more curious to know the truth. But June will never tell me either. Maybe if he persistently asked, she would let him know as if she gave up. But he wasn't happy about it either. It was because June didn't know Meyer was so persistent and tenacious, and it would be a big deal if she hated such a man, saying he was unattractive. Just thinking about it made his whole body go cold as if a blade had grown near his heart. It was not terrible, it was hopeless. Meyer tried to shake off his silly thoughts and remember something pleasant to feel a little better. It wasn't going to be easy. People without gold in their hands didn't have to worry about losing it, but once they had it, things would change. He was so happy at that moment when June accepted him that he didn't want to do anything that June hated. He didn't think that falling in love with someone would be something that would make him so trepidatious. Even the slightest tone of voice or gesture of the other person's hand bothered him. But there was a certain fullness of joy in it. Every time Meyer acted to June's liking, she would involuntarily bend her eyes and smile. Meyer was willing to adjust to her many times just to see her smile. If anyone saw him like that, the reputation of the Black Knight would be ruined, but Meyer could let go as much as he wanted. However, he couldn't help but feel a tightening pain in his heart. Of course, June had told him that she liked him, too. It wasn't that he didn't believe her. 
It was just that he knew for sure that her love and his love were not the same in size and weight. He couldn't imagine all the happiness in his life without June, but June would be happy enough without having to be so sure. Meyer couldn't stand the sight of her getting even a little close to someone else, but he also knew very well that it was all pointless. It was impossible for him to monopolize her. He knew that, but he couldn't resist. Unknowingly, soaring jealousy burned in Meyer. June looked at and understood all of such annoying self. But that was not because June liked him, but because he was useful. He was the strongest being as the head of the Black Knights, so she needed him to achieve the purpose of defeating the Demon King. If so, then what if peace comes after defeating the Demon King? He wondered if she would be so generous as to forgive him for his brash and annoying jealousy. June was a kind person with a lot of compassion. So she wouldn't abandon him any time soon she would probably try to stay by his side because of his love. He had a memorandum with June as if it were a Bible, but that wasn't enough to loosen him up. He needed more other safeguards. Therefore, all Meyer could do now was to defeat the demon lord and save up the maximum number of good deeds before he became useless to her. Don't bother June with jealousy, don't do anything she doesn't like. Then maybe someday, she would like him as much as he liked her. So he was really surprised when June kissed him, and at the same time, he was nervous that she might like him even more than he guessed. Meyer's hand smoothed his lips as if he were fumbling with happiness. It was hot as if the heat from the moment he'd locked lips with June was still there. Her lips carved her name into Meyer's heart like a brand. The moment he touched June, the elation of that moment when she assured him that she didn't hate him. But as if to mock himself, a sense of deja vu came over him that he could not recall. It's already after she kissed me why is she keeping it a secret that we've kissed in the past? Of course, there may be circumstances, but if she explains it, I would understand. She was too difficult and complicated. Then, he remembered another idea. He couldn't understand why he couldn't remember it. It was as if the accident was biased only towards June, and he hadn't been able to see the surrounding area yet. He didn't remember himself, and June was definitely not going to tell him. Then why didn't he just find someone else? That's right like August. He kept him on June from the beginning, so he might know something about June that he didn't know. Meyer, who found the way, immediately called August. There was no delay. It looks like I did something bad to June, could it be? Meyer opened his heavy mouth. While he actually called for August, he had a hard time opening his mouth to ask anything. He couldn't blatantly ask about kissing June. If he was really as mistaken as June said. Even because of that possibility, he had no choice but to ask around. I don't remember at all. But I definitely remember. Meyer's forehead showed the line of his frustration. In the middle of the launch, August was brought in and listened to Meyer's story without hesitation. From the moment August was summoned by Meyer, he had roughly guessed the circumstances that would welcome him, so he could not be too embarrassed. After all, it was all about Sister June. And his prediction was accurate. June won't tell me. Do you have any idea? Of course. August immediately noticed what Meyer was saying. He thought it would be revealed to the surface someday. You can't cover the sky with your palm. There was a limit to how long one could hide the truth, and it was only a matter of time before Meyer found out. August cried out in a low voice with a sigh. I see you finally noticed. As expected, you knew. Meyer's expression changed mysteriously. The joy of finally being able to know what he was curious about and the subtle displeasure that August knew something about June he didn't know were mixed. However, Meyer tried to erase such feelings and welcomed August's words. August opened his mouth with a sigh. Yes. Your Excellency hurt sister. I kissed June what? Pardon? Kiss? No, that's not it. Who got hurt? Their confused glances passed each other. Meyer and August both realized that they had made a firm mistake. And the enormous wavelength of the opponent's words. Your Excellency, did you kiss sister? It wasn't forced, was it? Let's talk about the kiss later for now and talk about it again. I hurt June. He didn't think it was something to talk about later. August's forehead frowned. 
But for such a protest, Meyer's momentum was unusual. His anger flared up visibly. It was obvious that he was going to hear the truth from August's mouth. Eventually, with a sigh, he confided what he knew and had seen for himself. Meyer listened quietly to August's story. Sparks flew in his eyes as he gritted his teeth. That's what happened. August caught a glimpse of Meyer's mood. Meyer's face had turned cold when he learned the whole story. They say that when people get too angry, they become expressionless, and that's what Meyer looked like right now. Meyer suppressed his anger and asked. Why didn't you tell me beforehand? The vice commander didn't want me to reveal it. Still. It would have eased Meyer's anger a bit if he had been able to give a more reasonable explanation. But August had no talent for that. He told Meyer the truth. And it was not necessary to reveal it to your excellency. I and the vice commander reached an agreement. At the end of August's words, the boiling lava finally exploded. Meyer exclaimed with anger with an active volcano-like momentum. June Carantia Chapter 138 June Carantia, Tia, Tia Meyer's cries rang out and echoed through Nocantoria Castle. It was so loud that it could be heard from his office, which was quite a distance from my room. Oh I didn't know what happened after I left the office, but I think something's ruined. Feeling instinctively threatened, I jumped out of bed. I can't do it today. After hiding a little from Meyer I'll sneak back after the sun rises tomorrow. So I hurriedly took my coat and tried to get out of the room like a person running at night. But my attempt failed. June. This is because Meyer swooped in before I left the room. It hadn't been long since there had been a loud scream, but he was really fast. Meyer tried to hold me up but stopped his hand in midair like someone who had just had an epiphany. Earlier I had tried to get to him, but now the situation was just the opposite. Instead of holding me, he clenched his fist, and his gaze reached my hand. What's with your coat? Did you try to run away? No way. I just thought I'd take a walk. I smiled awkwardly and slipped my coat down on the sofa next to me. What about the bag in your left hand? I put down my bag, too. In an apparent attempt to escape, Meyer narrowed his eyebrows. You are really. You thought about running away immediately. I was going to take a walk. I was caught, but I shamelessly denied it. At this point, the winner was the one who insisted until the end. Meyer clicked his tongue and walked up and sat on the sofa. Come to think of it, it was the first time Meyer came to my room. I always went to Meyer's office. Perhaps that's why I felt heterogeneous even though I was sitting in a familiar space. Meyer lifted his eyes. It meant for me to come to his seat and sit down. I sat in front of him, and I felt stabbed. Meyer stared at me with a stern expression. I felt like I was being scolded by a teacher, and my head dropped for no reason. I heard it all from August. He said you got hurt because of me. I trusted you, August. I pursed my lips. I had hoped that his mouth would be as heavy as his heavy muscles, but my hopes were shattered. If you're a priest, shouldn't you keep a secret? However, it was not an atmosphere to say that out loud. Your arms were all bruised as if you were beaten. You know how dangerous I am when I am out of my mind. Meyer vented his anger. It was fortunate that August didn't know that I and Meyer kissed. Of course, I'm not sure if I'll be able to take this situation as a real relief. I thought about how to calm Meyer's anger. There was no answer. When I said I can't control my power, the reaction was bad. It's because of what happened then, right? It was all a lie that you said it was okay. From now on, I can't believe anything you say. Especially about your health. I felt betrayed by Meyer's eyes. If I hadn't noticed, you'd have kept your mouth shut for the rest of your life. Do you know how much I feel ashamed that I found out later? As someone who was always mindful and watchful of my well-being, I thought there would be a great outburst, but I didn't expect it to hurt so much. I thought I'd just hear some nagging, but... I didn't know what to say to comfort him, so my mouth was dry. Meyer's gaze was strangely haunting on my face. He studied my face one by one as if trying to find out the truth that I was trying to hide until the end. 
At the moment I was holding my breath, Meyer's face suddenly collapsed. I can't believe I did I force you to kiss me. Hold on, how did he know? I was flustered, but I couldn't just admit it. I immediately denied it. And no. But even when I said it, it sounded really suspicious. Of course, Meyer didn't believe it either. Seriously. Meyer exclaimed astonishingly. His fist trembled and blue veins sprang up on the back of his hand. How tightly he clenched his fist, his finger bones stood out exceptionally. Fuck. Meyer bit his lip tightly. I could see all the swear words coming and going only in his mouth. I think he's misunderstanding something. I couldn't tell if it was anger at me for lying to him or self-loathing. August didn't know exactly what was going on, and neither did Meyer. Looking at it, it was me, not Meyer, who kissed first. I carefully explained the situation at that time to somehow soften Meyer. The commander didn't even think of it you were insane at the time. You were in a lot of pain the kiss was just a means I chose to get the commander to drink the holy water. So I was going to pretend it never happened. If I've already done it, how can you pretend it didn't happen? You should have said it. But if I say so, you would have said you wouldn't pierce the mana circuit. It was the right time to break through the mana. For me, it was an excuse to calm Meyer's anger, but it seemed to have added oil to the fire. Right time, right time, right time. I'm sick and tired of it. Meyer screamed. As if his last patience, which he had been trying to hold on to, had been cut off, he shouted and held on to my arm. As long as you're so efficient, nothing else matters to you. Even your body. Meyer looked at me with a miserable face and murmured blankly. You. His golden eyes shone dry like sand under the desert. But why? He looked like he was crying. Even if it was someone other than me, you probably would have said it was okay. And endured everything alone, isn't that right? The voice that had been raised earlier subsided like a lie. A miserable smile spread around his mouth. It's a necessary procedure to defeat the demon lord. All you have to do is endure. Isn't that right? Meyer's words hit the nail. Seeing me say nothing, Meyer lowered his head as if he were in despair. I, I don't understand. Why do you spare yourself so much? His hand, holding my arm, trembled a little. Meyer whispered to himself in a low voice. The fact that I have no volition on you is too it hurts too much. I looked at the top of Meyer's head that fell in front of me and murmured to my heart. Commander. Unknowingly, I reached out to Meyer's hair. But before my fingertips could touch his hair, Meyer's head snapped back. He averted his gaze at an angle. For the first time, the eyes that had faced me head on all this time ignored me. His eyes seemed to redden for a moment as he passed me. Meyer said as he rose from his seat. I'm going to get going now. For the time being I need to think. Commander. I tried to grab him, but he pushed my hand away. It was a polite refusal. So I couldn't bear to stop him. His exit from the room looked staggering and precarious. Even if he was abandoned alone in the world, he would look less miserable than that. Meyer left, and I remained alone in the room. I thought long and hard about that moment again. It had been a few years since I woke up in this world, but I still had the memory that this world was a game. I know that sometimes I react in a way that gives me an advantage in this world, but I also know that to people who are in the real world now, such points seem too calm or inhuman. If it happened again, I would make the same choices. So, I have no regrets. But. I had to admit that my choice was a deep wound for Meyer. I'm sorry. I covered up the guilt that lingered only in my mouth with a deep sigh that I couldn't swallow or spit. Chapter, 139. It was clear that he was quite disappointed in me. He didn't want to see my face. Thinking like that, a corner of my heart became heavy. I trudged back to my room. My head was blank. That day, I spent the whole day locked up in the room. When I was eating and drinking in bed with the covers completely pulled over me, Mary, who couldn't bear to see me like this, asked me a question. Vice Commander, did you do something wrong to His Excellency by any chance? No why do you think so? 
When Mary was asked to confirm, I asked back unevenly, with only my head sticking out of the blanket. No matter how much she gets paid by Meyer, it's too much to be sure that I did something wrong right away. Mary added with a clear-voiced laugh, perhaps amused by my own pursed lips. If His Excellency did something wrong, he wouldn't run away like this. Rather, he would sit in front of the vice commander's room on his knees. Correct. Mary's reasoning was perfect. I was speechless and fell silent. Mary comforted me. But His Excellency will be angry soon. Is that so? I hope he didn't run out of love for me. I murmured my words. If I was normal, I wouldn't have cared so much about what happened anyway but I cared very much about what I had done. Mary, who didn't know a bit about my feelings, laughed once more as if it was outrageous. Does His Excellency not have an attachment to the Vice Commander? It doesn't make sense. I made a mistake. His Excellency doesn't run away from people he's not attached to. Rather, he lets the other person go. That's what it was. Just thinking about Tragula's case, didn't he spend a year in exile? But when it became me, he couldn't see the situation so objectively. Maya ran away because he couldn't let me go. I'm the only one who can use a tribute conversion. Shoveling was Meyer's specialty, but now we became more alike as we were together. Seeing that I was depressed, Mary realized that the situation was more unusual than she thought, and she comforted me. You have time until you go back to the dungeon, right, Vice Commander? By then, His Excellency will be back if you meet over time and talk calmly, the misunderstandings that have accumulated will be resolved. I hope so thank you for comforting me, Mary. Well. I shouldn't have asked. Don't worry too much. The Vice Commander is special. Ha ha. I chuckled bitterly. I knew very well that I was special to Meyer. Rather, there was a bigger problem because I was special. But Mary was right, too. Maybe it was my greed that made me want to meet him now and apologize. I can't wait to shake off the debt feeling in my heart. Let's wait for Meyer for now. That's what I thought as I got up from the bed where I had been twisting the pillow all day. No matter how much the Black Knight unit was an old expeditionary force, it was much harder to attack a chain of dungeons than it would have been for a physically younger expeditionary force. I thought they'd go around a dungeon or two and come back soon. But no matter how long I waited, Meyer never came back. In the meantime, the break of the special unit was also over. It was time to go back into the dungeon. Vice Commander, I think it's time. It was enough to make Sevi cringe. It wasn't anyone else, but whenever I had a hard time in the dungeon, Sevi, who was grumbling, urged me to go in. I certainly couldn't wait for Meyer forever. Because the Demon King will not wait for us. The first thing to do was to level up the special unit. I nodded my head dimly. Yeah, we have to go now. Only then did the expressions of the special unit brighten up. I guess I've been acting weird for the past few days. I tried to smile brightly and said jokingly. Since you asked me to go so enthusiastically, Sevi, I'll trust that you won't ask me to rest in the dungeon. No way. Sevi shouted. Then Julieta and Nova laughed as they watched us talk. You made me do it because you knew this would happen. Nova shook his head solemnly. No. You have the longest work experience, Sevi. You're the oldest among us in the Black Knights. Of course. Originally, such things are supposed to be reported by the second in command. If the vice commander has a vice, then it must be you, Sevi. Julieta also smiled and complimented him. When the two of them said that, Sevi also didn't have a second word. Jean and April laughed quietly. It was much better than the depressed look on my face that had been hanging in the air earlier. This was all thanks to the trio who spoke with more exaggeration than usual. Earlier, the gloomy atmosphere was evoked by my self-consciousness, but it was made much better. I was proud of them. I patted Sevi on the head. Sevi gave a small sigh and shrugged, pretending not to know anything. I'm sure I acted in an immature manner. How dare I let my personal feelings get in the way of the troops? August gave me a subtle look as he watched me. He looked like he was sorry, but didn't know what to say. After Meyer left like that, 
August came to apologize. But it had not been August's fault. It would have been better if he had kept the secret, but I was also guessing that he would have never been able to hide it. But it was just too soon, and not a very good time. I readily received August's apology, and there was no regret left for him. I didn't think Meyer would avoid me to this extent. Phew. I shook my head from side to side. Surely, there was no time to waste. I just got ready to enter dungeons. Things went smoothly. The supply and troop organization had been prepared in advance without my daring to do anything about it, and the most important thing was the dungeon list and the growth direction of the troops. I didn't hesitate to organize the dungeons from A to C, as I did from time to time. It was a shame that I hesitated and missed one dungeon, but it was well within the scope of what we could cover if we worked that hard. Of course, it might be a decision that the unit would appreciate. Time is medicine, and if you're busy spending your time going around the dungeon like crazy, you'll understand the complexity of true feelings. The scattered emotions and my lost mind. The clues to my relationship with Meyer, vague and unseen now, might finally be found then. I encouraged the special forces to head for the dungeon. Do you want to stop by No Contoria Castle this time, just to resupply and go back to the dungeon right away? Or. I've been trying to hold back my voice asking of when we're going to rest so far well, it's been about two months. I endured it for a long time. H how long are we going to continue? Sevi grumbled. I and all the other troops burst into laughter. I was actually thinking of going back to the castle for a long time this time. My relationship with Meyer had to recover. Hiding such an innermost feeling, I cleared my throat and spoke naturally. The trend of levels going up was faster than expected. If the trend continues, we'll be at a steady level of 60 before next year's results meeting. Those words. Yeah. It means I can afford a few days. Since Sevi wants it this much, shall we take a break? Yes. Wow. Jean's face turned red and she shouted with joy as Sevi raised her hands and shouted. It was the first time Jean had ever shown such a blatant reaction. All the eyes of the special unit were focused on Jean. Jean smiled awkwardly and embarrassedly and bowed her head. Sevi looked around at the other expedition members and was confused. That's why I have to talk to you just once. If I hadn't told you, Vice Commander, I'm sure you would have pretended you didn't know and gone right into attacking the dungeon, right? You're quick-witted. How did you know? Hmph. It's easy to figure out. After poking and prodding like that, I soon returned to No Contoria Castle. At this time of year, everyone was busy closing dungeons. We remained at the castle, where the few expedition members and the servants welcomed us. Vince, the butler, approached me in a panic. Vice Commander. The Black Knight unit is waiting for you. Not the leader, but the Black Knight unit? Why? Vince was at a loss for words. I was at a loss as to where to begin. That's when the Black Knight unit flew at me from afar. The sight of the old knights in black armor rushing towards me like a herd of buffalo was intimidating. Vice Commander. The title of Vice Commander resonated desperately in Nocantoria Castle. The trio came out wondering and whispered while alternating between the Black Knight unit. Why is the Black Knight unit desperately looking for the Vice Commander? Did the Vice Commander borrow something and not return it? There's no reason for the Vice Commander to borrow anything. His Excellency gives her everything. Egu. The children seem to be still children. I glanced at the trio and turned my head to the approaching herd of buffalo and asked. So what's going on? His Excellency, please stop His Excellency. Chapter, 140. Meyer. Why Meyer? I asked with confusion. Didn't the commander go to dungeons with the Black Knight unit? You've just returned to the castle. No, he closed dungeons with us at first, but soon, his excellency rejected us, saying that we were holding him back. The Black Knight unit member who had called me and talked to me in the hallway in the past took a step forward and said. His wrinkled face was scrunched. I was surprised. Don't tell me he's closing dungeons by himself. It's been months since he's been doing that. So, Vice Commander, please stop His Excellency. 
He never listens to us. Even if you're disobedient, how can you leave Meyer alone? The Black Knight unit and I were not worried about Meyer closing the dungeon and putting himself in danger. It was more of a mental issue than a physical one. If he shifted his eyes when he was alone and his mana went out of control, he would. Of course, I knew that Meyer Knox wasn't Fabian and that he couldn't let himself go so stupidly, but I had goosebumps on my back as I thought about it. His Excellency is the strongest, so closing a dungeon by himself shouldn't be a problem. Is there such a thing as a dangerous dungeon for His Excellency? The trio snooped their heads. The only people who knew about Meyer's mana were me, the Black Knight unit, and Vince. Therefore, in the eyes of others, we would only be seen as making a fuss. My lips were dry, so I asked in a trembling voice. So, Meyer Knox, that human being is no, what dungeon is the commander in right now? We, well he left for somewhere. Then how do you want sister to stop him? You don't even know where he is. August, who was listening to the story, shouted absurdly. The Black Knight unit also hurriedly bowed their heads as if they knew they were saying nonsense. That's not what we meant. We are also impatient sorry, Vice Commander. It's fine. I think I know where he is. Pardon? How? Everyone, including the Black Knight unit, August, and the others, looked up at me. But there was no time to explain everything. Biting my lip, I thought of a dungeon of a level Meyer could go to. Did he think that if he hid like that, I wouldn't be able to find him? I asked the Black Knight unit, my eyes wise. Please tell me the location of the last dungeon you went to with the leader. It was a dungeon near the western plateau. A member of the Black Knight unit replied, crouching his shoulders overshadowing his large size. I murmured, tapping my chin with my fingertips. Western Plateau then he must be on the west coast now due to the time. How do you know that? There is a way to know everything. The commander's thoughts are all there. I replied broadly to the reaction of the Black Knight unit who seemed to be surprised and about to do something. There was no way Meyer was going to enter a low to a mid-level dungeon. Especially if he was pissed off. The demons would probably melt before he could swing his sword, and he wouldn't have much experience, so what was the point? So he would have been in a dungeon of at least level 50, and there were few dungeons of that level open at this time of year. If you knew the direction Meyer had gone, the answer was clear. As perplexed as ever, the Black Knight unit all had an aloof look on their faces. No, how do you know where the dungeon will open in the first place? You can only know when the gates open and the symptoms are found. The vice commander knows everything. The trio spoke plainly. It seemed to be a no-brainer for me to guess Meyer's route, as they had seen me many times heatedly trying to figure out where and when the dungeon would open and at what level. First of all, the special forces should rest. I'll bring the commander. I can't let the vice commander go alone. Julieta came out. She had a strong face that was not like her usual opinion. I'll go with August. There won't be much danger. Finally, the faces of Julieta and the rest of the special forces unraveled. They certainly seemed relieved that August was going with me. August, what kind of a priest are you? It was obvious that he was a trustworthy partner as either a healer or a guard. I looked back at August who had suddenly decided to follow me and smiled. I'm sorry about the situation, August. No, I'm also somewhat responsible for His Excellency's wandering. August said resolutely. Then the conversation went by fast. As soon as I prepared to leave for the dungeon, the Black Knight unit came out. We'll follow you, too. No. It's faster for fewer people to move. I'll bring him back soon, so stay at the castle. I held them back. If I had needed more people from the start, I would have mobilized the special forces. In fact, it would have been better if there were no people. That way, Meyer could tell me what he really thought. The wrinkled faces of the Black Knight troops were full of worry as if they were sorry to leave it to me. I know His Excellency is inexperienced in many ways, but please bear with him I'm sure His Excellency is not being stubborn with the intention of playing a prank on the Vice Commander. I didn't think he was being stubborn. I've even done something wrong to the commander. What do you mean something wrong? 
It can't be too your fault. The Black Knight unit jumped up and down. It was the opposite reaction to Mary. Of course, I didn't believe the reaction literally. It's probably because the priority is to please me. I shook my head with a small smile. It's because the commander is so delicate. His Excellency is what? Yes. He's very delicate it must have made him angry that I, who was dull, didn't understand. Meyer's voice was still vivid in my memory as he shouted at me asking why I didn't spare myself. At that moment, I stuttered unintentionally at the target. I couldn't say anything, so I couldn't even hold on to Meyer this is the result of such a momentary shift. However, as I went around the dungeons, I found the answer I could give him after several times of reflection. I muttered looking at the western sky. It's my role as the vice commander to take care of the leader. So please don't worry too much. I'll do whatever it takes to make him back to normal and bring him back. August and I galloped our horses. The better our horses were, the sooner we got to the dungeon along the west coast. However, when we came to the coast, it was hard. Because I had never been there and only knew the area from the game, I didn't know exactly how far the gate was open. In the end, I had to ask the villagers. The people of the seaside were quite exclusive, and their walls were as good as scrap paper before priest August. Over that ridge, a gate opened near a coastal cave a knight in black armor entered alone is he really the black knight, Meyer Knox, priest? Thanks to August, I was able to readily obtain information. If I had come alone, things would not have worked out so smoothly. Knowing the location of the gate, we headed there. Fortunately, the information was not wrong. Since Meyer's solo entry into the dungeon was not fully filled, the gate seemed dangerous and was gurgling as if swallowing a person. But it was certainly ringing for a level 50 dungeon. I quickly grabbed the information about the dungeon in the status window. There were only a few areas left in the dungeon, including the boss. Even that should be taken care of soon. I tied the reins of the horses under a tree near the shore and left them there. I'll go into the gate by myself. That's outrageous. You'll be in big trouble. August's face turned serious. I had a rough guess that he would come out this way. But I couldn't take him with me. Sister has come all the way here to take his excellency. If sister goes in alone, his excellency will be even angrier. It's not good. August mentioned Meyer, thinking that I didn't listen to him enough to mention my safety. But August. I have to go alone for this. Why don't you wait for His Excellency to come out? There's a reason why I have to go in. I calmly spoke and shook my head. If I go with August, Meyer will probably avoid me. The same would be true if I tried to have a dialogue with him after he left. It wouldn't be easy to aim for an opening where the two of us could talk alone, so this dungeon was our chance. Furthermore, if Meyer was using mana. I stared resolutely at August. August's face contorted languidly. It was as if he was looking at a lamb who did not listen to God. I shouldn't go in, but sister will go in alone. What if I prevent you, sister? I'm not saying I'm going in without thinking. This dungeon is a level 50 ultra high the demons are mostly sorted out, so it's not particularly dangerous. How did you know the progress of the dungeon that's enough? Sister's ability is not surprising anymore. If there are any demons left, I have Fulger's Pumpkin, so I'll have a simple self-defense. Fulger's Pumpkin could easily take on a 50-level demon. August, who had seen the power of Fulger's Pumpkin many times in the dungeon, kept his mouth shut. Chapter, 141 As if realizing that my thorough coping plan wasn't something I had brought up with excitement, August clicked his tongue in amazement. I thought you didn't say anything about the dungeon when you came all the way here you were such a figure. You didn't bring the special unit with you because you were planning on going into the dungeon alone in the first place, right? They are sometimes more stubborn than Priest August. I laughed bitterly. If they were going to persuade me, it would have been better to deal with only one person. Really, sister. August sighed. The sigh mixed with deep fatigue clearly showed signs of defeat. August said, raising both hands. Fine. But six hours. I'll wait for exactly six hours. 
Six hours would be enough for you to reunite with His Excellency and talk. If you don't come out after that, I'll just go into the dungeon. Thank you, August. Only then did I laugh quietly at August's permission. August clicked his tongue in disapproval. If His Excellency tries to bully me, sister, stop him. If you have a conscience, please do so. Of course. I'm such a conscientious person. You're the most brazen person in the world. August shook his head and stepped back. I bowed my head to him and stepped toward the gate that led to the demon world. A dimensional wave engulfed me, and soon the familiar mana stung my skin. It's the first time I've ever entered this dungeon, but the structure of the dungeon is the same. I strode across the dungeon without hesitation. I'm sure Meyer will be angry again when he meets me. He'll ask me why I came in alone, why I don't look after myself. But this time I'll be clear. The reason I throw my body like this is that I trust completely in him. I would also tell him about my feelings, which until now I had kept under wraps for the sake of my own face and the secret I had kept from him. I care about you getting hurt. I complained about you taking care of me, but I secretly enjoyed it. You don't know, but I've always looked forward to drinking with you. Although I can't compare it to the way you like me I probably like you more than you think. I will pour out all the words that have only lingered in my mouth so far, and from then on, our relationship will be re-established and started anew. At that moment, I saw Meyer's figure far away. As soon as he was surrounded by demons, his sword split the demons. His sculpted face appeared clearly, an indifferent expression on his face while the demon's blood stained the air. The moment was like an eternity as if the dust in the air had stopped. It was time to settle this. I shouted with all my might at Meyer. Meyer knocks. The dungeon was over fifty levels, but it was just not easy for Meyer alone to defeat all the demons that existed in the dungeon. It was not easy, but it was not difficult either. In fact, this was just the thing to help him forget his complicated thoughts. Meyer mindlessly cut down demons and then cut them down again. Meyer had never trusted another person in his life. No matter how kind they were, if they knew the truth about him, they would turn around and point fingers, and no matter how strong they were, they would die in a dungeon for something that wasn't important more times than he could count. If he didn't expect anything, he wouldn't get hurt. As such, Meyer locked his heart tightly. But June's straight gaze opened Meyer's tightly locked door. June was different. She could be trusted. But June didn't trust Meyer. She always hid her danger and anyway, she drew the line at Meyer too. Until now, he had deliberately turned a blind eye to the sweetness that she sometimes threw at him, but the events that had occurred while drilling through the mana circuit were a shock that could not be overlooked. I'm not trusted by June. The fact almost drove Meyer crazy with shame. It made him feel like he was useless. He wanted to forget. He chose to escape to a dungeon of all places. That's how he scraped his way through the corpses of demons. His footprints were red. At first, the demons tried to flee in the face of his overwhelming force, but when they had nowhere else to run, they pounced on Meyer as if they were cornered rats making a last stand. It made it a lot less complicated. Just as Meyer silently muttered and sliced through the demon with his sweet sword, he heard a voice from afar that he wasn't supposed to hear. Meyer raised his head toward the place where he heard the sound reflexively. June, who couldn't have been here, was staring at himself with a hard face. Was this a dream? Yes. It could be a dream. She had never called him by his first name. She called him Commander. He felt like she was saying over and over again that he was her leader, not Fabian. But his greed was endless, and it quickly became too much for him. Perhaps it was his inner desire that was manifesting itself in auditory and visual hallucinations. But there were no demons in this dungeon to deceive people with illusions. Then maybe he had finally gone mad. Thinking so calmly, Meyer smiled. If it was an illusion, he would show her a smile. It seemed that just because it was a dream didn't mean it would listen to all his wishes. But as the distant June drew nearer, Meyer realized that this was no illusion. Aside from how June was here, he was devastated by the fact that June came in alone to the dungeon. June Carantia, you're a human being who never gets tired. 
Mayur gritted his teeth. Every time he saw her not taking care of herself, it was as painful as stepping onto a hot griddle. The remaining one of the demons took advantage of the opportunity and pounced on Meyer's back. But it was a futile attempt. Meyer swung his sword without turning around, and the demon fell to the floor in half as it was. June looked up at Meyer with a fierce expression, both nervous and challenging. As if she hadn't made a single mistake. Meyer found her attractive, but at the same time, a corner of his heart went cold. Meyer hurriedly approached her. But he couldn't get close enough to her nose, and he stood three steps in front of her. He asked, quickly scanning her to see whether she had any injuries. How did you get here? Are you here alone? August. Did he send you alone? I asked for that on purpose. There's something I want to talk to you about. If that's the case, we can go outside and do it. Why did you enter the dungeon alone? I'm just around the corner of level 60. It's not that dangerous. In addition the commander knows that I have the ability to figure out how much a dungeon attack has progressed. There was no room for danger. June was nonchalant. Her demeanor made Meyer nervous because it seemed as if she was trying to draw a line in the sand. Was she tired of him? Was this a sign that she was sick of him and wanted to reconsider their relationship? Meyer's heart was beating wildly. He clenched his fist. He said quietly, suppressing his heart that sounded so loud that he felt like throwing up. But you shouldn't have done that. You are you make my worries useless. That's not the words of a commander who came into the dungeon alone. If you don't like me coming into the dungeon, you should attack it with seven people. So that no more people can come in. It's not that I don't like it but I'm worried. And I'm not like you. No. We're the same. June shook her head firmly. Then she shot Meyer straight. Her bright red eyes shone like rubies containing life. I'm also worried whenever the leader acts alone like this. Do you get it? It has nothing to do with being weak and strong. It's the same even if the commander is the strongest. I couldn't help but smile bitterly when I saw Meyer, who was surprised at the fact that I had come alone as soon as he saw me. It seemed that my concern was paramount to him. Perhaps my answer was unexpected, but Meyer looked confused as if he had been hit once. I still had a lot left to say. What if your mana goes out of control, what if you're eroded by your mana? That won't happen. But I'm still worried. The possibility is not zero. But I also trusted the commander. That it won't happen. That's why I went into the dungeon alone. But you shouldn't have done that. Meyer said quietly, trying to hide his boiling voice. Rather, don't trust me. No, don't trust anyone. You just just worry about your own safety. It's for my own good. You're making me do something difficult. You would have worried if it had been someone else in the dungeon alone and not me. I'm well aware now that you're like that but you shouldn't go in alone like this. No matter how safe it is. Do you understand? Meyer tried desperately to dissuade me. I'm not used to seeing him do this. If I dared to worry about sacrifice, I would worry about Meyer. For he was a man who burned with fire, sparing no limits in the dungeon to defeat the demon king. But I didn't know it would be the opposite. I took a step closer to Meyer. Meyer retreated. I took two steps closer and grabbed his wrist, which was so thick I had to grab it with both hands. It was impossible to hold him with my strength. But as soon as I grabbed Meyer's hand, he just stood there. I looked up at Meyer and spoke clearly. What do you mean? If it was anyone else, I wouldn't have come in. I came in because the one in the dungeon is the commander. Chapter 142 Meyer asked back blankly as if he couldn't believe it. You wouldn't have come if it were other people. If another had remained alone in the dungeon, would naturally have sent the commander or another member of the expedition. My eyebrows frowned. No matter how nosy I was, I didn't bother buying and struggling. I had something to tell Meyer and I had to come in person because I had to be the one to bring him, so I came in directly if it had been anyone else, I wouldn't have bothered to come in. I sighed and shook my head. The commander sometimes seems to see me as a saint I'm also logical, selfish and snobbish enough to have my priorities in order. 
That's why I wouldn't risk coming for anyone like this. But what about at the time of the treatment for April? Didn't you volunteer for the role of getting hurt first? Meyer brought up the time when I had tried to use holy devotion to save April. The unpleasantness of that moment flashed through my mind, and I flinched. My lips quivered a few times. But then I decided to be frank, didn't I? I murmured quietly. At that time I didn't want the leader to get hurt. Me? Meyer asked back. Listen properly and don't be so emphatic, it's embarrassing. I clenched my bottom lip. Meyer seems to have mistaken me for something noble, but it's all an illusion. How cumbersome it was for the illusion to bind me like shackles. But when it came time to strip away the illusion, I suddenly felt afraid. Perhaps my true self deviated from the noble rationality he envisioned? If so then would he even like me, selfish and snobbish, like he used to? However, having made it so clear, I could not retreat now. I confided in him frankly. I'm selfish and think about my priorities. I, I thought it was better for me to get injured than for the commander to get injured. Ha! Meyer's mouth opened blankly and let out a sigh. He didn't think I would say that, so he slowly blinked and looked at me. I immediately lowered my eyes. I was embarrassed to make eye contact with him. It's like that for the mana circuits, too. It was the leader who endured the pain, so it was the leader who kissed me. Then I stopped speaking for a while. I raised my head again. I wanted to say these words properly. I had already said them once, but looking back again made them even clearer. I spoke clearly. Because I like the commander no, Meyer Knox. The answer to my confession was silence. I didn't know if it was a pleasure or not I just stared at the tip of Meyer's toes with my mouth closed. His neck, which was revealed at first glance outside his black armor, was heated up. Is he angry? Maybe he was disappointed because I only made excuses without apologizing. Indeed, taking out the words that I liked him in such a situation might have sounded like an excuse to escape the situation. I was quick to add that that was not my intention. But I'm sorry for hiding what happened with the mana circuit. I apologize for that. I just didn't want to worry the commander at that time. Now I'll take care of my health as the commander wants. Try not to get hurt, and... I murmured, listening to Meyer's mood. Nevertheless, Meyer's face did not unfold. I had no idea how to make him feel better. I clenched my eyes and reached out to Meyer. Because I'm such a human being you may have been disappointed with me. But we're going back. Together. The hand I held out shook involuntarily. Meyer only looked at my hand for a long time. What, no matter how much I apologize? Did I not apologize enough? Yes. Maybe so. Maybe I've been thinking too much by my own standards. Meyer is a more sensitive person. The moment I opened my mouth to say sorry again, Meyer suddenly grabbed my hand. I don't know how tightly he grasped my hand, but it was so tight that my body went right along with it and hugged his chest. Meyer mumbled as he held me in his arms. What do you mean disappointment? That doesn't make sense. Meyer put his forehead on my forehead. His eyes shone like stars under the cast shadow. I am I'm just so happy that you cared about me this much. Then Meyer put my hand on his chest. Even on the hard and cold armor, I could feel how strong his heart was beating. Meyer asked in a voice full of excitement and joy. It's me you like the most, wherever you are, isn't it? Of course. I like the commander best. I answered with more confidence than before. Meyer's eyes became honeyed. If so, then call me from Meyer from now on. It's okay only when it's the two of us, without people. I called his name when I came to the dungeon, and I called his name many times even in the first round. However, when it came time to say it in this situation, I felt awkward. I awkwardly spoke his name. Okay, Meyer. At that moment, as soon as I said his name, Meyer held my cheek and kissed me. The name I had said disappeared from the tip of my tongue to the tip of his tongue. Meyer, who was much taller than me, was so aggressive in his approach that I wobbled and fell backward. But before falling, Meyer's hand snatched my waist. 
Unable to move, I clutched only his forearms and received his passionate kiss. After a few moments, Meyer released me. I finally let out a breath. It was only the murky air of the demon world coming in on my respiratory tract, but even that pleased me. I thought that if we were going to kiss in a dungeon, we would have to defeat the demon king. Nothing ever goes according to plan, but I didn't see this coming. Slowly I began to calm down and told Meyer. I have a favor to ask of you, too. Don't call me one you. Don't do anything dangerous and take care of your health. I said jokingly, smiling and laughing at Meyer, who asked back as if he would listen to anything. Meyer's face shook with unknown emotions. He muttered in a low, locked voice as if he was speechless. You're really. Oh ho. Meyer spoke slowly. Usually, Meyer often called me June, but at this moment, the name he called me was Sweet. I smiled satisfactorily and reached out to Meyer once again. We're really going back now, Meyer. Meyer's hand grasped mine. Our opposing hands were tightly bound, as if in trust and affection for each other. Countess Nearest glared at the golden falcon that Tragula had placed there. Evidence of the first hero still shone brilliantly despite the thousand years of time. Those that survive a thousand years or so, just by luck. Countess Nearest bit her lip. Her eyes glittered with the frustration of having what was hers taken from her. It's not well known, but her family, the Nearest's, like Grand Duke Knox, was a family of expedition captains who had been active since the time the Demon King first appeared in this world a thousand years ago. Her ancestor was a member of the same expeditionary force as the First Emperor. However, because of a difference of opinion, her ancestor was kicked out of the hero's expedition and formed their own expedition. And although the expeditionary force became almost as large as that of the heroes, it was the very expeditionary force of the heroes that entered the last battle against the Demon King. After the heroic expedition defeated the Demon King, only the seven heroes, including the hero who became the emperor, kept the sweet juice of the peaceful world to themselves. How hard her ancestor had also tried to protect this world. However, the hardships of her ancestor and their expedition members were evident. Just because they were of a different lineage, which competed with the hero's expedition. Her ancestor, who had helped bring about peace, was only given the title of baron. The desperate resentment of her ancestor came down through the generations of Nearus. While the Nearus family tried to somehow revive the family, they also devoted their lives to destroying the families of other heroes. They knocked down the other heroes' houses one by one under the water. Either they let the flames of rebellion light up and get out of it, or they marry a hero's family and do not have an heir, causing the generation to end gradually. The Cornu family, a descendant of the Heavenly Palace, also collapsed like that. It was died in gambling, luxury, and pleasure. That's how the bankrupt Cornu had no choice but to sell the Golden Falcon, an artifact of their ancestors. And Countess Nearest took on the role of giving birth to Heavenly Palace's offspring. Everything was perfect. The whole process was done in complete secrecy. No one was to know. If not in one generation, then in two. If not in that, then in three. They were the fruit of persistent spite and malice. Chapter 143 The heir to house Nearest was the most insidious, the most awful of people. They had to pull others down so that they could rise to the top. For a thousand years, the barony of Nearest had been a viscount, then a count. In some cases, the family had been made marquis, but in others, the family had fallen due to the aftermath of suffering treason to bring down a hero. However, that period was not very long. Some of the ancestors tried to break the bondage of the family. It doesn't make sense to hang your head on the heroic epics of hundreds of years ago, they said, arguing that the good intentions of the present deserved more respect. You can be the hero of this age. They said that. It was ridiculous. The reputation of House Nearest had improved, but that was all. Goodness alone was not enough to earn the praise of a hero. Only the worst relief in a desperate situation was worth it. That honorable position belonged to only seven heroes. No one knew what the Nearest family had against them. So there was no way they could have guessed what they were doing. Like that, the Nearest family was working in the shadows of the Empire, but they couldn't do anything about the Imperial power and the Grand Duchy of Knox. 
The prestige of the warrior could not be dared to be hurt, and Grand Duke Knox, who was called the shield of the warrior, was strong and inevitably gave them no chance to intervene. However, if they also waited, the opportunity would come someday. The moment she had been waiting for, the opportunity finally came for her family to make the leap. The Demon King's Second Coming This time, she would fulfill her family's longing. The Nearest family would be named heroes. For that, Countess Nearus could do anything. However, it was unexpected that Tragula had given up the Golden Falcon. She thought he was the kind of person who would give up his self-respect and physical appearance for the Golden Falcon. In fact, he did. Countess Nearus thought long and hard about her last conversation with Tragula. Tragula, who was calmly saying that, had a very strange face. What a funny voice. You'll regret it eventually. Countess Nearus would make it so. A persistent smile hung around Countess Nearus' mouth. As if she had moved the predecessor Count Nearus as it was, insidiousness rose to the face of her. How far do you think you can go without my help with the Golden Falcon? And besides you, do you think the three spies I planted in the Black Knights are one or two? Thus, Countess Nearus gritted her teeth and returned to the Count Dom with the Golden Falcon. Mother. As soon as she entered the Count's house, her only son, Optatio, the heir to the Count Dom of Nearus, came running in, smiling brightly. Countess Nearus had many adopted sons, but Optatio was the only real son. It was because she only wanted the bloodline of Tragula. And the lineage of the Heavenly Palace proved its value. Optatio soon hugged Countess Nearus as if hanging in Countess also smiled and hugged her son. It was her first friendly smile. Have you been studying well? Countess Nearus happily patted her son's head. Optatio, who just turned ten, was a good, smart, and ideal child for anyone. Optatio asked with his eyes shining. Did you see Brother Tragula in the capital this time? How was he? You've never seen him before and you really like him. Knowing that this mother doesn't talk much with her patrons, you ask every time. But it's cool. The descendant of the Heavenly Palace became the subordinate of the Black Knight. Optatio strangely liked Tragula particularly. Without even knowing that Tragula was his father, he naturally envied Tragula among numerous away members, just as blood was attracted. At that time, Optatio's gaze touched the golden falcon worn by Countess Nearus. Ha! Huh. This is. It's Tragula's golden falcon. Countess Nearest smiled and handed over the bow to Optatio. Yeah. Now it's yours. What? But. Optatio looked at the golden falcon held in his small hand. The golden falcon was almost as tall as Optatio. Countess Nearest shook her head coldly and affirmed. I'm splitting up with Tragula. He's not coming back anymore. W-H-Y. Countess Nearest did not answer. Instead, she stood up, pressing down Optatio's shoulder stronger. Now you're going to be the second Golden Falcon. Can you do it? Optatio's eyes shook anxiously. Optatio nodded slightly, looking at Countess Nearus. If mother wishes so. Good. You're a good boy. Only then did Countess Nearus relax and pat Optatio's head lightly. Optatio was good and benevolent, unlike the rest of the Nearus family. Countess Nearus had even gone to the trouble of raising him. So that he would not know shoddiness, so that he would despise meanness, for this was a child who would walk differently from the Nearus she had known. He would remain the true hero they envied and portrayed to be. Perhaps the Nearuses were the people most deeply buried in the illusion of heroism. So enthralled by it that they were able to throw their whole life away in this way, taking over the generations. Countess Nearest could do anything to make this child a hero's offspring or anything else that would put her in that position of being shining and honorable. Her eyes flashed eerily for a moment. It was a look that burned with a sense of will and hostility. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Fabian, who was frustrated with his hand that couldn't move at will, got angry by kicking hard on the ground several times. He was in a hurry because he needed to raise the level of the expedition members as much as possible but the situation was hard to keep up with. The expedition members who had left, the dungeons that had been taken by others one by one, the slow and prolonged injuries. 
All of this was due to June Carantia. The flames soared in Fabian's eyes. Now the freshness of his hero days could no longer be found. The expedition members held their breath and watched Fabian's unfamiliar appearance. An atmosphere like thin ice continued. However, Fabian did not even notice that it was his attitude making things worse. He was only occupied with getting out of the situation. It was no easy task to train Jean, April, and the expedition members who had entered Aegis' vacant seats all at once. Even more so if Fabian, the highest level of the expedition team, was unable to produce his skills. In the end, Fabian's expedition team had to disperse for a while, going on lease with mercenaries from other expeditions. And among these scattered people, there were those who would not return to the Fabian expedition again. These were the people who thought that the expedition that had been leased had more potential. Traitors. Fabian was furious, but there was nothing he could do about those who had already left. It was a virtual collapse of the Fabian expedition. Decca, who had struggled during that time, seemed to be exhausted. He said carefully to Fabian. Fabian I can't do it like this. Why don't we join another expedition and have a chance? Fabian clenched his teeth. He couldn't fall down like this. This was the chance he had been given. Everyone else may think Fabian had completely collapsed and cannot revive, but there was still a hidden move for him. After all, isn't the final winner determined to survive? You'll see, June. Because not everything is going to be as easy as you planned. Fabian's blue eyes glittered. The blue sapphires, which had been broken without anyone knowing, were filled with black water. As soon as we got out of the dungeon with Meyer, August was the first thing we encountered. August's expression when he saw us was subtly twisted. Only then did I realize that I was holding Meyer's hand tight. Ha! It was a bit dark and tough inside the dungeon. I hurriedly let go of Meyer's hand, making excuses. Meyer also added, coughing in vain, as he decided to keep his distance in public. June kept messing up. August didn't look like he really believed it. Rather, he frowned and asked back. Who asked? Let's just hurry up and go. It just so happens that you hit puberty at age 30. August clicked his tongue and strode back to the place where the horses were tied. Meyer whispered in my ear with his back down. June, I think August already caught us. Be quiet. I know that, too. Honestly, I didn't expect to completely deceive August. I poked Meyer's waist with my elbow. Of course, it was my elbow that hurt. Ow. Oh no, June. Are you okay? Wait, August. Come here and look at her arm. Meyer made a fuss and called August. August, who was ahead, murmured quietly as he crossed. St. Marianne, I suppose this is another test you have given me. Chapter, 144 Thus, I returned to Nocantoria Castle and rushed to dungeons with the very special troops to fill the remaining four months. The Black Knight unit thanked me for my hard work in bringing Meyer back to his senses and saw me off with tear-stained handkerchiefs. Be careful. Meyer let me go without adding anything except for those words. He used to be soft tofu that would shatter at the mere touch of my chopsticks. If he had acted like soft tofu before, he seems to have upgraded to at least mung bean jelly now, after a serious exchange of ideas. I also nodded my head at him. It was an exchange of trust. The special forces had already prepared for the hardship and followed my instructions with a solemn attitude. And so time passed. We lived in the dungeon for most of the four months, except for the occasional stop at the castle for supplies. Day by day, the children grew up quickly. I crossed the sixty-level mark first, followed by the trio, then Jean and Anasta. The notes I made when I first set foot in Castle Nocantoria were long since tattered. I was so proud that it was proof that I worked hard. Wow it did end somehow. Nova rolled his tongue and wiped the sweat from his chin. Everyone seemed to be in a much more mature mood after the 60th level. It was only natural since as expedition members they had crossed the mountains to be recognized everywhere they went. August held his tongue as if he hadn't expected all the special forces to meet the 60th level. Do you intend to conquer the empire beyond defeating the demon king? 
With this momentum, we can build a core of over 60 levels. That's not good. I smiled bitterly and waved my hand. Just because a dog or a cow is at the 60th level doesn't mean it's okay. We have to think about the future. Soon we will be able to close the dungeon smoothly, and there will be fewer human casualties, but the problem was after that. Once the Demon King is defeated and the dungeons are closed, there is no place to level up. In short, you stop growing from the level you were at when you fought the Demon King, and your rank ends at the same level you were at then. Of course, if everyone was good and altruistic, there would be no problem, but living in this world was not something that flowed in a very positive way. If there was someone who was condescending and persecuted others at level 60 among those who had raised their level, I was horrified just thinking about it. It would not be easy to throw them away, who had become contributors to the empire, so all of them would only be a stain on the empire of Meyer's reign. Therefore, I intended to grow only those whose talents and personalities had been proven to some extent. And the number of people who apply both personality and talent is rather small. August understood exactly what I was saying. He spoke as if he was truly moved. Sister knows more about the development and management of the troops than I do. I can't believe you're thinking about what the world will look like after the Demon King is defeated I'm honestly impressed. It was natural that August did not easily recall the world after that, as he did not know how many years later the Demon King would appear. Between half a year and one year it's just around the corner. We didn't have much time left anyway. I was on the verge of upgrading my special troops into backup members against the Demon King, but I didn't have enough time to train the other troops. I looked at the sky. If the Demon King gate was opened, that sky would be darkened with demonic energy. The memories of the first round were as vivid as if they were yesterday. While I was pondering my future in the past like this, the unknowing Sevi hummed with a sense of excitement. If I go to the performance report this time, I'll get a nickname too, right? Although he had grown taller, he was still only 15 years old. The little things like that made him flush. Sevi's eyes were fuzzy as if he was dreaming. What will it be? I wish I could make it. If you can choose your name, will you do something like the Gale you mentioned last time? Julieta asked, frowning in the middle of her forehead. Sevi said clearly by giving strength to every word. I'm Gale Destroyer. Uh, don't even dream about it. Julieta shuddered with disgust. Sevi asked back, snooping his head as if he didn't understand. Why? It's cool. It gives me goosebumps when I think your name will be called after that title. Julieta responded coldly. The former timid and quiet appearance had disappeared somewhere, and now she had become a fact bomber for the special unit. The change in Julieta's personality must have been due in part to the influence of Anasta, a healer of the same age. Anasta was also the type to say what she wanted to say. In the beginning, when she joined the special unit, they were awkward, hiding their covering the day with each other, but as soon as they started talking, they became closer. As it was important to make sure that you expressed yourself in the dungeon, it was a positive effect. I can't believe that she's gotten stronger and her personality has become smarter. I even began to pay attention to Julieta's moods from time to time. Of course, Julieta had changed more straightforwardly, but Sevi had evolved accordingly. In short, he didn't care a bit. Sevi shook his head, sticking his tongue out at Julieta as if he knew nothing about it. Originally, the stronger and stronger the title is, the better it is. I want to have a title that sounds stronger than Flame Mage. His Majesty decides the title anyway. Why are you so worried? It's supposed to come true if you sincerely wish. As if I had become a wizard thanks to my desperate wish to become a wizard. Whether he was an adult or child. I smiled unconsciously at Sevi's fluttering appearance with his chest sticking out. At that time, Jean, who was quietly listening to Sevi and Julieta's conversation, suddenly intervened. I'll be the Witch of Ice and Snow. Even you, Jean. Julieta pondered as if she had been betrayed. As Jean was about the same age as Sevi, it was clear that she thought Sevi's self-proclaimed title was cool. Of course, Sevi was blatant. But everyone inwardly expected their own title. Ha! <laughs> Everything is just a wish. The title will be given by His Majesty anyway. 
Nova, who said so, also shouted, the shield of the empire, Nova Pelham. To the mirror of the accommodations when no one was looking. I happened to see him passing through the hallway. Of course, to protect Nova's delicate and fragile heart, I pretended I hadn't seen it and closed the door, so Nova couldn't have known that I had seen the scene. So even now, pretending to be mature like that, pretending to be respectful, I was trying to stop Julieta and Sevi. I well, I wondered if my title this time would also be Grey Rose. It was cute to see the kid so happy because I didn't have any expectations for a title. Sevi sighed and mumbled. The vice commander already has a title. Good for you. What? Since when? I didn't know. I was surprised and asked back at a sound I had never heard of. So Sevi opened his eyes wide and looked at me as if he were surprised. Then he said it as if it were natural. Tyrant. Wait, that's not it. I had a good laugh. It wasn't a title, but a sort of nickname that circulated only within the Black Knights. A title was a second, more public, and widely known name. It was a term that represented one person, so it had to be recognized by the emperor above all else, let alone something unique and individual. The designation of tyrant was neither. Apparently, Sevi still didn't really know the difference between a nickname and a title. At the moment I smiled and tried to tell him the difference, August intervened with an unexpected look. Brother Sevi is actually right, sister. What's right? Tyrant? That's my title. August nodded slowly. I asked back indifferently at the determination. What title is that, without a title ceremony? I haven't seen His Majesty since the previous results briefing. It's strange how Sister sometimes thinks along the lines of common sense like that. The Black Knights have many exceptions. No, but still that means that only my title was approved by His Majesty separately. How troublesome. By who? No, never mind. It was dumb of me to ask. I shook my hand as soon as August tried to open his mouth to answer. Who was it? Of course, it was Meyer Knox. He caused an accident without telling me. In addition, it bothered me that all the kids except me knew. Come to think of it, I think Meyer tried to say something when I recently stopped by the castle. At that time, I thought Meyer was whining for no reason, so I shook off my sleeves, saying I had to go into the dungeon quickly. I cried out in vexation. If you knew it, you should have told me. I thought you knew. Vice Commander. Sevi said quietly. To be fair, my mistake was not entirely without merit. If I'd known this was going to happen, I'd have listened more closely to Meyer's words. I'm not a loyal dog, I'm not a grey rose, I'm a tyrant. No matter how figurative a word is, is that okay? The Emperor is still alive with his eyes open. However, it was a ship that had already sailed even if I regretted it. Without room for inventory, my title seemed to have been sold as tyrant. Phew, okay. There's nothing I can do. Yeah. It's just a title. The emperor wouldn't think much either. Maybe he laughed it off. It may be a little threatening if Meyer has the title of tyrant, but it will sound like an irony only when I, a supporting wizard, have the title of tyrant. Of course, that didn't mean that I wouldn't complain to Meyer. The sooner I give up on what I can't do anything about right now, the better. I clapped my palms together and hurried to the special unit. Now, if you want to be given a title, let's go back to Nocantoria Castle and measure the levels first. But didn't you say we exceeded level 60, Vice Commander? That's unofficial. I answered Anasta's question pleasantly. Then, I stood up looking around the special unit with a confident smile. Let's officially tell them. That all of the special unit troops are at level 60. Chapter, 145. As if firmly embedded in titles, Sevi talked about titles all day until we arrived at Nocantoria Castle. When I went to the capital last year, people cheered for the title of elite troops. I was really jealous of that. Sebi would be the only one who envied or cared about this. I smiled and added a word. But if you get a title at this performance report, you won't be able to hear cheers this year. But I'll be able to listen to it next year. Sevi spoke cheerfully. 
there shouldn't be a performance report meeting next year well, there should be many more opportunities for titles to be called. I laughed, not wanting to dare to put a damper on his spirit. Thus, when we returned to the castle, we were welcomed by the main corps troops of Rober, who had come one step ahead of us. Hey, when did our kids grow this much? Rober stroked Nova and Julieta's hair. Unlike before, her hand went up quite high. Nova's almost shoulder to shoulder with me now, though, isn't he? You don't know how tall you have to be to go around the dungeon alone, do you? This isn't my third largest position in the Black Knights at risk. Huh, there's still a long way to go. Nova scratched the back of his neck shyly. However, Nova and Rober's shoulder heights were similar. Rober picked Nova's shoulder and spoke cheerfully. You still have a long way to go. Okay. You're going to the level measurement room, right? Let's go together. Okay. As such, the special unit and the main unit flocked to the measuring room. Everyone was amazed to see all of the special forces exceed level 60. Rober whispered quietly in my ear. You didn't make them do anything weird, did you? Like giving them drugs. Huh, no way. Otherwise, you're not a supporting wizard, but a psychological wizard. You had them brainwashed and bang, no questions asked. If I was, I could have turned them more fiercely than now, but it's a shame. I clicked my tongue sincerely. Rober laughed, and the special unit, who overheard our story, shuddered. Not even a human being as expected, tyrant. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the title for a moment. When the level measurement of the special unit was over and everyone enjoyed their leisure before going to the performance report, I immediately headed to Meyer. June. Meyer welcomed me with a big smile. I couldn't get used to the pink atmosphere of a man dressed in black from head to toe. Where are you going to hug? Look at the incident you caused. I was angry, pushing Meyer's chest to hug me. I heard my title. Without telling me. I was definitely going to tell you last time. Meyer replied calmly as if he knew I would do this. You didn't have to apply so urgently. I thought I might have a different title because I lived a different life than the first round, but tyrant. I didn't like the title of Grey Rose, but it was normal even though it was cringeworthy. Just the thought of the Emperor calling me tyrant at the performance briefing session makes me dizzy. I touched my head. However, Meyer brazenly made excuses as if there was a reason for everything. But I had to hurry. This time, you. Aha. It was obvious that you were going to get all of the special forces to level 60 this time so that you and the special forces could receive their titles at the performance report. Still, you're their superior officer, and there are procedures to follow. So he gave me the title one step first. I had no choice but to shake my head for unexpected reasons. Meyer hesitated because I didn't look very pleased. And when you go to the capital, you get cheered with a title. Maybe this is the last time. I thought Sevi would be the only one who cared about that, but he wasn't. It was ridiculous, but I clicked my tongue. The cheers from the title are received more when you come back from defeating the Demon King than when you go to the capital. But it's still different. Anyway, it's strangely delicate. I sighed and sat back down on the couch. Meyer steadily pushed a platter of canapes, cheese, olives, thinly sliced ham, muscats, and other assorted morsels in front of me. Then he pulled out a bucket of wine filled with ice. He knew exactly what I liked. It was the perfect setting to match my mood, and I felt much less jagged. I moistened my lips with the drink Meyer had poured for me and let out a small whimper. If you want to give a title quickly, there is also Grey Rose, which is my first title. Please also consider His Majesty's difficulties in giving me a title like Tyrant. I thought Tyrant suited you better than Grey Rose. Meyer clenched his chin, staring at me slowly. I frowned at the seriousness of his gaze. It suits me. I think that I showed exemplary behavior as a vice commander. Before I finished talking, Meyer burst into laughter quietly. I pursed my lips and mumbled to myself at his impossible manner of laughter. Why are you laughing? Nothing. It's just, I thought you were free to believe so. Actually, it's true. Okay, okay. 
nodding at my uneven answer, his eyes seemed to be bent, and he didn't agree with what I said. Sometimes, you're really arbitrary. I don't want to hear that from you, Commander. What the hell is a man like a selfish, childish boy saying to me? I looked at Meyer with wrinkles between my brows, and when our eyes met, Meyer laughed again. He laughed very well indeed. When I told him to raise his level while we were separated, he just laughed. I clicked my tongue low. Countess Nearest calmly looked at the strange visitor who suddenly came to her estate and brought up a rude suggestion. I don't know why I should join forces with you. If I have to express it you're like gold dust. You're shiny, but that's about it. It was Fabian who was rated as gold dust by Countess Nearest. Fabian continued calmly regardless of Countess Nearest devaluation remarks. But gold dust has the qualities to eventually become gold. I know a lot about you. Fabian Ignis. I've heard that the upward momentum of your new expedition was quite strong, but recently it has suddenly fallen due to the departure of your members. It's a shame, isn't it? In the past, it would have been enough to hold your hand. Countess Nearest clicked her tongue. Fabian was of no use to her. Fabian stared at Countess Nearest, his blue eyes shining incredulously. When faced with that gaze, even the sly Countess Nearest became somewhat inconvenienced. Countess Nearest scoffed inwardly. Seeing that she, who also dealt with Tragula, felt threatened, it seemed that his level was much higher than what was reported. Fabian still only smiled smugly. As expected of Countess Nearest. You know everything. You're the one who had your eye on the Black Knight of the Heavens. It seems that you have quite a lot of information. So, are you trying to threaten me with that? Even if it's meaningless. What do you mean threaten? I just want to build a friendly relationship with the Countess. Fabian said so and took a step closer to Countess Nearest. Then he spoke with a serious face. I don't know if the Countess believes me, but I'm the Chosen One. Ha, the Chosen One. She thought he was a curious expedition member, but it turned out that he was a scammer. Countess Nearest grinned. Despite her ridicule, Fabian spoke seriously without changing his expression. I know the future with that evidence. I'm sorry if you thought it was a funny joke, but I want to tell you it was very boring. It's okay. There's nothing to say. So much for wasting my time. Unlike you, I'm a busy person. When, where, what dungeons appear, and what kind of demons will appear in those dungeons? As soon as Countess Nearest was about to turn around, Fabian shouted. He was so powerful that Countess Nearest had no choice but to stop and look at Fabian. Fabian glared at Countess Nearest with burning eyes. His gaze went beyond Countess Nearest and was filled with hostility towards others. Fabian continued to talk as if he were chewing. I know roughly everything, but our expedition team lacks manpower. And Countess Nearest has enough manpower. Of course, aren't you big mother? You have a hobby of investment, so you'll know well. Where dividends are high, there is always a risk. Countess Nearest's head turned quickly. Tragula had just betrayed her as well, and after the purge within the Black Knights had uprooted the three small spies she had planted in the Black Knights. Trying to recruit others into the Black Knights was not easy. She didn't completely believe Fabian's story, but her instincts were screaming at her to not let it slip by. He could see the future. He knew information about dungeons that was a tremendous advantage. To the extent that the Fabian expedition could hit the Black Knights and become the best expedition if raised well. Then, it was necessary to check the information once. Unlike before, Countess Nearest said with a quite benevolent and generous smile. Okay. Let's talk about the number of people you need. When Countess Nearest's permission was granted, a bright smile spread around Fabian's mouth. It was the smile of a coward who would do anything mean to win and build pride. Chapter, 146 Do we have to do this? Decca anxiously asked Fabian, who returned to his original state after meeting Countess Nearest. Fabian pretended not to hear it and took off his jacket. However, Decca did not back down smoothly. He followed Fabian and continued to show signs of dissuasion. Are you really going to join hands with Countess Nearest? You know well that a colleague earned like that can't be said to be a true colleague, Fabian. 
To become a colleague requires trust and bond. But she can supply us with the necessary talent. Fabian, who shed one ear of Decca's worries, said straight away. Then he rather got angry. Do you think we'll be able to attend this performance report unless we borrow the power of Countess Nearest? Thanks to this, we can leave the name of the Fabian expedition as it is. What's the problem? What's the problem? Decca was flustered and slurred his words. But Fabian didn't give Decca a chance to choose words. He blamed Decca, furious as if he were on fire. Or are you tired like April? Do you want to end our trip in vain like this? Do you want to go back to a life where you can just watch others play heroes? That's not what I'm talking about. Why are you in such a hurry? Even without Countess Nearest's help, our power will be able to catch up with others soon. How soon? Decca, who was discouraged by his sharp blue eyes, replied under Fabian's glance. About two years. That's not soon enough. Fabian screamed nervously. Two years. Nonsense. There was not much time left before the appearance of the Demon King. In the first round, June joined the expedition team, and after three performance reports, the Demon King gate was opened. But there is no guarantee that it will be opened again at that time. The Black Knights are closing dungeons at a terrifying speed. The Demon King's gate might be opened after this performance report. Then of course, under the current circumstances, the Black Knights would be selected as the expedition to defeat the Demon King. Meyer Knox, the mere thought of him defeating the Demon King and being revered as a hero sent shivers down his spine. But Fabian had already lost so much. There were only two ways he could recover from his early days. Either compose an expeditionary force with people who were better than those who had left, or drag the Black Knights down. Ridiculously, he needed excellent human resources to hamper the Black Knights. But human resources couldn't just fall from the sky. There was no way they would come under Fabian from other expeditions, and only those who came in like that were the way. So, the support of Countess Nearest was a must. I'm glad she's ambitious. Thanks to that, she accepted my proposal easily. Of course, that alone was not enough to bring relief. Although he had told Countess Nearest that he was the only one who had information about the future and had gotten his support, he also could not afford to relax as long as June knew the future. Decca, unaware of Fabian's impatient true feelings, constantly showed his skeptical true feelings. Don't just say no, Fabian, tell me why. You're really weird these days. Do you know that? Fabian's lips, which had been tough so far, hesitated for the first time and squirmed. He had told Countess Nearest that he knew the future, but he was rather more hesitant to tell his closest aide, Decca. They were closer and they knew more about each other. Moreover, in Fabian's retrospect, the attitude that he had shown to June at the past performance report was clearly strange. Decca had good senses, so when he found out about the future, he would definitely dig into it and if he did, it would have been difficult if he knew it more deeply. With April and all that maybe it's better not to know. Sure enough, Decca, who had no choice but to compromise as Fabian continued to shut up, was the first to bring up April. Yes, if those are your intentions, there's nothing we can do about it. But let's ask April again at least as much as the healer. If April finds out that our situation is like this, she will change her mind no matter how angry she is. That's enough. If she had changed her mind like that, she wouldn't have said she was going to leave the expedition in the first place. Rather, seeing that the situation in our expedition is not good, she'll tell us to give up and might lose her strength. Fabian responded quickly. Decca shook his head with a frown on his face because of the blatant distance to April felt in Fabian's words. No way. Don't expect anything, Decca. If you look at it, it's all because of April. That gene, Aegis. Fabian made a mistake belatedly. He was too sensitive. Even if Decca found out that there was no April in their hometown, he had a lot to say. Whether April deceived them and joined another expedition, or... Fabian, who wondered if Decca would feel suspicious, quickly added. But if you want to do so it's not bad to visit our hometown for a while. No. Never mind. As you said, we don't have enough time we have to be more diligent to go up. Fortunately, 
Dekka soon shook his head. He wondered what he would do if Dekka got suspicious and started questioning him Fabian felt a small sense of relief at the situation, which he had overcome more honestly than he had expected. Perhaps it was because he had relaxed his nerves for a while. Fabian didn't notice Dekka's glare flashing at that moment. Again, the time for the performance report meeting had returned. This year, elite troops and their members headed to the capital. However, Tragula and the Yellow Lightning Unit were excluded this time. It was Tragula's request. Please allow me not to attend this performance report. Hmm let's do that. I nodded gladly, thinking that it would be awkward to meet Countess Nearest. Then, while you're on your way, I'll try to refine the new Yellow Lightning Unit. When I told Meyer that Tragula would not be going to the capital, he looked unusually pleased. Anyway, Tragula still didn't deserve it. I clicked my tongue. And so, for the first time in a year, all of the elite troops, except for Tragula, gathered. Hey, June. I knew you'd do it, but you really did. Special Forces Level 60. Wow, that's amazing. In comparison, our Red Wolf unit is few. Why the Red Wolf unit? If the troop leader was the vice commander, there would have been 60 levels left. Jinia said categorically. As soon as the conversation dropped, Began shuddered and elbowed Gina. As soon as Jinia was about to look back, Began whispered quietly. Don't think about taking our precious vice commander to our humble unit. Maybe he doesn't want to play dungeons with me that much. I could tell on his face that he didn't want to play dungeons. Began smiled and quickly turned around. Come to think of it, I heard that your title, Vice Commander, has been confirmed. Congratulations. At the mention of my title, I felt angry again. I decided this was the time to vent my frustration about my title. That's true, but what's tyrant? Isn't that too much? It doesn't suit me at all. I wanted everyone to sympathize with me that Meyer was too much. But the elite troops and everyone else in the vicinity were indifferent. Axion said as if what was the problem? I think His Excellency chose it well. Yes. June, to be honest, you have a bit of a violent side. Even Rober that I trusted. I shivered with a sense of betrayal and claimed injustice. I'm such a calm and easygoing wizard. What do you mean violent? Do you know that my strength starts with D-rank? It's different from strength stat. Kind of yeah. You have the qualities of a tyrant. I agree with what Sister Rober said. Yeah. I didn't expect anything from August. But I was looking forward to my popularity it was all in vain. I sighed in a sense of betrayal. The capital city was once again crowded with people to welcome the Black Knights. Following last year, this was already the second time that the special forces had done a performance report. Once experienced, the trio of the special forces resolutely received the people's cheers. However, Jean and Anasta shrank their shoulders and glanced around, perhaps because such hospitality was awkward. The Black Knights are amazing. You'll get used to it soon. We were very nervous last year. Julieta smiled and relaxed Anasta. I feel at ease when I find out that people are not interested in us as much as I thought. Listen. Who is everyone interested in? It was a familiar line. I laughed at Julieta's translation of what I had said before. At Julieta's words, Anasta and Jean pricked up their ears. They were very nervous, so they didn't even know what people were saying until now. Black Knight. The savior of mankind, the hero of the empire. Summer Saint, please give us a hand of mercy. Kaya, it's really the flame mage. The cheers were focused on elite troops. Only then did Anasta mutter with a mixed look of despondency and relief. I see. Just because you're a black knight, not everyone recognizes you. It would be nice if they recognized me. Sevi grumbled with dissatisfaction, putting his interlocked hands on the back of his head. When I see something like that, it's a kind of interest. Maybe it's because I'm in a period of strong ego. Later, when puberty comes and rebellion comes. As I was pondering about the right personality and emotional education as if I were a parent with adolescent children, a suddenly round voice broke through the cheers and made my ears ring. Oh, it's Tyrant and the Special Forces.